Hey everybody, hello. E3 has just begun. This is day one of Easy Allies E3 coverage. I'm Kyle Bossman, joined by Bradley Ellis. Hello. Ben Moore. Hey. Michael Damiani. E3 has just begun. It has just begun, Damiani. Press conferences isn't it. There's actually a whole show where people go and play video games all day. Really? Yeah. Did you know that, mm. who is it that tweeted out Did today? You know? That, was it, was it, uh, someone from, I think, Kotaku or some one of the big blog sites said they got to see the Nintendo Direct, like, earlier, like, last week. Who? It was a, it was a Jason Schreier or someone said they got to see it because the, the, big, the big stink was, but they didn't have the Breath of the Wild 2 teaser at the end. Ooh, they ended with Banjo, so people knew about Banjo since last week. That is a foul stench. That's it not just stinks. a big stink. That is a so foul E3 began last week. Why would you, Damiani? I'm trying to like exude positivity, and you brought me right down to the gutters immediately, dude. Oh, the games were great. Yeah, I think we got that. something we that got, we're we got... ready to talk about. The camera right back <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. So uh, to tell you about Tuesday night, uh, this is going to be all killer, no filler. It's going to be the big games that you want to hear about and all the easy allies wanted to play. Kicking off with Damiani. Make sure I don't get this wrong. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy Seven. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then we're doing Avengers. Oh, the games! I thought we were in a bit, and you were gonna say Final Fantasy. You were like gonna joke about how hard Final Fantasy Seven is to say. It is hard. I, like Final Fantasy Seven Remake. Believe it. Yes. Or not? That was just me speaking poorly. Uh, so yes. Avengers, we're doing second. We're doing Avengers second. Then Shenmue. Shenmue three. Yes. And then Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Yes, and then we'll see where we can go from there. We yeah. are ending at twelve p.m. twelve a.m. Pacific time, so uh, we got a hard cut. So let's get in as much games as we can. Please, anybody tell me about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, let's talk about what we all played. Yeah. The demo. Did Damiani play too? Yes. yes. Okay, this all is exciting. All three of us played the this demo. Really cool. mm -hmm. So the demo we played was near the very end of the classic bombing mission. You know, planting that bomb, mm -hmm. getting it in there, it's going to set off. You start off pretty far into it, you kill a couple guards, you know the game kind of gives you little... Tutorial, I guess. Like, here, you could do this, this, this. So, uh, has that pep talk from Barrett already happened? I will get to that. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, one just weird, random thing that happened in sure. the demo that I'm sure you all heard is, uh, Cloud Strife, af afflicted by different things throughout throughout the, his court, his journey in Final Fantasy VII, ha has some moments where mm -hmm. he he's feeling th some things. He's, like, having that classic Cloud Strife, like, oh, I'm having a headache moment, and... Classic Final Fantasy fanfare plays. It goes like, burr, 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 mm -hmm. burr, burr, and you just hear like weird echoes of it, and that's what they chose to like show him having a Cloud Strife episode. That wow. was you know what I didn't hear that probably because my demo blew my ears out. Yeah, when I had that, one of it definitely off. happened, and I was like, wait, because <laughs> it it happened once. I was like, Re really? The the fanfare there at that moment. And then it, it happens again. It doesn't play when you level up. No, I noticed. it doesn't play when you level up, but he was having an episode and you heard the fanfare. So. That's really funny. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Ben, I Just am intrigued. That, I thought that was a nice little touch. I I wonder if it's more than a little touch, man. What are you where are you where's your head at? I don't like maybe they're where going in a your... really strange direction with this game. Like Cloud falls asleep and you're playing like the original Final Fantasy? Like, the whole game becomes a meta-commentary on how, like, this is a remake of a Final Fantasy world that already existed or something sure. like that. He's, like, wrestling and you just see, like, flashes of Nomura. Like, he's like... connected to the old Final Fantasy somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I have to go back. Yeah, man, I don't know. <laughs> so, oh, God. I don't, that's a weird thing. Okay, we, so we have a lot more to talk yes, about please. with this game. Yeah. Uh, besides, besides yeah, go ahead. Moment. Um, so, really what we got a sense of is the combat. Cool. Um, yes. And I, we were talking, I was talking about it with Brad, where it kind of seems like just a rough comparison. This seems like a mixture between Final Fantasy 13 and Final Fantasy 15. Okay. Um, where it's, it's a little bit slower and a little bit more tactical in a really good way. So you have standard attacks, but really what you're doing the standard attacks for is to fill up this e ATB gauge. And you have two bars, and you can spend this on an assortment of things. So you can spend one bar to use an item, uh, you can spend one bar and some MP to do a spell, or you can spend bars to do abilities like Cloud Has Braver, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and what's really cool, at least in the demo that we were provided, is there was good reason to switch between Cloud and Barrett pretty constantly. Um, and you can switch on the fly by just pushing up or down. On the D-pad. Yeah. Right. Nice. And so you'd be going across this walkway, and you would want Cloud to take care of the enemies on the ground, and then you would switch to Barrett and take care of the guys up top. Great. Um, so and like the environments are designed for it. 
Yes. Oh, I yeah, love yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. cool. They're definitely um, making them encounters where you, you have to think about what you're bringing in. And it was cool because eventually you fight the scorpion boss that mm-hmm. you're all, everybody's familiar with. Um, and it was weak to thunder, but Cloud didn't have thunder. And so you'd want to switch to Barret to get that weakness. Mm-hmm. So you could do more damage, A, um, but also so you could build up that stagger. And when you hit it with the weakness, it actually uh, like wobbles a little bit. So mm-hmm. you have more time to build up stagger. Cool. And um, you can just go into the menu just by hitting the X button. So it's something that you can pop up at any moment. It's very easy, very smooth. But everything's still moving around. Very slow. Yeah. Okay. Very got slow. It, yeah. Got it, got it. You have ample time to make this. But you could also hotkey all the abilities if you just want. So like potion, right. I'm going to have to hotkey. I, yeah, I was, I was looking around. I was, yeah. I was trying to... Like push every single button, trying to figure it out. It didn't look like the the ability to map things to a shortcut was available to the demo. Right, so but they promised. Want, yeah, yeah, yeah. They mm-hmm. promised. They showed it off mm-hmm. last night. Um, but yeah, I think the big takeaway for me is just how like if every single boss fight is like this first boss fight, we're in for a good time because of how multifaceted it was. I mean, this thing had multiple phases. Uh, it and just like. You could target different parts of the body. It was jumping up against the the ceiling, the and it's just it's... like you had to. And this was a demo, and it was it was easy. It was I, easy. I think yeah, anybody yeah, could sure. get through it. Mm-hmm. But the sense that I got is that okay, I'm not just doing the same thing over and over again. And like you think about the fight on the PS1 version of Final Fantasy VII, it's just like okay, just don't attack when you're not supposed to attack. Mm-hmm. This had a lot more going on, where it's like okay. Uh, I need to go around the back, I need to target a different part, I need to get to behind this debris, and all of this happened, you know, in a five minute time frame, and so yeah, he's just, doing just like AOEs, fights. you gotta dodge out right. and stuff like that. Right. It's good stuff. Uh, so one thing that was demonstrated early and, you know, amazed the whole crowd was stopping time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how often do you stop time in battle, or do you, you, are you already do as it? much as you want. Yeah. Well, it was... Wait, again, as I much as like, you want? I thought you had to, like, earn it. No, no so... You just push X. Cool. Okay. What you're earning is, is the kind ATV. of the currency to do anything yeah. beyond Use um, items. a standard attack. Yeah. And so the reason they froze time there is like, oh, and now let me select one of my right. cool yeah. specials. Right, right, right. I understand better now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, you could also have like hotkeys for your partner, so you could push like R2 to make them do certain commands if you don't want to switch to them. Right. Yeah. You can you can command them. So, so you can like, be like target this dude. If you want to play just Cloud, you can push like R2 and have Barrett do. A that certain is really ability. cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and really really cool. Beyond that, I mean, just the basic standard attacks um, for each character feel pretty different. So Cloud, yeah. for instance, um, you're you're building ATB, but you have to like you every single slice pushing you have square. to push a button. Whereas Barrett, it's like I can just hold it down, mm-hmm. and so it's actually easier to build ATB with Barrett. I feel like than it is with Cloud because it's more mm-hmm. auto, I guess. Um, but it's interesting because they kind of have like like Barrett, for instance, kind of has this animation cycle he goes through where he'll like shoot the gun for a little bit and then he'll do a burst Mm -hmm. and so if you get to the burst of his standard attack it'll do a little bit more damage and that's just for holding it down for a certain amount of time it's just it's just a time thing cool just think of it like the end of a combo i guess or something uh did you open a chest Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, nice. Multiple yeah. ones. Yeah. I, believe, yeah. I cut boxes and there was loot inside. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so where did you find a chest? Tell me where a Just secret in the chest was. So the way the demo was presented, there, there really, it wasn't a big space. Sure. It, it's like you start at the top and you're just kind of going down ladders. Mm-hmm. And the way you get the chest is it's like, okay, do I immediately go down the ladder or do I go down this path a little bit and there's a chest? It was so a, it was a baby a, secret. It was a yes. pretty yes. short it was a, demo. Definitely yeah. a baby secret mm-hmm. for sure. What did it look like? Exactly how it should look, Kyle. You're inside the reactor. It looks exactly how you picture it. Okay. Because I was like, I'm picturing like it has zero, like four, it has six sides. You know what I mean? Like I'm picturing a, a very basic Kyle, chest. You know what uh, I mean? The presentation I saw, they specified on keeping things, the layout exactly how it was in the original. Cool. Just so they're like adding some new things. Like in transitions, That's they're really adding like you actually going through that transition in areas. Whoa. Yeah. That's really cool. So, like, when you go to a screen and, like, load in the next area, like, they're adding stuff to connect it together. I didn't realize until we replayed it how many times the game does do transitions. Yeah. Right, because they're the the pre-rendered backgrounds, but sometimes the it'll time. shift it. All the like, time. Oh, 3D! Yes. <laughs> and so it's cool that they still do that uh, kind of thing. I didn't... There's also Limit Break, which I didn't know about until I played it. Yeah. So, you have Block. By blocking, you can build up your limit gauge, but you take some damage... So it's mm-hmm. risk reward, but also if you get hit, 
you yeah, can build up your limit break. Damage cool. So you could dodge out of a lot of stuff, but sometimes if you want to build up your limit break, you'll strategically just take some hits. Well, they showed cross slash. Right? They showed cross slash. Yeah, and that's, but yeah. that was cause. I didn't know if that was a normal ability because Braver is a normal ability in gotcha, this. Gotcha. So I was okay. confused and I was like, oh, there's actual limit breaks in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are so sick, Kyle. When All right. Okay, so we know clouds, obviously. What else did we have? Like, I'm, I'm. Oh, Barrett. I, I bet forgot. Tifa does not have a slot Dude, machine. So yeah. we didn't, we didn't get to play as Tifa. Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, what? Who doesn't have what? I'm guessing Tifa does not have a slot machine in the new game. We didn't get to play. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. She has, her, she has her somersault one. Yeah. That's definitely in there. Yeah. yeah. But is that... I don't know if that's that just an ability. We don't know. Yeah, 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 we don't know. It might be yeah. the same thing again. Uh, yeah. So you did get lim- or Barrett's limit break. Yeah. I don't remember. It's. I don't think it was big shot. It was like some crazy like shot though. You cool. know the one in Final Fantasy VII where he like swirls the big blast and he builds it up and then he fires it? <laughs> the camera go like it moves It was... Not identical to that, but very, very similar. similar yeah. yeah, and probably yeah, yeah. much less impressive. Yeah, uh, but still cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, cross switch is really cool. I think the thing to say about limit breaks mm-hmm. is uh, the the boss was definitely like a pretty protracted sequence. I mean, it wasn't something you were done with in like a minute. Yeah. Um, but just throughout all the fights and then the scorpion boss itself, like there was only an opportunity for me at least to get the limit break once for each character. So it doesn't it. seem like something you're going to be getting and spamming all the time. Great. It does seem like a pretty yeah, valuable you thing. you kind of have to, like, go out of your way. Yeah. An event. Yeah. Uh, there's a moment when they in, when they demonstrated that boss fight where Cloud's like, Barrett, check out his butt. There's a green dot back here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because that was where the weak point yeah. was. Uh, how does that play out in the game? It's, is just it really like, like, it's just like they're, as you're playing it, they're just, like, talking to each other. Yeah. But I mean, like, how do you, how do, do the characters say, I found the weak point, it's his butt? They or do you, is that you on the player who finds the They definitely the weak have point? the dialogue as you're going through the phase of the fight. Like, mm-hmm. when, when he's about ready to shoot the laser from his tail, yeah. and the debris comes down, they're like, get behind Take him. over, they're, yeah. They're, I actually they're def- love that stuff. Yeah. Yes, they're yes. definitely talking to each other on like, oh man, and there's, there's a moment at the beginning, like, uh, like he'll, he puts on a shield. And he's just like not taking any damage, and they have that moment of bewilderment where they're like, "Oh man, how do we get through yeah. this thing?" Yeah, yeah, like you, uh, you hit it, clouds like that's not gonna work or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and Barrett's like, "Try the butt." Hit him with the butt. <laughs> uh, demo ends right when the boss falls off into the acid pit. Yeah, yeah, that was the end yeah. of it. Uh, Kyle, huh. I gotta, I gotta say this just because I thought it was really cool. And so uh, before they took us out to all the stations, you're you're in kind of this like small theater. And a video starts playing, and it looks just like very nice and cheerful. And then Jesse, it's like a Shinra, basically like propaganda video, informational video. And Jesse like hacks into it, and she's like, "Listen, we don't have much time." Yeah. Uh, uh, an ex- like it, they made it experiential. Yeah, they made it they experiential. Did. Oh man. Yeah. That's really cool. It is. It is really cool. And, and so that was like prepping you for the mission that you're about to like the demo you're about to play. Right. Yeah. She's kind of she's doing two things simultaneously. She's like trying to contextualize it, being like, "Oh hey, you know, we need you." To yeah. help out Avalanche, um, but then it's, it's also Universal like Universal Studios, man. That's yes, so fun. Yes, that's exactly that's exactly what yeah. I said. Yeah, um, and Damiani brought that up too. Yeah, he was saying it was like the it's Terminator like, Two. It's the Terminator right? Two, like when Sarah Connor shows up and like. It's like, hey, come with me if you want to live, basically. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, pretty cool. Yeah. But it was also funny because she, like, broke down the most basic elements mm-hmm. where it was like, a potion will recover your life. Yeah, oh. it was like a if, tutorial. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah. If, was, if, if one of your teammates goes mm-hmm. down, use a phoenix down, yeah. It was Neil's presentation from, like, last night, essentially. Like, this is, you know, yeah. tactical mode. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah we yeah. saw that last night, cool. But not everybody was watching last yeah. night. Right, yeah, right. Exactly. they gotta yeah. do it. I just yeah. thought it was a cute thing. A po- we know what a potion is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got to see a special closed door demonstration too and with... bended as no, well no no, no. This, just me this is just, this was just me so. wait well like who was in that oh just other like journalists and katase was there <laughs> i was right next to him dude he was demoing the game with his team and explaining it all so exciting dude and there was a battle mechanic that was not in the demo we played that i saw so essentially it looks like to me that you have two like forms or stances you could switch between on the fly so with Cloud, there was a thing called Punishers pushing triangle. You could I do it. See, I saw that in the menu. So I didn't make. If you yeah. push triangle, Cloud would attack slower but do more damage, and he would also auto attack if he got hit. He would like auto attack him. He's back. got counter. But if you got hit by like magic or range or something like that, he would get knocked out of it. And every character has like some unique thing like that. Oh, Brad, I bet you like unlock them. Maybe yeah. That is so cool. 
But like, did Barrett have one? He's got his own. Yeah, mode? I couldn't remember exactly what his was, but he yeah. did have one. Yeah, they all had them. Cool. I also saw the beginning of the bombing mission. So what we played is essentially the end of the bombing mission. I saw him coming in on the train, coming out. Kyle, it is sweet, my friend. Did, so you saw the Brad. Did, yes. yes. Did you see like Cloud and Barrett in the elevator and that I tension did. that they have? Okay. I did. And Jesse was there, that. like kind of trying to break the ice. Nice. She's like, so you, you like no Tifa, right? And Cloud's like, yeah, me and Tifa Baird's like, shut up! Like, <laughs> Cloud aside, dude. And uh, Wedge is trying to, like, talk to Cloud. Like, trying to be friendly. And Cloud's like, one second, my money, I'm out of here. Just shutting him down. Like, the classic Cloud that Brandon Jones hated. Yeah. Just, it was perfect. The smugness, the arrogance. Exactly what he should be right Story there. starts there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's and a also, launching point. the game adds a lot, just more character moments, Kyle. Just letting you get to know these characters more. Like, cool. I've never, like, this is more dialogue than Jesse had the entire game. Yes. Just, like, what I'm seeing them doing right here. It's just, like, nice character moments. They're just stressing, like, again, the whole game is Midgar. Yeah. So we're going to get a ton of extra stuff. It was awesome, Kyle. You're going through. You got your chess, man. A little more exploration. Mm -hmm. Showing, like, cool things. Uh, like, the crew kind of ribbing Cloud. So, like, they're hiding, and, like, they would open the doors, and Cloud would have to fight everything, and then they would sneak by Cloud. And he's just getting kind of annoyed. They're like, see you later, when he has to, like, fight all the guys. That's the what Jesse's like, yeah. see you later, pretty much. Oh, like in the that. subway scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Because, like, they don't know Cloud. They're, like, kind of learning to trust him. Like, who is this guy? Soldier? Yeah. Poor, poor Wedge, trying to be nice. Just, everyone's telling Wedge to shut up. It was really great, though. Uh, So, in those chests, probably, just, is there any, do, do you unlock Luke. any weapon at any point? No, there was no weapon. Like, we okay. saw in the trailer, Cloud had a different sword at a time. Yeah. So you will get stuff like that, but he was just getting, like, gill and items and, and stuff And you didn't like get that. to play with Materia at all, right? No. No. No menu fiddling they, at like, all. They, like, briefly brought up Materia, but, like, nothing in depth whatsoever. Gotcha. There was a mechanic that they brought up in the Universal Studios portion that <laughs> I didn't actually get to see that could be really cool is... They were like, hey, there will be times where enemies will com in completely incapacitate one of yes. your party members by picking them up and grabbing them. And what you will need to do is you will need to switch to another party member, stop what they're doing, and free them mm -hmm. by attacking. And if you don't do that, the party member that is incapacitated will take a ton of damage. Massive damage. So all three of you, the scorpion never p no, picked you up? No, did that for me. Did. Okay. Oh, it, oh. All right, Damian. Yeah, it, it, was, was it what cool? happened? Yeah, it was like I what happened in the trailer. It. it read the red reticule went on Cloud in, the, uh -huh. in that last phase. Yeah, and he, or second last phase, he just scooped up Cloud. I was like, just pushed up to go to Barrett, and I was like, boom, 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 and used an ability, and like Cloud just broke free, and it's like, it's like yeah, it was just like that. It was like really simple, really easy to do. Cool. I, I feel like it, it was good to do because it made it wobbly, it built it mm -hmm. stagger faster, so. It felt I I felt like it was encouraging you almost like do that intentionally. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah they like, oh, showed yeah, like yeah. a machine stepping on Cloud. Yeah, that was brutal. Yeah, was like, like yo, you're having to shoot him off him. Crush awesome. Cloud. Yeah, <laughs> just like a cool little sense of urgency you got to deal with real quick. Um, uh, sorry the the scorpion picked up Cloud. Oh, is there a dodge? Is there a yes, yeah, yeah, circle, 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 dodge? Okay. Yeah. So like the you see the reticle on you. The, yeah, you the expectation is that you would dodge. So if you, yeah, yeah like, or you could run around. Yeah, and you sprint it, too. Yeah, you can gotcha. like roll around, and get out of range and stuff. Like as I said, like it does AOEs, it fires missiles at you and stuff. But you know, you just stand still there, just like grabs you and pulls you up. It's, yeah. Something that I liked during the scorpion boss fight is I was like, okay, am I going to be able to just roll away from everything? Like, is that going to be my default defense? And definitely during the slower attacks, I felt like the roll was more effective. Mm -hmm. But the faster, like the quick gun attacks that the scorpion boss would have, I felt like it would be much better to block. Because like cool. trying to roll and then getting hit, you would get staggered. And so just blocking and taking it mm -hmm. would allow you to act sooner. And so, yeah, it was nice feeling like both of those defensive options were equally valuable. Yeah. Uh, so to go in the most basic mode, sorry, uh, X is pause time. Yes. yes. Square is attack. Tactical mode. Your normal attack, yes. Yes. Yep. Triangle is swap uh, stance. Yes. When it's available. When it's yep. available. And circle is dodge. Mm -hmm. And then the R buttons are all attached to uh, hotkeys. Uh, the L2 or R2. Okay. Um, and uh, something to emphasize about the abilities, it wasn't like... 
Cloud just had Braver, which was like, hey, if you want to do a good chunk of damage, do Braver. There were other attacks, like there was a dash forward, there was a triple, triple slash, slash yeah. and it was like, okay, well, if you're fighting multiple things, use this attack. If you want to focus on getting that stagger, do this attack. And so you'll have different abilities for different situations. Yeah, but like, I want to use this assume. ability. Yeah, yeah. But situation. it was nice to see in the deck. Yeah, it's cool. Cool. Like yeah. a little layer of uh, depth and complexity of the combat I didn't expect. Nice. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought at the, like, Hack is, I thought it was gonna be like more Kingdom Hearts, I guess. Just more slash and dodging, like hotkeys, healing and stuff like that. But it's a little slower more than that. Slower, Whoa. a little more deliberate. Nice. Like, kind of thinking about what you're gonna do more. Cool. The lock on system was interesting because, uh, I mean, obviously it's just the R3 stick to, to lock on. Mm -hmm. And then you can like move it to st toggle between them. Or you could, if you're using an ability, it's just like the old fashioned, like go down the list. But uh, enemies like line of sight, like you can't, it just doesn't automatically hit stuff. Uh, there was some uh, f aerial enemy that was behind one of the like kind of like the fence part of one of the upper like levels, and it had like an X like through it, so like it wouldn't be hit. And I tried using Barrett's one of his abilities to hit it, and it just didn't hit it. I was like, okay, good, they mm -hmm. have line of sight there. The world you, is real, yeah. You saw in the trailer or the the demonstration, like the it targeted right and left leg during the fight at the end. At the very end, that was and I was I was yeah. too far behind it and it wouldn't target it was targeting trying to cut through the legs in front of it. So it was like its hind legs and front legs. It was trying to target the front legs for some reason. Mm -hmm. And two times I tried an ability and it just didn't connect. I was like, oh well then forget this. I'm you know I'm just gonna go after the boss and stuff. So like you do have to account for like physical position as well. Well cool. it yeah. It kind of defaults to like this soft lock on system where it'll automatically put a, a cursor on your target and then you can switch between them by using the right analog stick. But if you click the stick in, it will hard lock mm -hmm. on that target as cool. well. So, yeah, yeah man. I was it very feels pleased. so far away now that we're talking about it. I was it. very pleased. Oh, music's great too. Yes, the music's the music good. is fantastic. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. I stayed on the tile screen for a while. Did you? Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> Damiani's awesome. seal of approval. It was, like, right it was there. the main theme. And I was like, I like this rendition. I'm going to chill here for a while. Yeah, you, you know what? That's the only shot you got for like months and months. Why not? Mm. Um, talking with Brad and Damiani immediately, not immediately, but after we had all played it. Um, Something that I thought was interesting is like in the final phase of the fight, he's trying to heal up, and I think there they want you to target the different parts of the legs. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you can definitely just, just be like, it. nope, <laughs> like <laughs> we're gonna brute force this yeah, with damage stagger, and just yeah, focus on the main unit. In the demo, down. the ATB could build up really fast. Cool. I don't know if it'll be like that in the right. game, but it's really fast. Right. Yeah, hard to tell if the difficulty yeah. will be representative of what we're getting, but yeah. Yeah, it was exciting. You answered all my questions. Did we? Yeah, I feel sad. Like, I had a bunch of questions about what that game's like. And I like had questions, but I didn't get to ask any. I was sad. Sure. So that one was strictly demo, and then Kitase said, oh, get out. They were like, <laughs> it was like, you know, it's never the like the game person. It's like the PR people oh, yeah, that yeah. always shut it down. Yep, 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 They're of like, course. <laughs> one of those things. Mm -hmm. Man, I wish we could have just seen Materia slotting in. Yeah. But... I'm just it, I'm stuff. grateful that we yeah. got to play it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a game that I exists. was reassured and feel feel very happy about it. Cool. Next yes. game. Next, Next game. game, which is The Avengers. The Avengers. Oh, get I'm out of here. Marvel's yep. Avengers. So, uh, I'm out of here. I'll get Brandon Jones. I know you're, uh, it doesn't matter if we say this. Ian, uh, I don't know if we're going to mask this part like cut to something like a, a no. Baby, he's just running in. Just running okay. in. Just, just run, running come in. Come on in. And right. where's where's Michael Huber? I know there's feedback Michael where people Huber, said, to hey, it'd be nice if you went to a screen uh, so we don't see people yeah. walking in and out. Who said that? Uh, we said feedback that. Feedback from last year. I think last year they're like, hey, we missed the in-between. We want to see you all goofing around and like we, we, we get, we get we're mad. We're in the studio we... now. Okay. This is not I think it's off. an even split. Yeah. I think when we're doing press conference reactions. This is, this is serious. Then we humor. want this to be clean. Huber has some serious questions. Serious but if questions. we're doing this, questions. we're running and we're gunning. Yeah. I did fail Huber today. Huber asked me to like message him immediately and to let him know if it was like actual gameplay yeah. for Avengers. And yeah. I it was like not until I saw him walking around again for the second time, I was like, Huber, yes, it is gameplay. <laughs> Huber, gameplay. <laughs> like two hours later. <laughs> like, Wait, Whoa. so you played too? We did not play. We, not we play. saw okay. a demo. Basically, saw the the, the whole trailer. It was the it was. Well, what uh, game is this again? Uh, Avengers. Yes. Oh just, yeah, let's give Bloodworth a nice clean open. Actual, yes. actually. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Bloodworth, start your marker <laughs> right now. So Michael Damiani and I were fortunate enough to see a behind closed doors uh, the 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 presentation of the Avengers yes. gameplay demo of a day Avengers Day that you see in the trailer um, that uh, people could also queue up and go see, but. Uh, 
Tell me when I got to mm. sneak in there this and was check a it out. Hot ticket item. People oh, were at E3? fighting to try and get into this. Yeah, I'm Just sure. Walking up, like <laughs> begging to get into this, and they were turning people away. I was one of those people. I went up. I was like, uh, "You got any extra? <laughs> yeah, like, like, we're not talking about average people. We're talking so, yeah. about like high up people, yeah. like journalists. Oh, you're you're saying like, at the media desk. They're like, I don't actually have an appointment, but I'd really like to see this. And mm -hmm. they were just like, "Sorry, you don't have me. an appointment. We can't do anything about it." Yeah, like, I took a picture. Actually, they had uh, uh, right right in front of the line. It was a Shield logo. Yes, and I was Huber. so pumped on it. I was like, "Yes!" They gave you something. Yeah, <laughs> representation. <laughs> they give you cookie crumbs. Uh, and this was played. So there yes. was there was someone on site that was actually playing like, the demo. So just, yeah, we walked in there. We see the title screen. Got an X, like press X to start. Yeah. So it's like, yes, we were seeing gameplay immediately. Press X and to I, start. Yes. And so I this could, is running yeah. on PlayStation. It was a blue X. Oh, okay. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Mm. What does that mean? That's a that's an Xbox. Yeah. yeah. There you go. PlayStation is like pink. Pink X? No, dude. No. Blue, it's, blue a, X. it's a blue X. It is a blue X, actually. Well, but the, the, never the, the, stylized as a blue yes. X. The this surface. is not what I want to talk about. Donnie <laughs> yeah. did this with Final Fantasy 2, Jones. He really he really throws me off my this game. Isn't it? I know. I'm throwing off here. I'm this like, isn't it. I'm well, riding a bike no. and Damian is throwing sticks into my we're, wheels. We're like disconnecting now. I think Kyle's <laughs> trying to do bits and we're not doing bits. So no. We're not doing bits. I'm I'm genuinely Damian. We're doing an Avengers bit. With both of these games, I'm genuinely extremely interested. Yeah. Yes. I know. Like know. How yes. I could tell that the guy was playing this is there was one point, there were a couple times where he like wanted to make something cool happen. You could see he was like setting something up and it didn't quite happen. I don't know if you remember this. There was one classic. I was like, ooh, sorry, buddy. Didn't quite go. Oh, Joe. He picks up. He's Hulk. Yes. He picks up a dude. Yeah. Winds up. Turns towards the edge of the bridge. I'm like, I don't know where that guy went. Like, yeah, I, like, it just gone. <laughs> oh, so he, like, drops like, the guy. Like, <laughs> I, was totally, I was totally ready for the toss right off the bridge. Yeah. And I was just like, the same vanished. Much. I don't know where that dude went. to throw the ball in. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and I wonder, if the what I've been trying to figure out, Damiani, is, like, I wonder if... Uh, actually, th of all the demos that I saw today, I like, wonder if, like, if this is actually, you know, moment for moment something we're going to play in the game, or if this is a level that's going to be in the game, but it was doc not a doctored, but, like, influenced somehow, like, they gave the, the player abilities that, you know, uh, obviously you want to, oh, you know, like, sure, yeah. increase yeah. Increased player health and everything, so you don't have somebody I dying think. right in the middle of an exclusive Just demo. Just like every E3 demo. Yeah. Because yeah. um, they, th like, they were, it was just ability, 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 ability. It was crazy. Like, especially, like, Thor and Hulk were just like, they whoa! Had... Like, everything he did was a completely different, like, so you know, yeah. move. Yeah, basics here. So yeah. you understand the combat system. Yes. The okay. first thing they do, the first actual combat thing you see, QTE. The triangle button from Thor. Right. Thor doing like the the, the 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 smash with the hammer and electrifying and stunning everybody. So they're like, yes, there will be QTE things here. Mm -hmm. But it is a basic melee combat system where you're doing like combos to build up, but you have these abilities that are on cooldown. These big circles on the bottom right corner. How look like two general like abilities two general, and then and it a super builds up one. to like a super yeah. one essentially. Cool. And you just gotta like you use them, you gotta watch them recharge, you can pop them again. And then like the the yeah, the super ones were like yeah. In, like they looked good, the, but the combos they like didn't show. They weren't explaining like the inputs, anything like that. Right. They like they left it up to your imagination to see what's going on. So Thor's just like bashing people, like bam, 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 up, bam, bam, bam in the air, slam down. It's like, and then none of those cooldowns ones off. Like, is that just like a regular combo? Is it is it like two buttons? Heavy, weak. Didn't explain that part of it. Okay. Yeah. I was kind of surprised by Thor. Like, Thor, you know, yeah. like when a random soldier comes up to Thor and he's got to hit him like five times. I'm like, that's not right. That is That's not very right. Thor like to me. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think like, out of everybody, what? Thor was a little a little disappointing just in, in what he did in the demo. He was just the first character you played as, and he's just kind of having a skirmish in the middle of the street. And it's like, it just seems weird Yo. that yes. Thor, would, Thor would, you know, swoop down to their level and. Um, but it was just the the introductory level. Loved everybody else though. Loved, loved yes, that's what I'm about to get to. We got to see all five Avengers fight right. in this. They just want advanced to each next one. And that second one when Iron Man, yeah. it kicks in and you're like flying. It's like a shooter all of a sudden. I was like, okay. <laughs> like each one's going to have a unique play. Like, yes, this is good. Like I was really excited about that part because I was mm -hmm. a little like, okay, it's Thor. Yeah, yeah. it's like, it looks just like a general action game. And then bam, a generic action game. Bam, they hit you with Iron Man. I was like, oh, yeah. Like tar locking like, so on. How like, yeah. is that going to work in multiplayer? The, I did, This level is not indicative. Yes. But yeah. they did. Okay. They showed they showed a couple bits at the end where I'm like, there we go. Okay. So that, that looks more like Marvel Ultimate Alliance. That looks more like you can see like you know everybody fighting simultaneously. I, I do oh, want to explain that off the top because we learned this crazy thing today. When you're playing through the campaign of the game, you don't select your characters. 
Okay. They're just particular missions for particular characters as you progress that, to the story. Yes, Interesting. Th okay. That makes sense from what actually from what we saw because sure. when at a certain point there was a scripted event where Iron Man says, "Okay, my turn to jump in and stuff," and yeah. it switches perspective to Iron Man. Yeah. And then later on, like I was wondering, like when Thor jumps over that gap and smashes like you know the tank that you saw in the trailer, I was like. Are they just gonna make that? Like I was telling you, here, I was like, is that just gonna be like, if you're playing as Iron Man at that point, is this gonna be Iron Man doing it? It's like, no, yeah. you switch the right. game scripts it so that you will switch to each character at certain beats yeah. in the level. Yeah, and and I think Jones and I said maybe that's just like where the game starts and then you pick your character for the rest. Yeah, of the I game. just yeah, it's I just, not that. It's yeah. it's that for the whole game. I don't know. I I, re okay. I really really feel like this first level is just a little. T it's the variety pack of cereal. Sure. You know, you just get a little taste of Lucky Charms, a little mm -hmm. taste of Cheerios. It was just like a little bit of, and it was kind of fun because when it got near the end of it, I was like, oh bummer, we didn't get any Black Widow. And they're like, oh here we go. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> she she was the big finale. I, I so believe it was... they might have toned this down for E3. Like this might have been more of a demo fied like version of the level like when this fun hmm. this like the I don't know, yeah. level is finally revealed i think there might be more to it yeah um i, I definitely think like because everything was like the timing of everything was like yeah we just got enough time of every single character i mean that may, maybe that makes for a good tutorial but it seemed a little too planned for hey we, we need to, we only have this much time to show you all the characters here uh, you go. i mean the spider-man demo same thing yeah, like, yeah. hey yeah. we they, cut out a whole exactly two yeah and stuff like that. I, i'm I'm extremely concerned about this game. Oh, you were okay. Like, it is my most concerned game of E3 by far. Like, <laughs> I'm not concerned about anything except this game. <clears throat> Help me understand two okay. things okay. Or, or put my mind at ease. One of them I don't think you'll Try. be able to. Okay. One of them is just straight up level design. Right. I can't, like, I'm, I just keep picturing Anthem in my brain. I, I imagine playing this game multiplayer, just having these, like, really basic arenas where you just go in and and attack and then two is the impact i i the brief trailer i saw i didn't feel the impact oh, from yeah. people hitting and now you're saying oh. thor took yeah. like seven hits to hit your seven hits to kill <laughs> they someone said five they I said, said five. five yeah <laughs> five and it's like I, they were good they were good hits though you know okay. like and it was and it was fun like just like dummy i was saying it's fun to like knock somebody up in the air and then jump up and like smack them down again like that you felt know pretty what, good Huber? and he and he didn't really go too nuts with the the the, the lightning obviously that was like, yeah, his it was just big, opening his big crazy like, super yeah. was just a multiple like yeah. flew up in the air and like when uh, hulk punches someone versus black hulk, widow hulk was out of control so you hulk, feel hulk i think was my favorite sequence of all of Cool, yeah, cool, cool, cool. I think that yeah. one definitely hit it. But I mean, I get your concern, Huber. There were moments because we're obviously getting it hands on with it. We're just yeah. watching the gameplay. Definitely. I did have a moment where we, I thought back to uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, mm -hmm. where we kind of like we're discussing the weight of the lightsaber hits. Yeah. Are those really registering, mm -hmm. or is it just you know, is and is that going to be imported to the feel of playing it and, and whether or not those hits? You know, I don't know. Does it actually mm -hmm. like you like when you're hitting it? Does it register? And I would err on the side of, you know, cautiously cautiously optimistic. Cool. Because one, Hulk, Hulk did absolutely feel that way. That's cool. What did I, you do as Hulk? That's helping me. Let's get specific. Yeah, well, that's I, getting I, me yeah. hyped. I want to clarify Iron Man because then that went directly yeah, into Hulk. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. Iron Man was interesting because... It felt like it didn't feel like Star Fox, but I think it was. Like I think you had, I think you just had to kind of stick on that bridge, basically. Meaning, like, yeah, like sure. Iron Man couldn't be like, I'm gonna go to downtown San Francisco right now. Like you had to stay on rails. Like in yeah. the okay, you know, got, it, rails. got it, got it, got it. Got it. To stay okay, in the you. sequence, <laughs> and and when you took over as Iron Man, he kind of flew over where Thor was and headed along the bridge. So I think for like an intro to a game, it's a very clear line. It's like the bad guys are going along the bridge, fly along them along the bridge. So, so like, we're probably I, not gonna do a lot of flying in multiplayer. So what that means to me? I yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. Yeah. This, it it's the whole thing yeah, was, was was geared around that bridge. Linear, yeah. There's a bridge. You were trying and to so yeah, like when you took over yeah. when you took over for Black Widow, it was like very cinematic. And like I don't know how, if each level is going to do that. I just think yeah. it's like this this a, a big blockbuster introduction to the character abilities mm -hmm. and to the world and to this. Obviously, they want to give a weight to this event that's happening. Um, but uh, so not only is is Iron Man taking out targets as he's flying in. But uh, kind of remind me of Iron Man Two when he goes under the overpass and yeah. all the cars are like, vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> like, at, like he was going underneath cars and it was just like they just had the the frame rate definitely buckled. Like, oh yeah, but it's just, it, it, it was it, buckled. Early, it was early demo, like <laughs> it, it, in the way the classic demos always mm -hmm. do, like the first time you see a game. But in a in a way that I appreciate because it wasn't like wow, that's frame rate's happening. I don't wonder what's going on. Like, there's no question why this game was like hold on a second. Like, I'm I'm exploding twenty cars at once right now. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so so 
Iron Man then switch to Hulk, right? How, how, was, the, how was the impact of like shooting things? I mean, it, it looked cool? it looked cool. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it looked you know it looked right cool. for that at least. Cool. But you got you remember I think it was you, Kyle. You specifically complained that oh we cut from Hulk jumping out yes. Bruce Banner to that because yeah. they probably didn't have it done. Oh, that yeah. was done. That oh, was done. We done. saw yeah, the yeah. full transformation yeah, scene, and it was like that. It was like that. It was fast. Well, did like clothes rip off? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Did it look painful? It looked, I mean, it looked like he was used to it. Sure. Yeah, like he'd been through this process before. Yeah. Rated on a scale of one to ten. Um, six, seven. Oh, it's seven. I'll go seven. Yeah. Because okay. you're really close. You're like right on his. It back. was so brief. Okay. And it was the kind problem. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Like you yeah. see his back rip out of the shirt, <laughs> and then the camera goes over his shoulder, and then he lands, and he's full Hulk. He's uh, got pants on. Huber, him. best Hulk transformation? No joke. Lego Marvel superheroes. <laughs> Why? It looks painful. Yeah. The clo like the Why? clothes so are falling off. Are like Lego clothes are falling off. Yeah, or dude, it looks it looks crazy. <laughs> what, uh, awesome. Excellent, excellent transformation. I kind of awesome. dug. So Iron Man then lands when he gets around the middle mm. of the bridge. And what I kind of dug about Iron Man is he was like he didn't do a lot of punching. It was mostly firing when yes, he was like why, yeah, like, like melee attacking. Yeah. So it was a lot of like boom. He's you, definitely boom, ranged. Like, that seems right. He was yeah. very he was very kind of like sneaky and. Um, you know, a lot of, like he was running at him and he was just constantly like, nope, nope, get away, get away. Were there a lot of one liners? Uh, that's one thing that I actually really appreciated was uh, everyone was talking all the time. Yeah. So it didn't matter who you were playing as. Oh, you're there was still like getting comms. There was first... one great moment where you were Hulk yeah. and Iron Man said something mm -hmm. and Black Widow was like, Tony, concentrate. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, fine. Gotcha. He, he, so, like, I think his introduction when he shows up to take over for the uh, when Thor drops out and it's him taking over, he says a lot. He has a one liner there. I forget what it was, though. Like, yeah. yeah, he just had like he, he just chimed. In so many joke. Tony Stark jokes. Yeah, in my he like head. lands. Like, and he, he says a joke, and then he takes off to start fighting. And I was like, "I'll take him here, Sparky." Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't laugh at it. Didn't even get yeah. a chuckle from yeah. me. For but, sure. You know, they're trying. It's yeah. expected. Yeah, it's, it's just how he talks. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and even Cap, who uh, was the last. Oh no, sorry, Black Widow. No, Cap. We did play as, as Cap before Black Widow. Yes, or they uh, the the demo did. Yeah, it was um, interesting. You could hear him the whole time too, being like, "I'm I'm on the ship right now. I'm trying to figure stuff out." And Black Widow's talking with him like. What are they doing? Because she could, and that was was neat. Was Black Widow could tell the whole time, like we're wasting time. Like we shouldn't be here on the bridge. Like it's nice that Cap's on that ship, but like I feel like we're being distracted. Like this isn't. Um, so it was neat to see her kind of like being level headed, and Thor just like I'll take care of stuff, and Hulk is running around, and like mm -hmm. Iron Man being cocky. It was not. It, they definitely grounded that like Black Widow and Cap were the two that were actually like situational awareness. We're kind of looking at yeah. the big picture, um, like Shield agents do. And then yeah, uh, what isn't the ship called Chimera? Yeah, so the Chimera is the name of the floating ship. Yeah, which uh, like it threw me off. Even in the trailer, I it picked up evil. on that. Yeah, because I was like, wait a second, <laughs> is isn't wait Chimera? The Avengers like... built a, an evil ship. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Chimera, and uh, what's the other one? It's like other name. What was the Mission Impossible? It's kind of like was it Chimera and Bele Belefro or something? I think so. Chimera the two virus? viruses or whatever. Yeah. Chimera virus, like right? yeah. yeah, but <laughs> no, like it, it, like it's definitely like. They establish pretty early on when you find out, like, they, it's like immediately, oh, it's Taskmaster. Like, they say, it's ta Taskmaster, because we're yeah. all, like, talking about that. It's like, it's a heist. Like, oh, but this is a distraction. They're trying to, like, right. trying to steal something from us. Uh-oh, let's do something about that. And, uh, yeah, like, Jones, I don't know if this was weird to you. It was a little weird to me, and it's not any fault of the game, because obviously they're not going to get the MCU actors, but... Hearing the banter when they weren't on screen, I was like, uh, uh, obviously Black Widow, I could tell, but everyone else was like, is, is that Cap? Is that is that supposed to be Captain? I was like, crap. Wait, I was like, wait, where, where's? Yeah. I was like, wait, no, that's not the right. I'm not used to this voice. Like, it's gonna take some time to actually sure. get to the new voices, and it was just throwing me off a little bit. I was like, who's talking there again? And I was like, oh, they said Cap. I was like, okay, got you there. I was like, ah, it's so annoying, but uh, nothing they can do about that. Yeah. You know? Uh, but Hulk, man, Hulk, yes. just, like, the biggest reaction that happened in that room was Hulk just grabbed two dudes. Yes, that was awesome. awesome. Ah. And, like, that was the one time I, like, through the headphones, I like, can audibly hear, like, the whole room, like, cool. Uh, and he's just, like, just wall running and, oh, and one, another thing that's cool is, like, he'd be wall running and run past and Iron Man would just fly by him or, like, you know, Black Widow would say something and you could see her in the distance, like, hey, I'm on your helicopter, like, grabbing somebody. Um, so definitely got to say, it wasn't a sense of like, all right, now I'm Hulk, but what else is going on? Like, so why it is, is a spectacle. Yeah. Again, it's just, it's just a, a huge set piece. Like, yeah. let's just yeah. start, you know, this, uh, you know, with a bang. Um, I imagine honestly, all the campaign levels are going to be 
tuned, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Finally tuned. But not as much as that. Not like, as much as this. You yeah. can't have this is like overdeveloped, right? You can't have all these overlapping be kind things of boring, throughout you know? the entire like, game. You, yeah. Like you, you it definitely did get a sense like that you were kind of watching this. It was like a movie that you were allowed to play, but mm -hmm. this is the first time I'm ever being able to control these characters. Yeah. So I'm gonna put you in a situation with Hulk where like it's so very clear again with the bridge, it's so very clear, like run, there's a gap, there's a wall on the side, <laughs> run on the wall. You know, like there's four dudes, like they're, you're maybe gonna like stun Hulk, but like they're not gonna kill you right now. You know, just kind of yeah. you know play around with his abilities, get used to how different he feels, get to the end, and then we'll load up another character and you can play as them. But um, and it, it just seemed like, I don't know, like, it seemed like a much more uh, like guttural Hulk. He seemed kind of like more Crow Magnon, like he had like a bigger forehead, his face was a little more pinched, like, and his growl just was like a little bit deeper, not like better. Huh. You know, like there's so many different variations of Hulk, but like. Take the, like especially coming off of, like Thor Ragnarok and having like you know monologues oh, from Hulk like this was definitely dude. like and it was neat yeah uh, that especially after like all of the you know the drama that Hulk went through in the last parts of the MCU it was neat like having Black Widow like flying over the ship and she's like all right you know you know Bruce you're up and he's like okay and then he just like walks to the back of the ship jumps off lands and then once he lands and becomes Hulk Black Widow starts talking to him again and is kind of like telling him what to do she's like okay Hulk no you know. Go over there, help help with this now. So it's like Banner's gone. She's not talking to Banner anymore. Yeah. She's talking to Hulk. Does he still speak? Um, not really. I think he said Hulk Smash. Yeah, 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 I just I like love that Troy Baker is saying he, 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 yeah. Hulk Smash. Was that yeah. you know? What, Did they he, confirm that that that's him? Yeah, they confirmed that in the thing in the Square Enix. Yeah, thing. Well, I know he plays Banner, but I don't know if they got some. Oh, oh like, got you. Because like Fred Tattashore does Hulk for everything. Like he's done uh, Hulk and Lego. He's done Hulk and animated. Oh. He's done, but like, he doesn't do Bruce Banner. Uh, no, he's yeah, just as Hulk. <gasps> yeah, uh, Whoa. So, like, I don't know if they <laughs> were like, oh, let's get Fred. Hulk's right, right there. That's interesting, yeah. Jones. Uh, yeah, his face actually reminded me of the, uh, the Ang Lee, uh... Ang Lee Hulk. Yeah, Ang yeah, Lee yeah. Hulk with, yeah. uh... Uh, and even Banner. like Edward Norton's vert, like one as well. Yeah, like mm -hmm. it looked like that face. And would, his yeah. his super was just a big gamma. Like his his, yeah. his arms got all like you know like the green energy came off of his arms and just yeah it's like boom, clap like, boom like big shockwave yeah it went out yeah. How fun is it gonna be a customized Hulk? Oh, and, uh, oh yeah, I want like multiple... not fun. Wait, what? I just want normal Hulk. What what do you need? You want like different pants, back tattoos. <laughs> yeah, plant, planet Hulk. I don't like a tribal Hulk, like, tattoo. I yeah. want a star on the cheek. Uh, one cheek extra fun bit. To unlock. One extra. Fun I would like bit. a Mortal Kombat Hulk, where he's like, like flesh is taken off, and that's about it. Or just standard battle Hulk. damage Hulk. Yeah. Battle, da battle damage Hulk, or just normal Hulk. Yeah. Uh, Cyber the, Hulk. The tank moment you like with the tank pilot. Yes. Uh, didn't put this in the trailer, but he well, picks, oh, where he kicks him. Yeah, but he picks up the thing and looks over, and the guy goes, "Oh shit!" And then <laughs> yeah, takes him out of the way. So I was like, "Oh, that's not, that wasn't in the trailer." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice little bit. Um, and then then we switch over to Black Widow, and yes. Black Widow takes on Taskmaster. Taskmaster. Yep. And that was cool because he's ex. I do not know a lot about Taskma Taskmaster. This to me cements that it's not in the Spider-Man universe. I had some people tweeting at me, but they were like, "I think they could still do it," but he's in both. Yeah, there and is it, and very different and Spider-Man, and they're very, very different, different Taskmasters. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, there was so she starts chasing him. He gets his jetpack, yeah. and then she jumps she on his jetpack, grabs it. I don't know how much control you had in this situation. Yeah, that might I don't be... know if you're just like spamming like the punch to just do damage to him, or if you're just kind of like on a ride. But this, yeah. just visually, again, the frame rate buckled, but like, just visually, this was the one where I was like, wow, this was so cool. It's, I would love for you to see this one moment, because it was, it reminded oh. me of uh, the, you know, any of those big long shots. The Endgame had one, the Avengers had one, where Dude. you just visited every, in First one shot, Avengers. every single person. Oh, I so got she's you. she's flying around mm -hmm. him, and like, there's Iron Man, yeah. there's, Beautiful. you know, Hulk. Um, uh, you can kind of see in one trailer, but like an ambulance like slides off the bridge, and she yells like, Tony! And he like, catches it, he's like, I got it, got it. And uh, so it's just neat seeing. You're selling it, Jones. You're selling yeah. it. Like my expectations have kind of dipped from the trailer they showed, and I'm kind of just trying to think about what this game is. But you're selling the the spectacle of it. Like this is a ride you go on. You know, this is yeah, just yeah, a this big one mission, budget because blockbuster like, ride. They showed a little bit. It ended with the same thing where like uh, when, when the whole thing was over uh, of Tony being mad at Bruce by the you know the statue and like some of the shots that we had seen, and they like deliberately. Dropped in a couple other ones, like some crazy snow level. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. there were two shots oh, specifically Jeez. that I was like, that is regular third person distance from the character you are playing, and two other characters are next to you, and you're all, I... just, you know, it's not like they, like they didn't pick shots at the end where they're like, oh, and another big cinematic crazy mm -hmm. thing over a cliff or into a ship or something. It was like, you're all just kicking ass. Like, so I, I definitely think there are going to be moments um, where it's like, let's just run in and 
But it, it's really interesting though that you 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 that they tailor the character specifically for those events. Yeah. yeah. And then the mission mode, that's where co-op is and then you just go nuts and beat up a bunch of robots. And I I wonder too if if like that's also kind of open for interpretation. Just over time they're going to just like add more like this level before that used to be bound to these characters, now we've opened it up a little bit. They've know, actually said that. So they've said like like hey, you you did a Iron Man playthrough of that specific level, you you can have a different experience of that level yeah. with Thor. But it's not meant like, oh, I can drag any character I want at any time into any story level, basically. Got it. Because there's probably, like, on-rail shooting levels where you're flying through. You know? But also, I think it's, like, story-heavy. I think... Yeah. So, like, the whole idea... This is what is, makes me really excited about yeah. everything you're just talking about, Jones, of reassemble. Basically, you have to tell everybody, you have to show everybody, they have to feel how good it is to be in the Avengers. And I really think that he set that up on top. Like, the idea of, like, Tony, there's an ambulance falling, and you get to see him pick that up immediately. Yeah, yeah that's cool. It's like, oh, we're this team. And then, so, for you to feel any loss of the team breaking up, you have to have this moment of the team being excellent together. Yeah. Huber, I totally forgot. Uh, okay, so there, there were, I had a couple issues with Thor. But the best thing about Thor is just the Leviathan hammer, bro. See so yeah, how was it? Throw it, the hammer. Yeah. So like one guy oh, uh, yeah. came in and he <laughs> threw it and pinned the guy against the truck yes. and then punch, 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 Ooh. punch, punch, jumped in the air, pulled the hammer off of him and then slammed it. Uh, down. Combat designer worked on God of War, the recent yeah. one. Like that was yeah. So, so he's it, like he's like yeah I know how to do that. He's yeah. like, <laughs> well, it's like all right all right I know so how that was cool. Okay. Launches one. <laughs> And then, like, calls it back, too. And, and it was, like, and it was flying me. off. And yeah. it's like, come And back. he did it again in another part, and he kind of right. had trouble setting it up. And I could just see the player being like, okay, let me, ah, stop hitting me. I'm going to grab this thing. Like, <laughs> so it, it definitely, I definitely got the vibe, like, okay, this guy is playing this and trying to do, you know, as good yeah. a job as he can. But, uh, yeah, totally forgot that specific bit. And I hope there's co-op moves um, where you can, like, slam the hammer on sh the cap shield. So or, oh, Huber, dude, that's yeah. what, charging that's what I'm looking forward yeah. to, because we yeah. didn't see that. And I think it goes to Kyle's point about getting the Avengers to reassemble. You got to earn those moments yeah like, the, those payoffs when you finally have like cap comes back and yeah you use you know hammer on shield <laughs> thing it's like yes. yes like that moment's gonna be so important right. i feel at least i hope they nail that moment yeah so black widow's fighting taskmaster mm -hmm. uh taskmaster is x shield which i didn't know and so he he says that as he's flying off. He's like, from one shield agent to another. Like, so you're really dark. With... Why didn't you open with this, Jones? <laughs> you got anything shields, shields, shields for humor. Man, you buried so the lead. They're you know, flying. That cameo? No, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they land on a top part of one of like the yeah. big arches of the Golden Gate. Uh, he does like a flyby. You have to dodge him and then pew, 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 as he's doing another pass and then dodge him again. And then he grabs her, they fall off, and then land on a part of the bridge. And then it's just like boss fight. Then it's literally just one on one, her versus him. And Taskmaster's deal is that he will memorize your mm -hmm. combat yeah. moves. You can't keep doing it's like the Borg. Like you can't keep doing the same thing to him. And so um, I don't. That wasn't necessarily represented in like gameplay. Again, it's yeah. just the, like yeah. the first boss fight Mr. of the entire Freeze game. So they, style. They sure. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> but they were talking about it the whole time. Constant banter between him and, and uh, Black Widow. Mm -hmm. And uh, she finally got the upper hand and went invisible. Which I don't know. Yes. Is that her? Special ability, or I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm not. Like, I was shocked. It's like, oh, yeah, she's going invisible. I mean, that might be common knowledge. And yeah, he put the ring on. Yeah, yeah, she put on the ring from Frodo. Lent it to them. Special delivery. And he, yeah, he got angry. He was like, oh, okay, you know, oh, yeah, Huber, Huber. I know we got to actually play it, but like narrative wise, I think this is gonna nail it, dude. And I think spectacle wise, I think it's gonna nail it. Awesome. It's you just, guys really sold me. Yeah. You guys made me feel a lot better about this game. For sure. And they're adding more th people as time goes on. Yeah. Like, there's hope Colson will show up. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I want Wolverine. Are we yeah. getting X-Men in this? I don't know. It's we'll going see. down, Jones. Oh, gosh. Based off Mo Ultimate Alliance 3, dude, X-Men is DLC. Yeah. Like, they, they will well, make you... Free, and it's yeah. coming into the MCU. Like, yeah. it is fully but all this is free. part of it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's free DLC, but like you it's, have to wait. it's an incentive, right? I, it's, it's you got to leave something, leave them wanting something. I wonder mm -hmm. if they're instead of like I don't know if they want to make a like an actual direct sequel to this so much as they do seasons and there's like a story arc and like I'm really curious to see that concrete roadmap for what they're gonna do because I think mm -hmm. yeah. like Division because it's so South. narrative heavy, yeah. I think they have like a lot of arcs they're gonna plan out. And you're gonna like jump into like you know, maybe it'll be like you know the Secret Wars arc after this. Yeah. Who knows what they're gonna do? But they can dive into all that stuff and keep updating this game. Essentially, uh, yeah. I'll tell you my number one fear okay. uh, is that to incentivize us going into the multiplayer mode, mm -hmm. uh, the mode in which our skins matter and all of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine the single player mode could get hard, 
so that we have to go to the multiplayer mode, level up our character to take that character back into single player mode so it's easier than it was. That's my only concern. Mm. I don't... Do we know if there's cross progression, though? Yeah. There is. Yeah. So single player will you know, like you level up in that and multiplayer Cause it's together it's not like a it's not like a thing in the menu it's like you it's like you know when you're selecting your next mission you're all in the same base and okay. like you select it from there so yeah it's all carries but over. then that means that the campaign can er, the whole campaign can be played single player or co-op uh no campaign i don't know if it can be co-op the, st the the missions can be co-op the missions yes okay campaign i think you're solo campaign, got no it. matter what okay yep. yeah yeah huh i don't know did not confirm. They, he, he talked a little bit before and after, but it was very like, you know, uh, you will finally, you know, get to realize your Marvel dreams and become, you're like, all yeah, right, all right, yeah, right. Yeah, play the demo. Experience, experience. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, was the chest beam from Iron Man, was that his special? Was that his big charge up? <laughs> I believe because so, Because yeah. I remember he got up in the air and just like took out a bus and a couple other things. And I remember like, yeah, he, like should I remember looking. Yeah, 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 should have been his yeah, Marvel one. I remember yeah, he looking. up and he's like, unleashed like, I remember looking over at Damiani and Damiani went. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He like looked at me and nodded like I like that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Good part. One more Avenger, the finale. So we get on oh, board yeah. the ship. Cap. Cap is talking to the whole team. Yeah. Uh, the shot the from the trailer ambush. where they sneak up behind him immediately. Ambush the, goes into the throw, kind of like Thor. And then he's got this projectile, but Thor can throw it and leave it, and then fight, fight, fight. And like when Cap chucks it, it's naturally going to come back to him. So like you can do melee, but then it's like you're you're going to have the shield and it comes back. Has like a run with the shield up to knock over yeah. people. Can charge it up. Uh, did a cool move where he threw the shield, hit a couple of people, punched a guy, knocked him over, jumped up in the air, and then grabbed the yeah. shield and came back and slammed it down on the guy. And that was really cool. And then... How uh, are they just simple punches, though? Uh, just the same thing as Thor. It was nice. Okay. Good, good just impact. nice punches. Yeah. Okay. That's good as the okay. shield, obviously. But. Yeah. Um, and kick? it was... it was, like, a, it was kick someone in the chest? Um, I don't want Cap to do much kicking. Is that weird? He did, Yeah, there Dude, was like lots of grabs. He would like grab people. Good kicks. Like, you would grab them like, by the scruff. Like, like nice. pull them down to the ground. Yes. Oh, cool. um, a couple, nice. couple like electro hand dudes came in. Yeah, you know the classic like things. reintroducing new enemies coming in through the window. Uh, but it was it was tight corridor, so a lot of it was like you know uh, falling apart because Cap was chucking the shield all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then uh, kind of a cool moment they didn't really focus on in the story. Uh, uh, specifically, like a cutscene they didn't focus on in the trailer. But they all you know assemble on the bridge. Yeah. Black Widow is the one who's like. Oh. She just suddenly realizes, like, we're stupid. Like, we yeah. should be on that ship. We got to get Cap off that ship. And both Iron Man and Thor take off towards the ship, and then it blows up and knocks them back in midair. Mm. And so they're like, whoa, get knocked back. And, like, Tony's helmet immediately comes off. And he's like, damn. Like, you could just tell right away, like, oh, we just lost Cap. Yeah. Um, and then it, like, went on with the cutscene and a couple more shots at the end. And, and mm -hmm. that was it. But it definitely, like... Like I, I'm, I'm with everybody that it's it is weird meeting a new cast. You know, it is strange. Thor looks weird. Like it's <laughs> like like there's it's gonna take a while to get used to these characters. But like, and I've said this before. I I felt the same way about Spider Man. Like the first time I saw Peter, I was like, oh, like yeah. I don't know. Like yeah, Norman Osborn. And I was like, I don't know if I could really like jive with this world. And like I love these characters now. I'm totally into it. So I think it's going to be a transitional period. And. You know, it was framey. There were a couple, you know, it, it, I could tell the guy was nervous because he just wanted to set up every cool combo and ability that he could show us. But, like, there was no question in my mind that Crystal Dynamics was like, whatever we can do, you know, like, like let's just make everything happen. Like, let's just, just, just cram as much crazy stuff in the beginning of this game so you can see, like, how different these, you know, these characters are, um, kind of their attitude, how they communicate with each other. Um, and, uh, it just reminds, like, like, those moments, and when I first saw the trailer, when Hulk, like, jumps over the ledge, I, like, thought of, like, Lara Croft doing that. And these mm -hmm. big, like, kind of set-piece crazy moments where, uh, it's not necessarily, like, oh, a big crazy open world where I can just go anywhere in this area, but, like, you do have options. Um, and, uh, um, I think they've just kind of proven themselves with, uh, the last couple games they've made, so. And it's just, you know, those games are absolutely gorgeous, so. Um, I, 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 yeah, I have faith, it's just... Specifically, like, you know, we you've asked multiple times and we don't have the answers, just like the ins and outs of like yeah. how do missions work, how do yeah. I load in, how gear, long man. how long is each specific gear. mission? Yeah, is the campaign five work? hours and then we just replay like four multiplayer maps over and over, like, oh, there's more to come, but it launches just bare bones. There's so many questions with this game. Yeah. But you guys definitely raised my hype for sure for at least the story campaign yeah. being being a spectacle yeah. and an it, event it was the a special extra stuff great could be was anthem. Great yeah. the extra stuff could still be anthem yeah. but at yeah. least you have that foundation of this really cool definitely. story mode yeah. Yeah. definitely and at least in, in like an anthem like i cared about 
my character, but like I didn't really, I never really cared. There was no personality coming through any of the other people that I was playing as. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, I, there were just a lot of really great lines that I just thought was interesting, not only coming from your character talking to other people, but you could hear other characters talking. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I, um, because like in a lot of action games that I play, there's that's usually like a person. There's just like one person that's like, hey, I'm the voice in your head all the time. Like Spider-Man had a handful, you know, of like, while you're on this mission, I'm the one that's going to tell you specifically, the, you know, um, have a little dialogue at the beginning of the mission, a little dialogue at the end when your fight's over, a little dialogue after the cutscene. And it was just neat having all of them talking at once. Yeah. And uh, um, it'll be neat to have like major story moments set up that way, like introductions of villains and um, specifically Taskmaster and, and Black Widow, like recognizing each other. and Dude, um, and the culmination when you get them all back Yeah. at the end of that game. And then who who reveals themselves like at the credits? What character, boss man? Fantastic Call it now. Question, dude. Who is the reveal when you beat that game? Uh, the reveal is got to be unexpected. It is Reed Richards. Reed Richards. Richards. Evil Reed Richards. It's evil Reed Richards. Setting yeah. up yep. Silver Surfer. Sure. Wait, wait for another three months. We got DLC <laughs> coming, baby. Dude, the know, surfer's so like, coming. Surfer's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's it's interesting. I, I could I could see this being a fun action game with bad trailers. I could see them just like you know getting kind of confused about how to sell this thing. Not and, showing and just, the Hulk transformation is insane. <laughs> because it yeah it, it they, they they chopped that sucker up for that yeah. trailer. You know yeah. like that was like what we saw was yeah. just one big fluid thing. You know really smoothly transitioning between all of the characters, really showcasing their abilities. Um, and then if you yeah you can if you like. Look really closely. I get you know maybe you can discern that. I'm curious to go watch that trailer again and, and see if anything was different. But I it, like well, for example, they the the when the actual gameplay took over, or I think it was still a cutscene, but um, when I could tell because I got nervous when it started, I was like, this is exactly what the trailer yeah. saw. And then like, oh, no. when uh, <laughs> uh, when Cap the saw the explosion on the bridge, it was like, whoa! It's like Thor, Iron Man, go check it out. And then Thor and Iron Man take off and they're flying, and yeah. then it was like, oh, here we go. And then yeah. like and then like Iron Man starts you know goofing on Thor. I have a weird theory. Uh, about why we saw so little gameplay this year. I love your weird theories, Kyle. I think that a lot of developers had an Anthem meeting. <laughs> they, I think a lot of them talked about Anthem okay. throughout this year mm -hmm. and said, how do we not do... You know what I mean? Like, how do we... Maybe we just I shouldn't see. show anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, maybe we shouldn't give them anything because they're just going to look at our stuff and they're going to be like, it's not as good as it was at E3. And so, like, let's just give them nothing. And I wonder if that's, like, why they trim stuff out, Jones. Yeah, I wonder if it's just, like... Great weird theory. I think, Puddle yeah. controversy and stuff. Yeah. Just, like, let's maybe just not show as much or show a CG trailer. I wonder if that's yeah. what it is about, dude. I think it's also <laughs> just performance things. Like, a lot of times when we see something behind closed doors and I can tell, like, oh, this this game is in development. Like, you said it was framey. Yeah. And they don't want to show us anything framey. Uh, like, Publicly, like yeah. we also saw Cyberpunk today. And they said the same thing before Cyberpunk that they said last year. They're like, yeah. they're like it's not an if. You will see glitches. <laughs> they're like, weird stuff will happen because yeah. we're still working on this game. Yeah. And so that moment with Hulk we're like whoa where'd that guy go and like uh with Thor when he was fighting I think like one guy kind of got like stuck against the wall oh, or something. Yeah. and just the frame rate was like Whoa. a lot of cars a lot of explosions yeah and the bridge was just falling apart so like when Hulk's running it's not just the bridge it's like all yeah. sorts of like scooping up parts of the bridge like ripping parts and slamming on people spinning around yeah, that was fun yeah cool I will play it. No question. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Me too. Oh, Me too. Right. They got us. What's next? Next game is Shenmue 3. <gasps> Shenmue 3. Are we diving right in? Let's do it. Uh, Tommy, did you want to go? You're kind of yeah, Don, oh, yeah. uh, Don no, slash have, have Ian uh, yeah. was with me. So if yeah. either of them wants <laughs> to hop go. in. There we go. There we go. Nice jacket. Awesome. Wait, is Don back there too? Who? Okay. Uh, so I was trying to download the Shenmue 3 B roll yeah. that they gave us a link to. Yeah. And there are four different games on their press media page. Shenmue 3, only link that doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> so I got some nice grid B roll. Okay, let's <laughs> roll it. <laughs> roll in the grid B roll. Take a look at grid. No, no Shenmue footage then? No, no it Shenmue didn't work. Footage? The link didn't work. Okay. Damn it. You can try it again later. I left it open, but it didn't work. Cool. Uh, there is B-roll somewhere, but then I heard that it's like from an old build or something. Bootleg B-roll. Yeah, I don't know. Let's give Blood a nice clean open. Okay. Okay. The day has ah! come. <laughs> <laughs> the day has finally come. <laughs> I got my hands not on The Witcher 3, <laughs> but on Shenmue 3. <laughs> finally played it. 
And I well, well done. I can I'm confirm that it is good. <laughs> Great. It is good. There is no doubt. As a huge doubter in Shenmue 3, uh, I was standing there watching him play it. This game's trailers look janky. Yes. Mm -hmm. Watching him play it in real life. This is why you're here. It's charming. Yeah. <laughs> but good. It's a yeah. functional yeah. video game. Okay. Like, it looks, right. it looks the good. The magic it is looks there. Good. It, and it feels like the old ones. It nice. does. It, it looks, yeah. It does. It feels like the old one. Is there a clock in the upper left-hand corner? There's a clock in the upper right-hand corner. Upper right-hand corner. Great, yes. great, great. Thank you. There is a clock. Nice. Uh, so this was a timed demo. Oh. 15 minutes. Guess, guess what he spent 12 minutes doing. <laughs> Gambling. Yes. <laughs> Not 12 minutes. Yeah. 10 but at, at least. least. Like, yeah, we'll get. You went toward the objective with three <laughs> minutes left. <Yeah. laughs> I made note of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts out, you're in Bailu Village, uh, which is a location featured in Shenmue 2, and you're looking for a bookie. This is why Shenmue is the best. Man. You're straight up, you're looking for a bookie with a scar on his face. Oh, so you talk to NPCs about it? Yes. Oh, great, great, oh, great, awesome. great. First of all, how yeah. awesome is that objective? Yeah. yeah. Find I'm looking for a bookie with a scar. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 great. Yeah. So you're looking for a bookie, you and Shenhua split up. And right away, again, just <clears throat> movement and, and the village, the vibe is there. The vibe is spot on. It felt so good. It felt like, because I just played Shenmue 2 mm -hmm. uh, HD recently, again, just to, to catch up and refresh. It feels like that, but just better, you know, smoother. It doesn't, because like Shenmue 1 and 2 are pretty cumbersome. It's like kind of awkward to move around and turn and pick things up and look at things. It feels like that, but smoother, refined. So that was the first thing that I did was I just was walking everywhere, looking at everything. I get that. Taking yeah. a knee. The yeah. sun is shining through. Like again, it looks it looks really good to me. The, I, the yeah, the environments looked very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, and I mean, in the Shenmue style, still yeah. obviously, mm -hmm. like don't don't be picturing cyberpunk, but like right. yeah. it yeah. looked it's very cool looking. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, first thing was like I went. Uh, to the capsule machine first. Of course, <laughs> did yes. that. Yeah. Bought a capsule toy. It felt so good. What He's like, uh, I got a like a, a, a like a front loader, a front loader dump truck thing. It was awesome. Like, yeah. a, like a yellow tractor with a front hoe on it. Yeah. yeah. So does he still does he like still speak? Should yes. he still says like, hmm? Should yeah. I do it again? Yes. Really? He's like, huh? What's this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One couldn't hurt. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like picking things up in the environment, like I, I, again, it was timed, so I, I was kind of rushing through, but yeah. just so, such a big part is being grounded in this world and picking things up and him commenting on it. Like, you know, uh, we're in China now and he's from Japan. So when you pick things up, he'll comment on like Chinese history and like, oh, this is like a. Damiani got the B roll. No, nice. I got the B roll, Damiani? We don't see it. Oh, someone else got it. Yeah, see, it looks better than this, right? Even the inventory, like, thing on the bottom looks a little different now. So this is the mini game I did. Yeah, you did this. Uh, but wait, tell him I how you got into man. this. I thought of Bossman. Tell him how you got into this, because it was so charming. Yeah, so I go in uh, to the store. Behind the capsule machine. Behind the capsule machine, and the store, I'm telling you, it, everything about, it's so cozy. I cannot stress enough how cozy this village is, which is so nice because Shenmue 2, a lot of it is cold and Shenmue 1 is so cozy. Mm -hmm. We're getting those cozy vibes back. Small time village. Uh, and I, I go and I'm talking to this guy. <laughs> He's watching you the whole time. Yeah. Turning you on. <laughs> and I was like, you got any jobs? Like, I need to make some money. He's like, well, if you like chopping wood. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you're like, I suppose I could. And then he said... Well, if you're chopping, I'm paying. Yeah, if you're chopping, I'm paying. <laughs> no way. That's yes. what the old man said. Yes. If you're chopping, I'm paying. <laughs> yes. And just look at, like... Is this hard, by the way? It looks it hard. It was. It was. Yeah. I, he whiffed the first couple. Yeah. I, yeah. I whiffed a lot, but I think I found an exploit where if you mash... Because he kind of starts right above yeah. it. Oh. Yeah. So if yeah. you just keep mashing, I really think... You straight back. You're yeah. right. Yeah. I love that... Found the, the loophole immediately. Yeah. I love that the man even... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, even when you don't do a very good one, he's still encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, 
did that. Okay. Immediately took our earnings to the lucky hit. Board. So uh, in the trailer, I saw like a game, like a, maybe it was an arcade. Uh, the people who were like rehearsing their their martial arts yeah. out, out in the courtyard, you could see yeah. this this like arcade in the background. Yeah, is that where you went to go play Lucky? Hit? No, um, this was in this yeah this little yeah. village. Okay, the, uh, in the, the right here. Yeah, right here. <laughs> this I, is Lucky Hit. I swear. It looks better than this. It does. I swear this is an older build. I uh, really do believe This is the PlayStation it. version. Or it's just compressed or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it... Yeah. So anyway, yeah, you buy tokens now to... Uh, that's actually because they want to be able to sell the game in China. Because gambling. So instead mm -hmm. of uh, gambling for real money, you have to buy tokens and then use the tokens. Whereas in 1 and 2, you were just straight up gambling for cash. Which seems like just kind of a immaterial difference yeah but whatever yeah i mean they do that in japan legit with pachinko mm -hmm. right yeah. so yeah, yeah i get yeah. it so played lucky hit help lost of course lost big yeah <laughs> every time yeah every time uh it was nice having don there i was like all right which board should we do and we did that first one right there with the uh the roosters fighting the board looks great not phoned in yeah that There's that board yeah one yeah. spot in the middle it's brutal <laughs> brutal oh, this brutal person's board. doing the same board apparently yeah Never trust the middle, dude. No. The middle is a temptation. It was tough. Uh, but we lost. But then next, Bossman, another mini game. Turtle Racing. Turtle Racing. Okay. Yeah. I, I think really we, is I, it Twitch Turtle will be with this gentleman. This. Yeah. Okay. Incredible these, stuff, Damiani. These turtles are in this like <laughs> diorama thing. <laughs> this, look at this. They have obstacles? Crazy. Oh my goodness, they are all revving up. <laughs> all right, green. I'm going green. So much. Let's all bet on one. Okay, blue. Uh, I blue. think they, they picked green. Oh, they green, picked, yeah, so, so they're green. They're gonna win. Here we go, look. Well, what's your pick? Mash it blue. out. Oh, I see. So it's not like randomized. It's like I'm controlling that green turtle. But I am telling you yeah. that mashing the button on this mini game is is reminiscent of old Mario parties. <laughs> I was fatigued by the time this was over. This, My arm almost fell off. This he was mashing real it, right now. He was like mashing it as turtles. hard as, as he hard could. as I could for like 70 seconds. And and like at first nothing was happening. <laughs> yeah. We were like, how can that not be good enough mashing? Look at the speed boost I saw. Some yeah. sparks came out. Like he's behind. This he's is not tough. mashing. Huber, by the way, smoked. <laughs> oh, okay. It was no contest, but he was he was freaking yeah. out with the mashing. Yeah. So Huber did fine. He did great, but oh, okay. it was it was. Oh, absurd. you're gonna pay the price. Yeah. They're, 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 tur they're turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Your arm will pay the price for doing this. I cannot believe they came up with this, dude. <laughs> I know. And like the little like checkpoint arch. Yeah. What's the significance of that? <laughs> and there are oh, just a ton of mini games again. I only got 15 minutes and nice, obviously bro. get to see them all. They've confirmed forklifts. Also, this guy really funny because the guy you're looking for is a bookie with a scar on his face. And if you yeah. talk to this guy, yeah, he'll go, "Oh yeah, that's I can't remember his name, Quan, I think, mm -hmm. something like that." Yeah. He's he's like, "Oh yeah, I know that guy. He's great. He really helped me out with my my turtle racing business. <laughs> like he <laughs> loves that dude." Yeah. And you're like you're like trying to find him to like fight him. <laughs> yeah. It's just like what? Uh, the town to me seems too small to like n warrant a, a, a docks for a forklift. I don't think forklifts are here. So this the whole there, game is not in here. This is a village. The, yeah, the this is the village. It just a little village. I thought the yeah. whole game's in this village. No. So like we what? go to like a oh, yeah, we go to a town. The trailers yeah. have definitely focused on yeah. different. Yeah, uh, we go to a bigger. Okay. A big, I thought it was all one environment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Definitely not like Hong Kong big, but like right. we go to a bigger got location. It. Got it. Got it. Got and there it. seemed to be some kind of festival or something happening mm -hmm. here. Cool. Yeah. That's why and there are all these festivities. So there's like two more things. Basically, then after this, again, I had like uh, seven or so minutes after this, and I was just really trying to soak in the environment. I was just trying to look at didn't everything. Do this. Yeah, didn't dice. even get to play dice. That's too degenerate. Dude. There was like just a uh, dice <laughs> in a just bowl. Like, sweet coding. <laughs> just uh, like a woman <laughs> cooking in her house, and there's food everywhere. There's such an attention to detail, like the older games. I just wanted to look at everything and pick everything up. There were kids practicing martial arts and like running around playing like tag and stuff. Just vibes, Bossman. The yeah. vibes are there. The yeah. vibes are right. I yeah. You, so man. then I had like three minutes left, and I was like, "All right, I'll I'll go fight this guy, fight the bookie." Fight and the, bookie. Uh, the the demo presenter was like, "All right, like unless you train 
you're not going to be able to beat this guy. Great. Basically. Okay. So I was like, all right, I want to be the first. I want to go. Yeah. So the fighting was a little rough. So keeping our expectations in check here. The okay. fighting was definitely the weak part hmm. of Shenmue 3. Now in the others, and I, I would assume in this, there's going to be QTE fights, which are always cool and look yep. awesome. But then there's the free flow fights that are more like virtual fighter. And they're hard. They're well in the others they were like pretty easy. Dude, that 999 guy that Yeah, that's like the hardest one. You can die yeah. like once or twice there, but like Yeah, I don't want to call them easy in the originals, but like if you train a little bit, you're you'll get through it. Yeah. Well, don't you have to like memorize like combo strings too and things like that? Like aren't moves hard to pull off? Yeah, you like you definitely want to focus on a couple moves that can can help you carry carry it through, but yeah, the, what felt off about it? The animations, the the uh, connecting, the inputs. I didn't feel like I was in control really. Again, I didn't train, and I fought this really strong dude. Like I hit him a couple times, and like one of his health balls went away. Mm -hmm. He hit me like once, and half my health was gone. Mm -hmm. So you definitely have to train and level up, which is cool. Like I I like the idea of that loop and that progression of like. Feeling Rio getting stronger by training. Um, I think that part will be captured. But, yeah, I walked away and I was like, ooh, that was a little rough. Again, we got five months, so hopefully they can iron that out. But, wonder, again, even on the bottom, there was, like, a combo to do. It was, like, a, it was like a A-A-X-X. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if that was, like, A-A-X-X or A-A-X-X. -X. And yeah, I was, yeah. like, trying both. Again, it, it, it was a time demo, and I was thrown into this, so it was really hard to get a grasp of it. But in the actual game, you practiced that move ten times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you would have absolutely known the rhythm mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. Yeah, I that's wonder... Cool. Here's, that's, here's training. I was going to say, I wonder if training, not just you getting used to the combat speed, but also, I wonder if the game, if you're... If, if your character gets more fluid and quicker when you're trained. Sure. This I is wonder. how I train. Yeah. I'm very strong. <laughs> <laughs> You just stand in horse stance. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. actually hard. You're like leveling that stuff up, which is cool. And again, this is training, and then there's sparring. Sparring is like actual free flow fighting. Uh, we need to give credit to IGN Japan if we're just going to steal their footage. Thank yeah. you, IGN Japan, for capturing this. <laughs> so I mean, we would have it if their site worked. Right. Oh, do you think it's the same thing for everybody? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Deep Silver said there was a bunch of B-roll, so got you. I mean, I don't know if this is the same, but these mini games look so fun. Yeah. But yeah, that was it. And then the demo was over. I got I got beat, and he was like, "You need to train more." <laughs> yeah, you the know, Scarface gives you some wise was like, Tra "Go train more, and we'll try again another day." Hugh, yeah. then I think you're a fool if you think that guy stays a bad guy. Oh, he's probably yeah. It's probably I think it was like, yeah, we're gonna so love him by the end of the game. Oh, yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, I believe I played PC because I was using an Xbox it's controller. Xbox yeah, controller. and that's some more bad drama. You know, it's it's a bummer because everyone's. Worth acknowledging. Worth acknowledging, like, Epic Game Store exclusive now when people that backed this game picked the Steam version, which is now potentially coming out in a year after release. The rumors about them not getting refunds, it is being addressed. They are like, okay, you're you're going to get refunds maybe. It's it's a developing story. Wait, they would but keep it, it until the Steam release after the window of exclusivity? Yeah, so Instead Epic, of just giving it to them on Epic? Yeah. Weird. So Epic would get it for a year, and then it would come to Steam. It's, In it's that all case, developing that's BS. now. Yeah, it yeah, is that's absolute BS and a bummer. If I want to put my brand manager hat on, the game is made with Unreal Engine and Epic. Obviously them trying to give the game the best chance possible mm -hmm. well and, and if this... you used epic engine don't you get like an even bigger disc like oh yeah this does use unreal engine doesn't it yeah On but but again i don't want to excuse that because like if you back this game no, man. for steam like yeah. that is bs either get your money back right. or give me a code for it i i mean when it's the day thing is day, people I'm like whatever, but if it's yeah. like you have to wait another year, yeah. that's yeah. brutal. There's, no, they'll give you the Epic Game Store code. But the people that oh. don't want that and want to play on Steam, like yes. if they are firmly attached to Steam, like that is, what do you do there? Because that's BS. I think you they can put three hundred dollars down. I think you put Shenmue Three over your own pettiness at that point. 
I think at that point you're like Shenmue Three is yeah. worth it. I'm not gonna wait a I'll year. Play it I'm anywhere. not gonna be mad about this. Yeah, this sucks. Yep, I'm angry, but like this is a game that exists now. I'm yeah. willing to play this on the Epic Game Store. I'm willing which to I click hate. a different button. Right. right. True. Or or just save a desktop shortcut, and then you won't know which thing is launching it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm not trying to be cynical about we know. it. it, it yeah. is we know there issue. are plenty yeah. of issues. It is an issue. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Obviously. Obviously. We don't try to be cynical. <laughs> we doing such a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if it's like, if it's like, hey, you gotta go, you gotta come to the Boston market to pick up this game. Like, yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You're like, w the, the what? The Boston what now? Pick up Avengers at Popeye's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. It's in the french fries. You gotta go in the back. You gotta yeah. take it out of the french fries. Like, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll still go in and do it. I'll By the way, it. I love Popeyes. That's a new... Yeah. <laughs> that's a new that's thing. a treat. Did you hear uh, that game's gonna be in the french fries? Yeah. Oh, are we really gonna french fry that game? Uh, Bossman and Jones, uh, any questions or any more hype, <laughs> less hype, comments, concerns? I don't know nothing about no shit, <laughs> But did you like what uh, I said or what you saw? The mini I like games. what you said. I like the what you said. I, dude, I'm on the yes. edge of my seat for you describing this game. <laughs> do you I know literally I, just want to. I want to learn about everything <laughs> that there is to know about Shenmue Three. From do you know what I want to do? Hmm. Uh, what watching him play this demo made me want to do <laughs> is have Huber and Don and whoever sitting on the front couch streaming Shenmue Three while I'm. Watching and kind of dozing sometimes on the back couch. Dozing yeah. sometimes. <laughs> we will. Full the dream, through. dude. Set up we'll a hammock for you. Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> Ian, Ian, where, where are we at? We're Bring a blanket. Races. We went great. We, we're in a different town, Ian. <laughs> Lovely. Bring Lovely. a blanket and some tea, just dude. Like, I got maximum you. Maximum yeah. coziness. I've got you. Honestly, I get it. Like sometimes I miss having a roommate who's just playing video games. Uh -huh. Like yeah. sometimes there is like this comforting factor to oh, that. You're just like never goes to sleep and is playing Battlefield 1942 for just like. Hours. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> the theme. So that was our Shenmue Three hands-on impressions, looking just... so 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 good. Little concerned about the combat, but right. we got five <laughs> long months to iron that out. Everything else is shaping Wait. up, and I'm so so pumped. Are you saving the thing that happened for the episode? Yeah, watch my episode for a little surprise. Oh, Ooh. come on, man. Because yeah. something. Oh. Get those clicks, right? There Sell was, it. Yeah. yeah. Sell I'll, it. I'll Jones say, loves it. No, little tease. I love it too. A little tease. The right thing. There was a You're magical moment that oh. happened. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. Oh. Watch his episode <laughs> Thursday? Yep. If Don gets it, yeah, probably Thursday. Cut. We're all working constantly, so yeah. who knows if we can get these? Maybe things. Friday, Thursday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, yeah, yeah. Saturday. Big yeah. week. Big Stay off Saturday. That's yeah. my time. I do. <laughs> I do like. I do like imagining. Stay Malibu, Lebowski. Yeah. I like imagining the demo starting up and just fifteen. 1459 you're like <gasps> <laughs> I know I, it was yeah. I, was I tried to tune him. it out yeah. I was proud of him because he said I'm gonna ignore the the timer yeah and the first thing he did just a slow pan of the <laughs> yeah. environment nice, yeah. Yeah. I, I would have been like well done. Run and, the guy, and the guy was like he goes to his run and he's like I'm walking <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking <laughs> R2 is run. <laughs> I'm walking. <laughs> RP walked yeah. all the way to the village. It's great. Oh my it's god. Great. And then just played gambling until three minutes it's great. left. That's great. I'm proud of you. Still got to fight the bookie. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yep. Didn't train. Should have trained. Should have trained. The demo guy, he kind of like <laughs> gently said a few times, like, well, no one's ever beaten him without training. Yeah. The dojo's right behind you across this bridge. Yeah. Like, you could train. There's time. You know? I think, uh, but I think you're playing it wrong if you like you you hop into that demo. Oh, I must train. I must beat that guy by the end of yeah. the 15 minutes. So right. It's like, yeah, you're not playing it wrong. Play how you want to play. Play how you want to play. But also, too, that's like Shenmue encourages taking a knee. Yes. So you lose to this guy. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, now I got to train. I can go talk to people, make some money. Yes. Live in this village for a bit, then come back when I'm stronger and more capable. Yeah. So. Yeah. Also, the guy did say if you beat the bookie, the demo ends. That's oh, so, yeah. <laughs> That's so if really you do funny. better, yeah. you get less of the game. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so. All right. What's, What's next? Next, Cyberpunk. next is Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Oh. Get that blood. Get that blood. I'm clearing out. Get up on that blood. Man. Can we have uh, like blood. everyone talk about this? How does that work? Because how many people saw this today? I saw it. And I, I saw it. Too. You saw it. I got it. this jacket. I think, I think it's going to be this to this table. Man. Because blood uh, saw it too. And blood and, and Ben and Brad saw it too, ben right? Ben and Brad saw it. And Damiani. Can we like cram seven in here? Is that possible? I mean, we've got three stages. Well, Damiani can uh, can chime in on the mic. Excellent. Damiani can chime in on the mic, and room uh, the other room can chime in if we hit record and turn seven up. 
Record turn seven. Or select. Record. You have to hit record for it to? It has to be blinking red or it won't activate the track. Uh huh. Yes. Good also, uh, they don't require phantom power, so don't turn on phantom power for five to ten. Mm. Phantom NK? Phantom NK. Composer of such tunes as the Mysterious Monsters theme song, <sighs> the Easy Allies podcast theme song. There he is. Yeah, so how do we want to roll this? Everyone. I want everyone in here. Or Ben can take my seat. Here. I mean, we have three stages. Just putting that out there again. Ben, get up here, man. Sure. Get up here. You sure? <laughs> yeah. Get him on this desk. Why are we all not wearing the jackets? I, I didn't. I didn't. Mine's because in the car. So good it. It, it would just put the rest of us to shame. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I just thought we were all gonna wear the jackets. I'm Did you take those during heart. the demo? What's that? Did you take those notes during the demo? Man, it was hard. Yeah, it was really. I was it was gonna super say. dark in there, and so I was trying, and I, like I would use my uh, phone to write, uh, and then the phone uh, would go uh, off. Uh, yeah, so I didn't take as many notes as I would have liked, but I tried my best. The guy next to me, Max Brightness, was just chatting. On yeah, his phone. That, yeah, Man, yeah. During that, that, during yeah. that, and I was just, I like looked over at him a couple of times. I was just like, really? how many people would kill you right now to right, be in that scene? Right, <laughs> right. And I'm just like, what are you doing, dude? That's like he wasn't like I checked. I looked at his phone only to check if he was taking notes. If he was taking notes, fine. I got asked seven times about the bag, the cyberpunk bag I was carrying around. People were like, this, what this is, is that? This is, my, yeah. this is my thing. Like, this oh, is how sorry. I do. It. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, a, a, an electronic arts employee was like, dude, cyberpunk. Where'd you get that? <laughs> you should. Like, you should have said my new arm. Yeah. My new arm. Yeah. My cybernetic enhancements. We definitely need to wait for Hubert to get back in here. Once he He's not coming back up. in here. No, I think he was. Yeah, he was gonna. He, be he gave up his seat for. We don't have enough chairs. We have three stages. We can all be on camera and talk. No, I think Hubert can. Well, okay, if Hubert's talking from there, we need to be able to hear him then. No, because okay. no, no, uh, they're taking a break back there. So all right, Hubert's yeah. taking a break. Hubert's taking a break. He just oh. talked about Shamu. He didn't want to talk Huber about. Hubert just said everyone Kyle, on the stage. Kyle and Brad are taking a break, so Hubert, he, he, he needs to bring a fifth mic in there and a fifth chair, or. Well, he, we can't he, do that. He can come in here. He can just come in the director's room and uh, sure do that. Just chime in, Hubert. Just come in the studio room in here. Uh, Hubert in here. Hubert. He was wearing the headphones. He could hear Damiani. Thank Actually, if he picked up the wrong headphones, he thank you for watching our cyberpunk. We are easy allies. You won't get this anywhere else. <laughs> If he picked up the wrong headphones, he would have actually just been like listening oh, to my to muted laptop. That might be my like, like my number one favorite mode. It's just when he out of nowhere. Cyber. I really got to remember for like a montage for next year's E3. I always forget these great, great moments. I got to like write them down. Yeah. But like for next year's E3 montage, I really want to put. Take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just before Most we get into man. actual impressions, I want a, a, a very nice moment. One of the cyberpunk devs, uh, or staff at the event, I'm not sure, I don't remember exactly what their position was, but, uh, stopped me and said, Easy Allies, right? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, hey, I just want to say we really appreciate, uh, what you guys do in your reaction videos and everything. It really means a lot to us. We had a- And I was just like, what you do really means a lot to, to right. us. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I had I had two moments like that today where I was just I was trying to get to my Borderlands three appointment and some guy came up and he's like oh hey big fan I was like oh cool thanks man and I shook his hand I was like God I, you know trying to get to this Borderlands appointment and he handed me his card and it's like technical environmental artists at three four three industries <laughs> I was just like whoa yeah. I was like, oh okay cool <laughs> v cool I say hotake yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I think we're good to go we got Huber. Probably. You got me. Yeah, nice. Yes. Yeah, Hugo uh, was at my demo, so it was great to get a good well, little shoulder grab every now and then. Yeah, I was we, sitting by Jonesy. Can we start with Keanu? Can we talk about this? How Keanu, often he's in this thing? Yeah. Keanu is, the way you summed it up is he's Cortana. He's Cortana. Except in a very cyberpunk way. Mm -hmm. He's he's implanted in a biochip in your brain. He's basically infecting your mind. For the whole game and his first part of the game his attitude I think is it's like an arc because we kind of probably. see when he gets implanted in the trailer yeah they said two major story events have happened prior to the demo we <laughs> saw and both of them kind of basically ended up with you having this biochip implanted you're infected with johnny silverhand yep mm -hmm. yeah who is keanu reeves um and uh and you have a the secret to immortality 
which right. sounds like Ian, uploading consciousness. Ian, I thought of you because his name is Johnny Silverhand, and I thought of Johnny Mnemonic. <laughs> yeah, dude. His attitude throughout I did the too. whole Whoa. thing. I thought of Johnny Mnemonic <laughs> also. His attitude throughout the whole thing was perfect. Like every every time he would stuff. pop up, it was like he was kind of pissed off and disgruntled, and he'd like throw a cigarette on the ground. But he was also like had a slight hint of happy to be there, and it was just perfect Keanu Reeves. Like, no matter how serious he's being, there's the, that kind of, like, playfulness about it that I that I really like. And there was a, a glitchiness to him. They mm -hmm. had lots of clever, um, uh, like, erasing him from the environment. Mm -hmm. So you would see him, and he'd be like, okay, let's go. And then your character would, like, look down at something and look up, and he's gone. Right, or he'll, he would walk off yeah. screen, and then you would immediately turn and look, and he'd be gone, you know? And, he and fits, like he threw the cigarette into the a tub of ice that you had to get yes. into, but and like mm. there's no sound, which yeah. is cool to his throwing the cigarette. Yeah. And something that I'm so excited about with Pir Cyberpunk is is you're seeing Keanu glitch in and out, um, and this I guess applies at the end of the demo, so I'm sure we'll eventually get there. But this game is going to take you places in the sense that you have this world, and then you have digital worlds beyond that that you're exploring that seem. Like digital world, digi digital <laughs> world, um, and so it's like a world within a world within a world. Yeah, uh, just yeah. The way they're distorting reality in this game is super cool. And and they, like, just broad strokes. They they said several things which confirmed questions or answered questions that I had had previously. Because I had asked you guys, I was like, man, I hope you can play like hacking only, completely nonviolent, right? Blades only. Uh, only silent takedowns and like they showed us the tech tree thing they showed us like how points go in they even said you can play this entire game without harming or killing anyone yeah and um that's incredible can i can i just say something that that really blew me away and that i wish i could have properly conveyed to the cd project red guys and obviously they're they're coming from an incredible pedigree but time and again i see these companies get out there and they're like hey guys we're making an rpg and it's like no you're making an action game that, like, you can level up in. Right. Cool. That you can get Cyberpunk slightly better, yeah. 2077 is an RPG-ass RPG. <laughs> Everything... <laughs> ev they, they, you have so many minute decisions, and they sh they're, yeah. they're not just like, hey, you can make a lot of decisions, and it has consequence, pre-order now. They went through painstakingly, and they're like, Here's how this here's how this piece of clothing will change what you do in the game. Mm -hmm. Here's how if you build your character this way and they would flip they had different builds of the characters and they would show you here are all of the new things that you have access to based on the decisions that you make. But more than that, the world building. They mm -hmm. didn't just introduce a character and they're like, "Yeah, this is a guy you're going to go on a mission with." They're like, "Okay, here's the area, here's its history, here's the economic situation it's in." Yeah. Um everything had a background, everything had detail, it all made sense. It all like everything fit together logically in a believable way like they are making an rpg yeah they talked about the area called pacifica mm -hmm. i think yeah which is an like a district of night city basically pacific palisades yeah they say there's six districts yeah six districts and this place they were like there's a billboard even that was like welcome to beautiful pacifica and it's like this was supposed to be a cool like resort beach town, yep. but it all went to hell whenever like whatever war happened and all the corporations just kind of like pulled their funding out. And now uh, the Voodoo Boys have moved in, and they're the the hacker gang that that occupies this space. Pacifica, well, one of six districts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was very cool. One of the huge interesting about the Voodoo Boys is a lot of them uh, speak like uh, Haitian Creole. Creole, yeah, yeah. Uh, which you can translate. Yeah, yeah, so that's the thing. If you have this a specific, he upgrade, said that. Yeah. You can translate. And even the, what the subtitles are, are cool because it'll show it in the language, and then, and then uh, as it's typing is, itself yeah, out, yeah. the letters will start to you know become English. Also, mm -hmm. he rode a motorcycle, and oh, it was yeah. awesome. And oh, even, yeah. even the smallest things, like <laughs> the guy that you're, the contact that you're going to meet to do this mission uh, in Pacifica, they're like, oh, he's a butcher, and they don't just leave it there. They're like, he's a butcher, and in this world, real meat is a luxury. Synthetic meat is the most common, and you like see him making synthetic meat and just. Yeah. Ah, I believe they rich. said disgusting synthetic meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> most people eat disgusting synthetic meat. Uh, as long as we're just kind of talking about generalizations before we go step by step, but yeah. the, the demo did. I just want to say, like, one of the things that it just absolutely floored me that, like, this isn't a case of like 
you know, other comparing it to other cyberpunk games, comparing it to other first person RPGs that I've played, comparing it to other action games, just video games, period. I have never, ever, ever seen this many human beings in an environment in a video game in my life. I yeah. mean, this is just insane. Like, you would walk by a room, then nothing was happening. We're not going in there. There's no objective. There's like 50 people in there. Like, we went into like a nightclub and you're just shoulder to shoulder. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, like pushing past mm -hmm. people. Um, I love when, when you finally found that guy. You walk into a room and you ask somebody and the guy's just like working on a machine. It's like, do you know where this guy is? And the guy just looked and points and then like goes back to what he's doing. And you're like, oh, cool, thanks. And just like, it just, and even when you find that guy, he's, you know, uh, you know, working on meat. And then it's like, oh, here, let me go help you. Just everything was so fluid and it really felt everywhere that you went. It's like, ah, this is not just, ah, people, people, people. It's like, no, this is, um. Kind of like Assassin's Creed. I think that was like one of the, the franchises that really tried to, to sell that and push that. Like, look how many people are just living in this world. I really felt like I am in an environment. There's one part where he was like, he's like, he's like, okay, this looks like a hard, a, a nasty part of town. Yeah. And like it did. Like it, yeah. it wasn't just because like ah, oh, there's graffiti or like oh, I hear gunshots. Right. It's just like this feels different. Like it, the the way people are animated, the way which is a good feat because the whole damn city seems like a rough. Oh, part of, of town. Yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, well, I'm waiting to see because there were three. Uh, very interested. There were three kind of backgrounds to your character that yes. you could choose. The first one was you know, Nomad. Nomad. I really Nomad. Want to talk about that. What? I really want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, and then it was Street Kid, and then it was Corporate. Corporate baby. <laughs> and yeah. but the corporate, the shot for Corporate was like this woman in a nice suit with like a really fancy car. I want to see that part of town. Too. Yeah, because like oh, yeah. all the stuff well, we've seen is like super hardcore. The, the more corporate or less. backstory is that you have forsaken. Right, right. Yeah. So, but it's like, not does like... that part of town still exist? Is what I'm yes. wondering. You can kind of get a sense from the trailer. Let, you can see actually, some yeah, the big three. fancy That's cars. The big and fancy gala. There's yeah. like business meetings happening and stuff. Like Ben was talking about just the RPG ness mm -hmm. and the world building, and I love nothing more than like, depending on what you pick, changes how you interact with people in this world. So like if you be if you're a street kid, there are additional dialogue options that only the street kid can say. And that is like some of my favorite stuff in a video game where yeah. like that is meaningful and then depending on what skills you pick, that also changes it. So the the possibilities are are so many. And and, uh, and if you're playing as a man or a woman, they said it changes sure. a bunch of stuff. Yeah. There there was a there was a light, the, a character you're going on this mission for this guy, and then you you run into another character that is like, hey, like they're just setting you up, and you get a bunch of dialogue options. And to, oh, to speak yeah. to Huber's point about having the street kid background, all like it's such a great scenario because the information that you're being fed, you're in the heat of the moment, and it's both equally believable and not believable. Right, like the. Whichever way you go, it actually makes perfect sense why you would go that way. And, like, the your background as a street kid really adds a lot of context and flavor here because all of these options are valid and logical, but you're like, well, I would trust somebody from the streets, the people that I'm working for, more than a suit like you. And, and it felt like a really meaningful choice that... that played into how attached you were to your own history which and I that was really that cool. i thought was that was the moment where that's really sung for me because you know we've all played rpgs where you picked the vagabond background or whatever and that just unlocks some some additional uh lines of dialogue and like you pick that line of dialogue and then the other person just has like one extra line of response text right. and then goes on as if it was all the same this was written, and the, the way the scenario was set up, it really did influence, like, I mean, we weren't playing it, but, like, I could see how it would influence your play style because yeah. you would think that. You would, you would see that option lit up and say, I would react that way, yes. Okay. And I, I, I feel like they construct the dialogue options in a lot of games where it's like, okay, well, here's, like, the one or two that makes sense, and then here's, like, the super goofy ones where they, right. they feel really artificial, but it was every... Yeah, every decision that you were making here, it's like, man, I could really see that line of thought. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just very believable, which I liked. What'd you say, Huber? I was just saying, like, I think of uh, just, like, the original Deus Ex, uh, the opening mission, if you kill people, you go back and your guy is, like, comments on it and gives you less money. And it's just, like, those moments where gameplay and story are coming together, like, the, everything in Cyberpunk is just next level. Yeah, um, one of the things, too, they're talking about your street cred kind of 
it opens up uh, new uh, options in the shops as well. Yeah. Cool. We saw that level up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and well, and just kind of to what Huber was saying and what you're saying is like every scenario seemed like more than any game I think I've seen in action. You could really palpably feel the options available to you. Mm -hmm. Like, and and the demo went out of its way in the later combat part to to show the different scenarios and the different play styles. Like, they even had, like, a you couldn't do this in the game, but, like, the dev, they had, like, a dev tool where they could switch character builds from a Netrunner. Also, still blows my mind that they all, they're just all straight up just using terms like Netrunner and Ice we, and stuff. From we need to of, have a lengthy conversation about Nanowire. At some oh, point. baby <laughs> God. Yeah, that's a whole subsection oh, of this. Yeah. But, like, and then, you know, you could be a Netrunner or a straight up fighter, but... Even outside of that combat scenario where they were switching back and forth to show that, like, even just talking to people or walking into places, like, going in to see the butcher, like, you probably could have walked in there and, like, killed those guys and, like, done whatever you wanted, like, gone about this this whole other way. When when you're on a mission going into this defunct mall, uh, they're like, the two guys are like, oh, yeah, four guys, three guys went out of here a second ago. They're probably at the market or whatever getting food. Uh, I don't know, up to you if you want to go follow them or whatever. And, you know, you could go and investigate them or, like, take out their... They're, like, the heavies. So you could, like, stealth up on them, kill them in the market, go back to the place, or just go in the front door or go in the back. It's just... I don't know. It actually seems real. It, it didn't seem like... Because, you know, sometimes, like, Deus Ex or whatever, it's like, you either go in the vent or you shoot everyone. Mm -hmm. You but, know? Yeah, the, the other thing that I want to say with this this freedom and options, I think what makes it more meaningful... Uh, to me, at least, is uh, sometimes when you when you have games with a lot of freedom, it's like, okay, we're going to give you a bunch of options, and yeah, you can tune your character to be better at those things, but you can kind of do everything. It's just like, mm -hmm. in Cyberpunk, I didn't get that sense. <laughs> I feel like your choices are more consequential to that, and the way that they presented the demo it was like, I am only doing this because I made these choices. This would not be available to me. I could not do this. I couldn't do this path if I didn't build my character this specific way. And so I really like those hard limitations where it's like, there's a ton of cool shit you can do, so make sure you pick the right thing. And, like, uh, the, the Netrunner character version, which is, like, the hacker, yeah. um, found out that there was a, a, a guy counter-running against you way earlier than the other character would have and like just really cool little story stuff like that like oh right you wouldn't because, have even know that other hacker the was the reason there. and again going back to things tying into gameplay the reason is you're hacking into a panel right to disable a camera and then that's when uh because what happens is the the merc that hires you uh he's got he's put a feed into your head and so he's watching what you're doing, and then he's like, hey, dude, there's somebody else, right. like, linking in and trying to, like, get in and watch what you're doing. Yeah. And so that's how you find out about the agent. Right. Whereas the reason you don't find out about that with the strength build uh, is because you don't worry about that camera. You just rip the doors wide open <laughs> with my your arms. Honestly, that was my favorite part of the whole thing. That was crazy. It was just set up so well, switching between, because there was just, there was so much nuance, and you could really, like, target and see all of the interesting items that you could hack and then he's like all right i'll switch over to her and then he just yeah <laughs> like walks yeah. through but the door like, like the so animation cool. of the I'm arms do, but like yeah you can see the individual parts like, like the arm like split open it because it's when it was working uh, harder uh, and like the muscles it was artificial arms yeah and, and it was cool that the like runner case, character <laughs> the super squishy like runner character they were playing as the male character and then the female mm -hmm. character had like these bionic arms that were just ripping doors open. Guys, this guy this game comes out in like ten months and during the demo I was already thinking about multiple playthroughs. <laughs> oh yeah. Blades and hacking. That's I'm do I wanna never sure. fire a gun. Um, the, old, the, yeah. uh, the other thing that was interesting about what they had in that combat scenario right after that is um, the the Netrunner hacked the turret, and the turret just acted like an auto turret, mm -hmm. whereas the strength build <laughs> just Rip rips it off, off of the stand and just, just start shooting at people like it's a minigun. Did they gun. hack it first or rip it out first? No, they just ripped it out and used yeah. it, like a regular yeah. gun. I mean, like, in the, in your demo, which one happened first? Oh, they ripped it out first. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Because that, at first I was like, oh, wow, they did it in opposite order for you. But no. <laughs> the hacker had people pull out pins of grenades that were on them, or just... 
you know, shoot, like, shoot them themselves. You like, can yeah. hack their oh. arm to make them do crazy oh. things. Yeah, so that's one of the things that's in this shop is like all these, they call them demons, uh, programs that basically you can install into somebody else with the wire. Mm -hmm. So like you use the oh, wire yeah. kind of like yeah. a whip in a way, but then you can also like actually plug into somebody. We need to talk. Let now is the time. Yeah, go for it. Let's nanowire. talk about that wire. Yeah, the nano wire. Um, because it w it's one of those things that you see in a gameplay demo like this, where it's like, oh, cool, it does that thing, and like that man, that really opens up the possibilities. Where it's like you have ranged hacking, where you're going to be able to sling this wire into somebody, and they're not going to be able to see it, and you're going to be able to completely hack into them from range, uh, just disable them completely. But then he's like, oh yeah, you can also just use it as like heated whips and then he goes into this hallway <laughs> and he just starts slicing people up and the the audience that we had was like pretty quiet the whole time this is a 50 minute demo yeah. and when you get to the nano wire <laughs> section where he's just slicing everybody up and you could hear the audience be like oh <laughs> yeah oh, man, he really cut that ours. guy up yeah, he, he just walked down a hallway and, and yeah. then just went like <laughs> and like dude's like I think she she cut two people's heads off and an arm came off. And even the guy running the demo was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were surprised at their own gore, yeah. Yeah, so it's like this superheated nanofilament wire that not only hacks things, but yeah, you whip out and it could just slice through like... It was kind of weird because it was like it would slice body parts off of people that otherwise took a few bullets to yeah. kill. So it, seemed, like, it seemed a little OP. I'm kind of curious. Kind of a, the, overpowered. Yeah. yeah, probably mostly a, a close quarters thing. You're not gonna yeah. walk into a oh, giant yeah. room where like dudes on second floor shooting at you, and you're mm -hmm. just like slashing well, at people. And also, how much do you have to invest to get there? Because they're right. like, hey, this is like halfway through the game. We already have some advanced yeah. skills. Right. Yeah. So. And yeah, on the skill tree, it had, you know, there's cool and tech and, you know, the other ones. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, body intelligence, reflexes, technical, and cool. Thank you. And like under, it was interesting because in the tech tree, it's sort of like a branching kind of spidery shape circle. Mm -hmm. And under cool, it had things like assassinations and sniper rifles. It had three. And then tech in the menu, it just said tech and then engineering. And it had like one thing. Um, and it's interesting. And then like blades was under something else and hacking was its own thing and stuff. But yeah, it's, it's interesting that not all of them were equally weighted. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can put tech points in, and it's going to get you that one skill. Yeah. I'm like, that skill must be awesome. Yeah. And one thing I liked about the tree, too, that um, it was fun. I actually saw two different skill trees today, and both developers were like, eh. They are like, this, this is not final. They're like, what is this? Right. This is for E3. We're still figuring this out. Uh -huh. But I liked that it was like a fan. So it wasn't yeah. like, you got to do all of this weird nonsense, and then you finally get to this point. It was just like a center point, and then everything fanned out. So it's like you just pick a direction and go, 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 go. So if you mm -hmm. like, like you were saying with blades, it's just like, just blades. Just keep going, blades. And it's important to say, like, we've been mentioning that they were switching between play styles, um, and they, they, were, they stressed this too. Uh, the play styles they were switching between we're just for the the dev build of this demo. There aren't character classes in this game. There yeah. aren't anything like that. You just put points in what you think would be cool and go for it. And I well, imagine I if you, it, I think it, oh, I there think are definitely play styles. They said they said specifically there aren't like classes. Yeah, they said we right. don't have classes. We're going for a fluid class system. Right. Yeah. I so think, like, I imagine I think if there's you put, something where like it still will name your class based on what you put points into but oh, i think okay. it's i think it's like that a will change and evolve as you put yeah. fluid points. Yeah, yeah yeah and i imagine if you put like the first level of points into everything maybe that'll work i don't know but like you might not excel in any area jack of all trades you know who knows because i definitely noticed that when they were in between them like they had the names of like the, the strong whatever and the net runner strong solo and net strong runner, solo yeah. yeah um yeah, the other thing the Netrunner could do was uh, hack the boss. Yeah. Like, scan yeah. it and create a weak point. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I lo the boss fight was cool in so many different ways. Uh, just the actual mechanics of the boss itself, uh, where it had this ju th this, bo this boss was this, like, giant person and picked up a giant hammer, but the only reason they could wield the giant hammer is because they had this juice going in into them. Yeah. And you could see the juice on the back of them, and so you could play strategically where you're like, okay, I'm gonna deal with that source of their power, and then if you destroyed it, they could no longer wield the hammer. It was right. just an they dropped option that was it. completely yeah. taken away from them. Like Bane from that one uh, Batman mm. yeah. uh, and Robin? And you had like these, these glass 
sheets, these glass panels that yeah. were all throughout the arena. Like TV, and as yeah. you were fighting this this giant boss that was wielding this ridiculous hammer, you'd be like shooting and you'd like hit these glass panels and they would just shatter. And it was just such a cool and pop bam, out of the ground. Dude, right? yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. just yeah. such a. And cool then scene. you, and then at the same time, at some point in the fight, somebody started you, hacking you, yes, right? And your HUD is kind of getting yeah. all screwy. And it's I, I got a sense that like it affected your movement. Mm. So mm -hmm. if you were like you know it didn't seem like too annoying, but it's it seemed like there was some erratic Speaking movement. Speaking of movement, going on. earlier, real quick, I thought of Ben when uh, all the glass was shattering everywhere. It reminded me of Crisis Zone. <laughs> nice. Uh, Speaking Crisis of Zone E3 shout out. Shout out. <laughs> shout out. Speaking of movement, there are some enemies using a cool ability that I assume you'll be able to use too. The zigzag. The zigzag yeah. run dash thing. Mm. There were these enemies that were strong looking enemies and they would go like, <laughs> like really fast. And I didn't under I couldn't understand what he too was saying. Crumbled to the nano wire. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the <laughs> nano wire would just slice right through those chumps. But the guy, it started with an S, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. It had a name, but it was like a, a certain augment that just gives you super speed mm. in little bursts. And the enemies were using it, and yeah. our characters didn't seem to have it. But like I imagine that's a thing you can install. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Uh, I suppose we should go more linearly. Through I don't the... think we need to go super linear through everything. Give us a play like, by play. A just lot a of, quick a lot play. Of chat kind of wants a yeah, wants like a play just to play. explain what's happening. So you start out, and you're trying to find yeah, you're Brigitte. Yeah, you're trying to find Brigitte, who is the head of uh, the Voodoo Boys, mm -hmm. and then you find this. This somehow you run into this guy in the chapel, which is the crowded place that yeah. Jones was talking to. Oh yeah, that was so. Like you watch this guy make a speech, and you're just you know pu push. And it was neat too because it wasn't just like I'm maneuvering around these. Like you would, you could physically see like like each person you would like you know uh, bump into, and then this guy grabs you out of the crowd and says, "Wait, wait, wait, no, not here. You need to go someplace else." Yeah, the guy at the yeah, and then he tells you about the guy. And if you have Street Kid, you can be like, "How did you recognize me?" Yeah, but that character didn't have Street Kid, so we couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like you're, you're, because you're in a totally different part of town and all that. Yeah. And so, um, God, I imagine parts where, like, if you do certain things and you're a specific backstory, additional dialogue options open up. Like, if you, you know, have have like recon from hacking something and you're corporate, like that'll open up things. Oh my God, dialogue is gonna yeah. kind of constantly be tormenting in that game. Oh, where yeah. I, I'm gonna have so many moments where I'm like. Oh man, that option seems really cool. Wish I picked that background. Yeah. Or oh man, I wish I had that stat raised high enough to, well, to get that option. And like different parts of town, I'm sure different yeah. backgrounds are going to be way more yeah, effective because sure. like they said, like this is a part of town where like not a lot of people go. Everyone here is super disenfranchised, and like that's kind of what the street kid background was talking about too. Mm -hmm. Like you grew up in a place like Pacifica, and so like a lot of the dialogue options in this demo had street kid but then when you talk to the like weird corporate police suit guy corporate was an mm -hmm. option and so like yeah it, and i wonder how much of the game you can like hang in those areas or like it, yeah it's it's gonna be yeah wild um so yeah so you go to the butcher shop which we talked a little bit about uh and you meet uh placid mm -hmm. who is the, the contact that that you need to meet what i think is really cool about this sequence though is i feel like most RPGs like this, you would walk up to him and you would have this entire conversation just while he's doing whatever idle animation he's right. doing at the right. butcher shop. Just yeah. staring right. at you, like and dumping And it's like, on no, like this is very natural. Like he mm -hmm. stops what he's doing. You start walking and talking. Puts his tools down. So you go through this whole area until you like get up into his back office and you sit down. And then like, okay, now we're going to start discussing this deal. Now I'm going to start telling you what I want you to even do. Even before, well, even before the back office, maybe this is what you were going to say. Yeah. Even before the back office, he goes to this like black market place, and oh, basically, yeah. basically just like says like, hang on a sec, and like has a conversation with some other NPC for a couple of seconds, yeah. like because it's something he had to do, <laughs> and you just sit there. In the demo, uh, the the player or the the player. Went to a sh shop stall next door, bought the samurai jacket yeah. and uh, another brain mod. And then by the time they were done with that, Placide was like done with but his business. Right when he leaves the butcher shop, you go out into a public square and one guy just shoots an assault rifle into the oh, air. Oh, yeah. One I guy's forgot. got a newsie and he's just like, ah, like shooting <laughs> in the air. 
no one cares. No one cares. No one cares. Like, thought, everyone in the environment's like, yeah, what are you going to do, you know? I this happens like, all Another the time. day, more bullets in the he air. He yelled something, like some kind of, like, <laughs> slogan or something. Mm-hmm. I thought for, for, I was like, did an NPC have a glitch, and they're just, like, erratically firing their gun, and they're not supposed to be, and I was like, no, this is just this world. This is this district, yeah. man. There's also, I thought it was cool, there was a, the guy, like, out on a couch, like, noodling at a guitar. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it said like Just resident. Strumming along. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder too. Like, like I think of the uh, the I think it's a motel in the trailer where there's just a guy on the ground and people are just like beating the crap out of him. And like, I wonder if you'll encounter these things of just like, ah, uh, ooh. Uh, if I you, can't, in, yeah. yeah. Sorry, man. <laughs> like, or I w- want to get involved. I actually want to stop. Sorry. Well, oh, and maybe. there was a uh, there's a moment in this when you're yeah. when you're walking to his office and like. I think they like looked intentionally, but like you, you could have easily not looked at this and missed it. But like, there's just an attack helicopter just like shooting the hell out of the side of a high rise in, in the, the distance. distance. Way in the distance. And like, it's just like another day in this city. Yeah. And like, I was thinking, like for a second, I was like, oh, that's kind of dumb. It's just shooting forever and ever and ever, and it's never gonna stop. Like you'd be done by now. And like right when I thought that, the the floor like exploded, and then the helicopter flew away. <laughs> and I was like. Oh, all right. <laughs> like, did okay. We, did we say, also say no loads? No loads. Oh, no, Unless yeah. you Zero. fast travel, doesn't load. Um, Zero I'm, loads. I really want to focus on the conversation with Placide in his office because it was it was my favorite moment in the entire yeah. fifty minute demo. Um, because uh, blood, you you brought up such a great point where, regardless of the personality of the character, you do get into sequences like that where it's like, okay, I'm going to explain everything to you and then you're going to do the mission. Placide is not a man of words. Right. <laughs> he does not trust you. Why would he? Um, and he just keeps things very, like he just answers in very short sentences. Um, doesn't trust you. You don't trust him. And you get to this moment where you think like, okay, we're going to sit. He's like, sit down. We're going to have this nice long conversation about this job that you want me to do. Not how it goes. <laughs> he grabs your arm and you're like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't do that, man. Because everybody has their own personal jack that like, if you get access to it, you can completely control the person. And so you have to make this decision and you get the option. It's not just some sequence that you're watching. You get the option of, well, do I let Placide do this or not? And at that point, once again, like you could see it going both ways where you're like, this isn't a good idea. I don't want to get into this. It seems shady or like, no, I really want to do this And then it was so fast. The guy grabs your arm. He's going to stick you with a needle. Yep. You have like... One and a half seconds to well, choose. I can imagine just just watch like playing the game and that happening and just like not being able to react quick enough. You actually have a long stakes. time to choose because like our in our yeah, game. Yeah, I, I, I thought they like kind of. Oh, they, I, think, they, I think I think the, the player the character itself automatically goes like whoa hey yeah yeah uh, and then a dialogue comes up. Got where it, it but, lets you choose. It. Yeah, but what's cool is even though you have a long time to make the decision and reflect on it, Placide is like. Come on, man, we gotta do yeah. it. Like, he's egging you on I, I like as that you're waiting, as when he's the, waiting for you. The announcer would stop, and he'd be like, oh, I'm gonna try to explain something, and then the character would be like, are we gonna do this or what? And the guy's like, hold on. <laughs> like, well, at one point, after the second type of seed was like, what? You know? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the announcer person was like, yeah, if we wait any longer, he's gonna get mad. Or, like, it, it seemed like, I don't know, maybe if you idle for too long, the characters would get irritated with you or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or oh. if you press things too much, they'll get mad and, like, you'll just lose the opportunity. Yeah, and so so once you decide to, to let him jack in, then yeah. it's, it's this, like, really, like, invasive feeling thing where he's, like, looking through all the stuff that you've had and planning in your mm-hmm. body, and he's like, well, okay, what's this thing? Right. What's that? And and, and I, th- I think you pretty much have the option to like to lie or to to, to tell them what you want to tell them yeah. about. Like what, about what this stuff. what's it to you? Can, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, they end up saying he ends up saying, um, "Oh, I, I don't know. It's it's unmarked and yeah. it, it I got shot in the head, so it doesn't work anyway." Which we know is a yeah. lie. Right. Yeah. Right. It's totally that's like, the that's chip the with big deal Johnny chip. Silverhand yeah. in it. Yeah. That's like the chip. I think I think you free seconds. It doesn't have a name. On it. Right. He's he like, says, this he's like, yeah. this is unmarked. What is this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other thing I thought was pretty cool during that uh, is somebody, again, then this goes into the translator because, you know, he's talking to you in English, but other people are talking to him in Creole. Yeah. And so, like, a, one of his guys just, like, comes out of the back door and, like, starts talking to him about that, uh, about some other thing going on. 
and they say <laughs> like you have the option you can press and like ask him what that's about or you can decide like you know or not to because some characters are going to be like that's none of your business yeah you know it's something like, i it, liked about that is the the beginning of the dialogue options it said bracket placide bracket and then bracket room bracket and then the room one was like what was he talking about you know and the announcer in our case didn't choose that and said if we maybe if we press he'll get mad at us but i like that distinction of like keep talking to this character or address the thing that's happening in the room i like that they're differentiating clearly those options you yeah. know so you don't accidentally pick like what's that guy doing you know and yeah. get yourself shot or something yeah yeah and then um so yeah so basically we're basically doing this whole job just so he'll introduce us to brigitte um again the leader of the voodoo boys yeah uh and then that's when we get on the motorcycle yeah baby and Change we have the radio, radio stations, stations. Radio stations. <laughs> <laughs> i think you picked like the fourth one yeah uh, she did yeah and uh which is, just, again, just, like, another great opportunity for them to talk about this region, and you see some of those Great, those um, uh, just seemed really natural to control and look around. Yeah. Like, there were a lot of, like, like uh, she would ride and kind of look around the environment at the same time. I liked uh, how they made it a point to emphasize, like, hey, you can own your vehicles. These mm. are yours. Oh, yeah, I nice. missed that. And that kind of, I'm, I'm, it's a... I'm a little curious about that because in the last time we saw, we drove the car around and it was just there. Like, yeah. like it was just kind of happened to be like on the path that we were taking. And then he pops out of this office where like we didn't know where this was. We had to follow um, this character to find, you know, the office and get this information. And then poof, our bike's there. Jones, so, like, how hyped will you be if you have safe houses? Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, oh, well, yeah. Well, I, I want to know what your own apartment looks like. I mean, we've we, seen it we in, saw, the, in yeah, the other that, demo. That was yeah. for the other demo. demo opened. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that that was one of the only things, I think, in this demo that was just, like, placed in front of you. Like, maybe that's not there or you have to, like, call someone to bring it to you. Or, or... that's how you got there. Maybe, maybe you drove up on that motorcycle yeah. and parked it. I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, that was like one of the only red flags. I was like, how'd that bike get there? But, mm. um, and it was just neat because it's like, if I'm playing GTA five, like I'm just, I'm running over people. I'm driving around. Who right. cares? And like, it didn't seem weird that they, she seemed to be like, you know, uh, obeying traffic laws obeying or like, people. would she, she stop at a stop at a, yeah. sign and watch a car go by and then, and then drive like, um, and the guy in the other car, car was like, it's... like gave, gave him the eye. The the car that drove by like looked at oh, really? their character. Uh, I, think, I think so. Maybe I think I'm not imagining that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Um, but yeah, we take the bike to this mall. Yeah, so you yeah you get to the mall, and that's when we talk to the the scouts, the goons. Oh, and I think we should kind of clarify like the. So like the whole mission scenario is that there's this other gang called the animals, animals yeah. who aren't from this part of town who have kind of like taken up this abandoned mall and and are just like. You know, it's, it's it's basically a turf war. You know, like part like of both, you is like wanting to figure out like what the heck they're doing there, but it's like yeah, they don't belong both, there. Like, both out. V and Placide, both in their own ways, pointed out like, I think V might have asked, but it's like, is that typical of the animals? And he was like, no. Well, no. That that's that. There was another moment that I really liked where you're even though you've created this character, you're not just this like mindless vessel you're right. using your own history and you're like wait a minute like you're giving me this mission to take care of these animals but it, it really doesn't make any sense for the animals to be here and here's why right like i love that i love that you're actually a person that that is building on their own knowledge and you're not just like some quest receptacle your, your really character cool. really feels like a part of this world yes and like your character pushes back yeah, yeah. yeah. your character is like no, that why won't you tell me what I'm do what what I'm really doing here? The right. animals wouldn't just take over yeah. a mall there, for there no reason. There has to be somebody who yeah. sent them here. Right. How is that connected? Right. Yeah. Uh, combat wise, too, I also liked just during the whole progress of going through this mall. You know, getting to the end of the demo, uh, walked by a lot of people. There, there's uh, the uh, the you know she made the, the decision to you know just stealth past people, and it wasn't like classic patterns of like oh this person walks to here, waits a little bit, and then walks, and then now it's my turn to go. Um, just kind of like, uh, just very being very observant of like, okay, I can, you know, since there's people on the second floor, that guy's going up a staircase. And oh, in the um, combat scenario, yeah, because uh, yeah. it just seemed like once we were like really deep in the mall, it was like, man, there's people all over the place. Yeah. Like this is kind of tricky. And not not the only game to do this, but something they did bring up, which I always think is cool, is you may not want to go and stealth kill or hack everything right away because if you be patient, you can eavesdrop on people yeah. and get more information. Yeah, about. which is interesting. They had like a basically an ability to like zoom in and eavesdrop on on characters from a distance and, and the we, characters are doing stuff like one guy had like a bunch of pizzas yeah 
Like was, the animals were hungry because it was it was it was like seven p.m. <laughs> and like they oh, needed the to eat time dinner. of day changed. Oh yeah, it's a day night cycle. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here, Active day night cycle. Here's a Huber moment. Stashing a body in a garbage chute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was I was here for it. It was excellent. Yeah, the the announcer that we had was like, "You'll be pleased to know that garbage shoots, just like today, are still good for hiding garbage and bodies." <laughs> it was great too, because right at that moment, they're like, "You can be lethal or non-lethal, but we're gonna kill this guy." Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, I think he brought that up at one point when the uh, the person playing just. Yeah. Like put a bullet in somebody's head that was not. When they down. defeated like, the boss, oh, well, okay. it was like, and you can always choose to spare someone, and then she yeah, shot yeah. her in the side, and it's like, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> oh. I was like, because he just kept shooting, like even after he killed the person and didn't use the non-lethal route, he just like kept breaking the glass panels, and he was like, you need to go therapy. Like, you know, <laughs> oh, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, and, they were like and, ribbing each other. It was funny. And uh, we overheard the two people that we met out front. Uh, we overheard them. Notice those people after the animals notice the oh the, yeah the, the yeah. two characters they were like hey there's two guys out front let's go get them and that like um uh you know those are two people we didn't have to deal with uh what was really interesting in this section too is uh they they hack uh, a number of different objects mm -hmm. so if you remember from the first trailer how there was like kind of like this boxing training robot mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, yeah so there's this part where they they hack the robot so it like punches back really hard and just like just floors the guy, probably breaks his skull or something, yeah. and like everyone just starts rushes to him to see like, is he breathing? Like, yeah. what's going on? And then, but then once that it was, it was an amazing moment in video game because like it felt really real. Like the robot punches this guy, blood comes out, he falls down. Everyone's like, whoa, shit! And they run up to him, and like, yeah, there's that moment of like, like, oh man, is he dead? Is he breathing? And then like the guy, like, I don't know, they he moaned or something, and they know he's okay. And then somebody else jokes like, "Man, he really got you, huh?" Or like whatever. It's like he really railed you. This yeah. is my favorite note. They just that started I took. joking about it. This is my favorite note that I took. It was just hackbot, comma smash head. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then that was followed up. In the darkness. Up. Yeah. Hackbot. That was so. That was followed up by. Uh, there was a guy that was like lifting weights. Oh, yeah. oh no! That and they out. hacked the the thing because even that has like some kind of computer. Yeah. Pretty much everything is connected. Yeah. yeah. And so like. It, you just put extra weight on it, and it's like, and they're like, that's what happens when you don't have a spotter. <laughs> well, like, and then oh, I, I think he said there too. He was like, I think he'll be okay. Oh then, no, no, yeah, he's dead. he was like, he was like trying to lift it. He's like, he's strong, he'll be okay. And then it was like, <laughs> and like snapped his neck, and he's like, oh, he's dead. Yeah, and <laughs> then like, oh, brutal. So you can even kill people with hacking. Yeah, and then there's the the soda machine. Wait, did an NPC say that Ian or the demo person? The guy demoing. The the or announcer the, the, said the he's announcer, strong, yeah. he'll be all right. Because that actually was the only moment of the whole demo where I was like, felt the video game-ness because mm -hmm. that thing like crushed him and he was like, like screaming. And then there was a dude like 10, 15 feet away that just didn't acknowledge. And maybe oh. it's just- Oh, not in our demo. Oh, there was no one, there was no one near I that mean, guy. Yeah, yeah like... there was a guy like just right up the escalator, like oh. right there in view and, and he just didn't Touché. respond. Oh. And I was, I was like, maybe it's just these type of people, the animals or whatever. Or... Yeah. Just demo stuff. Well, and when you're working out and stuff, you know, maybe yell and grunt and stuff too. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but then the last one they, that they did in that sequence, there was a soda machine. And so oh. it's like they started had, just having sodas like popping out of that so that the guys looked oh, at the Oh, ours was different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think we had that. Uh, it, no, it happened. It was a, it was a, yeah, it was an advertisement or a soda machine and they just made it make a bunch of noise. Nothing came out, but they just made it like do its little jingle. Oh, okay. There's and then definitely there were both, a pile of soda cans. Both people like it's looked cool. at it. But then yeah, the player went up with the filament wire or whatever, the nano nanowire. Nano nanowire. Nano yeah. And then got spotted. The, yeah. the one guy turned around and then this was the moment where the the, the woman playing the demo uh, just went whoosh, and it just like <laughs> sliced the first guy like this and the second guy's head off at the same time. And I think that they don't usually kill them both in one go like that because the <laughs> announcer is like, oh, <laughs> it was interesting. But uh, yeah. Um, and then that's when they kind of first started talking about the class system. So, you know, they went from hacking the camera to the the strong solo. Strong they, arms, the, yeah. Yeah, where they, where they rip up. Which again, not a class doors. system really, but more mm -hmm. like just a free assignment of points into how and you then, play. Uh, Huber, you wanted to talk about this melee stuff. Yes. Uh, the melee was good, but I thought the shooting was better. 
Okay. Thought the shooting had more impact, looked cooler. Uh, the melee, like some of the hits felt really powerful, but then kind of the uh, like some of the animations, like the the um, the neck snap animation, like they would hit him and then they would do the neck snap and it would kind of just like warp into the neck snap animation again, just stuff that like. Hmm. It comes out next year. All this stuff is is just ripe for for polish. But I don't think they snapped the neck in ours. Yeah, and again, yeah, and that's the thing is, I don't remember that. So I don't remember much snap- going on. Neck. Yeah, he like took a bottle. He took a broken bottle. Oh yeah, yeah they did that. Like, yeah, stabbed him in the side, and then the guy like staggered, and then he went up behind and just like snapped his neck. Oh, and, they killed they killed that person just by stabbing her with a bottle a bunch of times in ours. Yeah. Well, there's also a knife too. Did they throw? They the- threw it. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. I love the knife throw. Love the hammer. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. I was I was pleased with the melee, but I was extremely impressed with the shooting. So that's that's where my head it's tough to tell sometimes with melee unless you're the one controlling it too. Right? Yeah. Totally, um, totally. They they dipped into the skill tree a bit, which we talked about. A little bit. I didn't get to write down everything, but the ones I wrote down, some of them are interesting. Two-handed, mm. uh, shotguns, blades, hacking, rifles, handguns, assassination, and I think there is like a, one on there called cold-blooded or something. Yeah, that was there. Did we mention that after you killed the boss, you can pick up and use the hammer? <laughs> yep. If you if have, you have strength enough. Yep. Oh, strong cool. arms. You, yep. Mm. Yeah. They, in the in the strong solo version with the mechanical strength arms, she could pick up the hammer and did, use it. Did they use the hammer during the fight for you guys? Yeah. Not, no. Okay, uh, yeah, it was only after we got a swing. Cool. 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 But yeah. In ours, they broke the juice thing, uh, and then the boss dropped the hammer, and then our player. Picked up the hammer and kind of like whacked her with it. She wasn't as strong, like super strong enough to use it effectively, but like hit hit the boss a couple of times with it. Um, I said we had somebody because uh, oh, so what they did with the skill points is they invested in uh, handgun yeah. proficiency mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. she could use a gun there a, a little better. Uh, they used somebody as a human shield for a second. Yeah, oh, that was Which brutal. Was a yeah, against a turret, well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, or no, yeah. What was so brutal about that uh using the guy as a human shield is you it was it was actually he carried him a pretty good ways um and you could see the guy like squirming around and then just his body going limp yeah. as you're getting closer to the turret. <laughs> took enough bullets and died. It was very yeah, brutal. It was intense. Yeah, and that's where you rip out the turret. Yeah. Um and that's when you oh, that's when you hack the guy to uh um uh, jam his targeting. Uh, they also and then they also talked about being able to have a guy like pull the pin on his own grenade. They did that for us, yeah. And they had someone shoot themselves in the head by hacking their arm. Yeah, yeah and we didn't get to see that because she was like, "Oh, we really wanted to uh, have someone shoot themselves in the head, but our demoer is like bloodthirsty right now. He was just killing people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, the wire, man. He was just flinging that wire around. It's interesting that it was different, yeah. Um, and then that was the boss fight with the Sasquatch that we talked about with the glass and mm-hmm. the, the guy hacking into you. Sasquatch is the person's name, not, they weren't right. actually a Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> but big, yeah. big lady. But yeah, the animals are like, lady, but... uh, we, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but basically like, they're just, they're just like pumping up their muscles with this yeah. crazy juice. Mm-hmm. They're like roid raging gang. Uh, oh, and they did, they did talk about like when you beat the boss, you can, uh, you can leave them or kill them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then yeah, then we have the 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 kind of dialogue with the the netwatch agent, that kind of like turn. Well, they showed they showed yeah the netrunner hacked into the van that you're trying you're trying to find this like tech van, and then that lets you know like oh there's a netwatch which is basically like internet police I guess yeah um in the building and then the netwatch guy starts hacking the the building and you have to like use routes to get up to him. Yeah, and then you you confront him in this movie theater. Very cool, up in the projection. Oh yeah, showing a movie. western. Showing a the western. Movie. Yeah, yeah. that was great. Internet police. Just like a, is like so a funny. movie. Well, like in-game, you know, yeah. character animation and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Is playing out scenes. Horses. And just like. <laughs> um, yeah, and so when you get in there, he he disables your connection to Placide, so that yeah. you're just talking one on one, so you can have this dialogue uh, with you, uh, and and tries to to tell him like, what did he say that like. The word that they use for you is like means like dirty rag or something. Yeah, ru- yeah. Rag, 
not it I remember it reminded me of Runyon, but it's not Runyon something Canyon. Like that, it's yeah. like Roy Royon or, or something. Yeah, but you're being used. A Creole word for like, yeah, a used rag that you throw away. And yeah, so the net runner or the net watcher guy is like, yo, what do you think they're gonna do with you after like you were sent here by them? You, why do you think they didn't tell you what the end of this mission was? It's like you're sent here and they're just gonna dispose of you. Like, they dispose of everyone after they are done, you know? And then because our character had Street Kid, we were predisposed to say, no, I'm going to stick with my my guts here. I'm going to stay with these guys. You Screw know? the man. Screw the man. And so then you, like, hack into this dude and access the 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 map so the, the net watchers have been using agents around the town to try to find the location with this this like basically like super intense google mapping van uh to find the location of the voodoo boys hideout but then as soon as you hack into that guy you see all the operatives of the net watchers in the area getting like x'd out on the map and then that guy gets x'd out and then you get x'd out and your screen goes black and then if you wake up eight hours later and uh johnny silverhand I presume somehow protected your mind from being scrambled because sure. they were supposed to like melt your brain by overloading, hacking you and wiping you, melting you. Uh, and Johnny Silverhand is just like, told you or whatever. Like, <laughs> should have seen that coming, you know, in this can of Reeves. And uh, so, yeah, like you were wrong. Your character yeah. should have been mind melted. But the best part of that is then Johnny Silverhand. Uh, well, our, our guy picked, give me a second. And then like of the, options like stand up or give me a second <laughs> it's just like your character just sat there for a second then johnny silverhand is just like you look like this guy a second ago like the dead uh, <laughs> net watches guy and then the option came back up and you stood up and then uh you go back outside and the two people from placide's gang from the voodoo boys that were watching the the mall like who clearly both knew you were gonna get m melted yeah see you walk out and they're both just like Oh shit! They they can't <laughs> they can't believe that you're alive, and they're like, "Do you want to go see Brigitte? We'll take you there." <laughs> it's like, don't kill us, because like yeah. And the announcer was like, "Yeah, no one is supposed to be able to survive having their brain melted." Uh, yeah, and then they take you back to see Placide, and you just punch Placide in the face, <laughs> and then he's gonna kill you, and then Brigitte is like. She comes in and she's like, "Get out of here!" Yeah, you know? it's kind of like one of those alpha moments. Where yeah, it's like this guy that's seen like the tough top dog. He's like, she she walks in. He's like, "All right, I'm yeah. I'll go back to my room now." It reminded me of the Dark Knight Rises, mm. Mm -hmm. with with yeah, the the way those two characters are interacting is very yeah. much the like the villain dynamic in Dark Knight Rises. You're and a good then, man, ben. <laughs> and then uh, so then she says, you know, if I had known you had the chip in you, like I wouldn't have put you in any danger you know like whatever and so then this is where this is where stuff gets like lore heavy yeah. weird crazy talking about this guy named alt cunningham which i believe is a woman the the announcer referred to her as a she oh but, really okay yeah alt cunningham apparently the first person to ever upload their entire consciousness to become an ai and live entirely on the net is like this legendary hacker presence that apparently has gone beyond the black wall which is something in the net, which is this, you know, the cyber, cyber space. The deep web. The deep web. Um, and so you get, and Brigitte is going to take you to talk to Alt Cunningham. That was the whole point of you trying to, you wanted to meet Brigitte to talk to Alt Cunningham. Why? Not totally sure. I guess it has something to do with Johnny Silverhand and immortality. But, uh, so yeah, they, they make you get into a ice bath and your character is just like, ah, ah. In a great little comedic moment is your character is freezing and having that reaction and then you just get some sort of person that's like manning the station that has come by and dumped just a little bit more ice. A little yeah. more <laughs> ice on you. Sing, yeah. Yeah. You're your just like, ah. yeah. And then they're all like, all right, you ready? And they like, they all get in their like pretty much matrix chairs and jack into the net. And, uh, and then Sandra Bullock walks in. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, everything goes all crazy digital and weird looking. Uh, and then Brigitte is there, and your character's like, what is this? And she's like, this is the net. This is our little BBS, which I'm not sure what that means. But Probably it's bulletin board system. Something, yeah. something, what? It's a, that's old school. Yeah, it's like a server or yeah, something. No, yeah, no, it's just a forum. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. And, uh, 
and so then they're like, this is our net, our gateway into the deep web. And so then it moves forward into the deep web to this giant red, like, wall. And she says, no one's ever come back from beyond the black wall until today. All Cunningham, she's going to be the first one to do it. Because apparently you're going to, like, try to remove a sliver of Johnny Silverhand and that's going to, like, get her attention if there's anything human left in her and she'll come out. That, something to yeah, that effect. I don't know. Who knows what the hell that means? But then at the very end, you look up and like some kind of things, like like a like kind pushing of against the wall, breaking con through. Convex, yeah, thing comes out of the wall and then it ended and went to the title. Pretty crazy, <laughs> weird stuff. But yeah, it was very, it was pretty different from the last year's E three demo. Which yeah. I, I felt year's like E3 it was a lot demo, more grounded in a way. This like one, it yeah, wasn't it trying to like was. shock you a lot. It felt and... way more early game. It felt more like here are the systems. Here's what it feels like to play this game in real time. Yeah, the way that they set it up is they're like, we wanted to give you a sense, a very broad sense last year of of what the world was like, and here we wanted to sell how this RPG yes. works. And I think they did that spectacularly. Capital R, capital P, capital yeah. G. <laughs> but yeah, it was. And it was weird because my initial reaction, I was like, because when they ended it there, I was like, mm, okay, you know, this is very solid. And now, like, talking it over and thinking things through, and now that I've had time to let it sink in, I'm just like, this game is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think <laughs> part of what exemplifies that for me is this every scene, every step that we're describing in this demo. It's like, okay, well, we have the moment where we describe what's happening, but then one of us will jump in and be like, oh, did you notice this detail? Did right. you notice this detail? And it's like, yeah, anything that you're doing, there's this whole world functioning behind you that you can see live out in real time. To, like, a terrifying degree. Yeah. I am horrified of this game. Because, <laughs> like, we're all just going to have to disappear yeah. for, like, a month it's gonna be rough. to play this game. And then seven years from now, it'll come out on Switch. Yeah. And it'll be hilarious. <laughs> I really liked the pistol. Had a really good impact. Yeah. Loved it. And again, there were like skills based on that. The skill tree was really cool. Mm -hmm. The inventory stuff. Uh, the inventory seemed really clean. There was just like your character there. And when you click a, like a new piece of uh, clothing, it puts it on them and you see them, like how they look and stuff. Yeah. They like really stressed fashion in this game, so you can. Well, there's a lot to customize because they and they even said, yeah, people. I think you mentioned this too. People will react to you differently depending on how you're dressed. Yeah. So like, if you're dressed like a corporate, they're gonna treat you like a stiff. If mm -hmm. you're in, you know, this part of town, you know, it's it's so cool. Ah. <laughs> uh, so we've got a, a little over an hour to go. Um, I think the next thing we should probably make sure we hit tonight uh, is uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Cool. Yeah, Brad Bradley Ellis. I played it. Yeah, yeah but give, Brad did see the the Chad, other demo the other day, so we should. Uh, well, Brad let's get Kyle off. in here too. Brad, Brad took Kyle. off. Brad took off. Yeah, I don't think Brad saw or played. We saw the. We uh, saw the thing the other day. We saw the other demo with me, and we 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 talked about that uh, on. Um, uh, um, yeah, Brad took off Sunday or Monday morning. Oh, this is Brad's nice. Not here. Okay. This is like a guy going. <laughs> this is a zippy pocket, weird zippy pocket. This bottom part doesn't come up, which is strange. And then the inside it says Cyberpunk. Oh, can you just turn that out? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Is yeah, because I saw a guy wearing that. That hurts. Yeah, it's reversible. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, I, I saw a dude with the yellow walking around. No pockets if you're wearing it this early. Uh, but I mean, I think it's probably mostly liner, but you can definitely do it. Cool. Interesting. Cool. Um, yeah, Huber, did you want to get in on Star Wars? I guess we should reset. I don't know what's happening. I don't know where the other people are. Hi, Blood. Uh, Hi, Jones. Star Wars next. Update. Yeah, we're we're talking Star Wars next, uh, and then probably the the Outer Worlds. But I just want to make sure we got got some dudes in here. Sure, sure. Need no more dudes. Drama. Just a drink. No big drum. Yep. Played Bio Mutant today. Yeah, yeah. See, I got that in there too a little Ow. bit. Pinched myself. Careful, man. <laughs> I probably uh, don't need a headphones so much. And uh, what else did I check out today? 
Oh, an Avengers, yeah. Avengers Cyberpunk. Mm. I'll be wrapped up. My, yeah. My Tuesday will be finished after this. Uh... Yeah, I got 9 a.m. tomorrow, so. Oh, yeah, we got 9 a.m. You guys do? Mm -hmm. What do you do? You take are, your special? Are you, are you with me 9 a.m.? I, don't, I couldn't tell you. Honestly. Yes, okay. you are. Yeah. What do I do? You guys, are, you guys are both on Dying Light 2, right? Dying Light 2 hands off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hands <laughs> off, Dying Light. <laughs> hands off. Really curious. Last year they had like zombie actors. Nice. There was like a hallway you walked in to get to the theater and like, uh, you were like nice. wandering around. Like, okay, fun. Um, so yeah, Jones. Did you see Darth Maul? What, what, uh, what happened? No, today? this I played this. I played I played the demo that they played. But before I did that, uh, and this was great. This Wait, actually. I'm sorry, did, I, I literally spaced for one second. Did you, you see or you played? I played. You, you played. played. Okay, yeah, played I played. Jedi okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, I'm here. Um, <laughs> I'm here. And uh, the way they had, I loved the way that they had this appointment set up because uh, I first walk in and there's. Two, maybe three, but it looks like there's like two separate theaters where you're going in to actually play the demo. And then there's a couch. There's Stig. And there's the, the, the crew. There's Respawn. Everybody that are like, you know, like, do you want a snack? And like, there's just people chilling on the couch playing a demo of the game. Not this demo. It was, it was like Disney Infinity style. It was like a block with walls around it and then just waves. Cool. And so you would like pick up the controller and there would just be one stormtrooper and then two stormtroopers and then yes. the guy with the, the purple rod and then that guy with two stormtroopers and then that guy with two stormtroopers and now two guys up on the wall and then like uh, so it was, it, I like when it was done and I played the demo it was neat to like get good at the game and yeah. then they're like oh it's time for your demo and I'm like oh I'm gonna crush this thing let's do it <laughs> um, and he played through uh, the first part uh, with the ad uh climbed up a completely different way which I thought was cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, uh, talked a lot about more specific points throughout the demo uh, that hopefully I'll try to remember and illustrate. But uh, I thought that was interesting because he was very forthcoming about how this demo was set up for E3. One point that I thought was very interesting was uh, um, there was one point where he gets up to a uh, something he needs to rotate to wall run on, and then he can't do it because BD1 doesn't have the tech to, uh, to hack it to move it. And so he uh, doubles back, and then there's a door right there, and he goes to the door, and he pointed out, he's like, in the actual level, it's in some, it's someplace else. It's a little more elaborate than this. But we put it in this door um, uh, just to make the demo easier, to make it quicker for us to run there through. There it is. E3. There's that E3 budget, yeah. you know, making this version of the game. And uh, pointed out a lot of, like, doors and stuff. Like, I would walk by a door, and he'd be like, he'd be like this opens up when you actually do the level. and um, Or this uh, this becomes an elevator, so you can actually take this up and down uh, when you're actually going back through. Um, but um, specifically, and I don't have my phone on me. I'll try to remember it as much as I can. Because I took a, they had a, a, a laminated sheet that had all the oh, controls. Cool. Um, and uh, I was like, I'll take a picture of this. But... Um, uh, there was more abilities that Cal has than I was able to get good at in this amount of time. Um, but I think out of everything that he does that I really dug, uh, that I want to talk about first of all, and keep in mind, this is just me getting good at that in this arena. So I'm just in a very tight space fighting these things. Got to fight the K2SO droid. Nice. Uh, which was really was creepy. Tough? Yeah, because he'll grapple you. And when he would pick me up and slam me down, I could only take two of those. And then uh, oh. that would take me out. Excellent. And he's got the arms out. And so I'm like running around trying to grab these other things, and he's just like, <laughs> like following me, and like, the, and the, I could literally have like eight respawn people just cracking up behind me, just like, yeah, you got you again. Um, and uh, oh, Jones, that's so good. And one thing that they had in the demo, which was great, was they had a uh, probe droid from Empire, mm -hmm. and I, I don't recall seeing those uh, so far in the in the gameplay. And I love that I'm just like, God, how do I'm like throwing the um, uh, lightsaber at it and like trying to jump and hit it. And I just like didn't even think about it. He's like, you can force pull, and I was like, oh, and it's boom, <laughs> pull it out of the sky. But it's tough because it's if if it's just me and that, I mean, it's no question I can take it out. But once they start adding more targets that you have to deal with, and once they start classic Batman style, once they start having things that can block and having things that uh, are just out of your reach and shooting. Um, it adds up, and it gets. I, would, I easily got flustered. I think I made just like wave like fifteen or sixteen. Yeah. Um, and then it was time for my demo. Jones, are we underestimating the, like how crazy things are going to get? Do you imagine a scene where you're going up against like seventy five stormtroopers? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Could that happen? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, and and again, like they were they're very forthcoming about the, how they had this demo set up. He's like, this is an easy demo. 
Mm-hmm. He's like, this. when you go through this level in the actual game, it will be much more difficult than this. He's like, we just wanted people to play around with their Force powers and, and have characters like this, like to have the characters with the, the purple staff be um, uh, much more challenging. And um, but uh, The red blink, is that? That is an unblockable attack. Unblockable, yeah. okay. Uh, Brad Ellis called it. He saw that, and I was like, yeah, I don't know what that is. And he's like, I don't know what that is. Come on. Uh, <laughs> he's on it. Um, but my the, the two favorite abilities that they have that are so much fun is force force push, force pull. So uh, pull is left trigger, push is right trigger. And uh, if you hold it down and charge it, uh, if you're doing the force push, he'll charge up and boom, do like a really strong force push. Uh, and if you just tap it, he'll do a really simple one. Cool. One uh, bit that we'll get to uh, later in the demo. Uh, I don't know if they'll... I think they I think they showed this on stage but uh, I climbed up and I, it was so much fun because I was like going into areas and it's like I know exactly the amount of stormtroopers that are in this room and I know where they are and I'm gonna mess them up and so I climbed up and there were two of them looking over a ledge and I just boop just just really easily like force push the first guy um, but the thing about force push and force pull is uh, it's it's degrees depending on how long you hold both of the triggers down and the thing that's fun about force pull is is that means you can just like kind of pull somebody toward you, but not necessarily all the way toward you. So when you see him pull somebody all the way toward you, and then he does the the stab, mm-hmm. that's him holding down left trigger the whole time. Got it. Oh, uh, okay. So the one part where he came out and saw the stormtroopers fighting uh, uh, spiders, I killed every single stormtrooper on that ledge. I literally just snuck up behind the first guy, killed him. Saw the other guy, threw a lightsaber at him, and just force pull, stab that guy. Nice. Force pull, stab that guy. Because they were all like, they, they were all busy with the spiders. <laughs> and um, and before I even did that, I killed the first guy, and then was just watching it. And I looked over at the guy, and he looked over at me, and I'm like, and he was like, take your time. He's like, yeah. He's like, he's like sometimes he's like, usually the spiders kill them, but sometimes they'll you know they'll manage to take one of the spiders out. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, so it'd be neat to actually like watch. Uh, there's another uh, scenario that I think we just ran past where uh, like these like bee characters, these like bugs come crawling mm. in, and so you see like the guys with flamethrowers. The guys with flamethrowers, man, brutal. They'll mess you up. Uh, that was about as far as I got. It was like t- two flamethrowers, K two S O, a. Um, uh, probe droid and two guys up on the tower like shooting at me and I'm like yeah. I can't I can't do this. Um, I that mean, is I, really good I, to I hear. If I spent time with it, I probably could get better at it. But I was yeah. like, that's ah, time for my demo. But that's good to hear because that was a concern, you know, yeah. because the demo we all we had to really go off was the demo and right. everything just looked really. I don't, I'm not saying basic, but like it looked simple. You know, well they just, just wanted to run through it exactly. Fast, you know? Exactly. Again, like Avengers, like they wanted yeah. to just like you know do as much as they can. Uh, this the 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 force grabbing was. Um, uh, uh, Fairly straightforward, especially after seeing the demo. Like, I, I was able to, to platform through these areas. So, yeah, this is where I just grabbed people one by one by one <laughs> by one. Um, but this guy, if you see over on the right, you can see a guy up on the wall that you later wall run on. And what I did to that guy is I just, whoop, I just did a little left trigger tap. And so I pulled him a little bit, but just enough for, ah, for him to, like, fall oh, off the ledge. Oh, that's so, I could so pull him good, all the way over from there. Um, so I just thought that was really cool that, that like there are degrees to the strength of your abilities, that it's not just like I press a button and it does this thing that I love that those are assigned to the two, uh, yeah. triggers. Um, uh, left bumper is block, uh, pl- tons of melee attacks that didn't do anything for her. Like there are a lot of melee attacks that just went right through that. So it's like mostly for deflecting laser fire and just really simple melee attacks. Uh, if you hold block and hit Y, I think that's the saber throw. Um, and, um, uh, I think, uh, right bumper is a modifier for, I think if you hold down right bumper, he does that like charge attack. Mm. And if you think you hold right bumper and do attacks, he'll do different specific strong attacks. Just didn't, didn't have a lot of time to get really good at that. When Mm. I was doing the waves, it was like almost all evasion. It was just like, ah, I'm just running away from these guys. Uh, how many like blaster shots take you down? Um, not a lot. Uh, Or, or, uh, I, 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 it was not a problem. I, okay, when I did the okay, waves okay. and and uh, it was usually like I was just being stubborn. Oh, I totally didn't go this way. Oh, cool. I went oh, the other way. Secrets. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it was it was mostly me just being like not selfish, but like you know you, when you you know you have like low health and like you know better. You know you should get away and heal, but you're still like no, I'm trying to block and do a cool thing. And yeah, I would just get taken out. So yeah, Got it was it. just me me being an, an idiot. And I asked them in the interview when you got to these. Like meditation points, uh, is that where you spend your skill points? And I I brought it up, and I think one was lightsaber, one was force, and one was just like general combat abilities. Um, and uh, um, 
the, uh, also uh, saves your progress. That's the checkpoint on the level. Got it. Um, and yeah, everything, once I actually like got into the level itself, everything was pretty straightforward. I was able to just kind of rip through it because it wasn't, again, he said he's like this, you know, the AI is not really tuned up as much as it will be in this area. Um, but um, uh, I was really, you know, I wasn't impressed, obviously, like visually with, you know, totally didn't do any of this. Uh, I wasn't, um, uh, you know, visually impressed with the, the, the environment that I was playing the, the waves in, but like, I think I had more fun in that area because it was really, it was really smart for them to set that up. That and, is very, a very and, cool idea. And I feel was, you know, kind of emblematic of like what, like when I was done, Stig grabbed me and was like, what did you think? And we had a really fun conversation just about Star Wars and the design. And um, I asked him like the, the ship that he has. I'm like, did you design, is that based on anything? He's like, that's 100% our ship. Like we designed this brand new ship. Mm -hmm. Uh, he mentioned, um, what I think I, I'd heard them uh, uh, say before, but I believe Doug Chang is his name. He's the guy who designed all of the stuff for the prequels uh, that he and Respawn and Ben Burt, who who was the guy that decided what lightsabers sound like, what Chewbacca sounds like, what the Falcon sounds like, all of that stuff, came back to do the, the, the sound for BD-1. And so it's neat that a lot of the elements in this game are like new, but designed by Respawn and, and just people that have been around the Star Wars series for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, you know, years, if not decades. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, like this, this scenario here is like, it, it was not necessarily difficult. I didn't want to, you know, I, I didn't want to do the same thing that he did. I just like deflected absolutely every single shot. Uh, deflection is great. It's like a counter. You can also, uh, it's just left trigger right when it happens or left bumper. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you can do a, uh, perfect dodge. So you'll see him do that and everything goes yeah. slowly. Never could do it. <laughs> okay. The whole time during the wow. waves, and when I actually went through the mission, yeah. could never pull it off. <laughs> uh, when if Brad had done my appointment, he probably would have done when, it. When uh, Blue Blade guy hits you, is there a block and a parry? Like, if you hold block, does it just do it? And if you par like, can you parry reflect I, it? This is where I just shoved the guy off, the guy on the right there. I was like, see ya. <laughs> um, but um, uh, yeah, like that. Well, I, I did it before he even turned around, but um. Uh, yeah, you really want to counter. Like, you really want to tap that left you okay. know, uh, bumper when you're getting... Like, I did a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, you can throw people out. I didn't even do it. So there that. is, like, a counter parry yeah. type thing? Cool. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it just gives you an example. Like, this room, I... I did this room completely differently than he's doing that. Like I immediately went over to the gunners on the left, like, um, get the range I, 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 out, I, I take him out, I pushed the other two guys off. And then it was just me and, and, and this guy. Um, and the, the slow-mo was interesting. I, I, I got confused right away and I, uh, I didn't really get to use it a lot. Hmm. Um, and then he explained later, I was like, oh, that's what it is. Cause it's confusing. Like, and I think that's uh right bumper. So he, um, uh, will slow them down, but the second you Go to attack them, it cancels it. Mm -hmm. So it's really like crowd control. Like it's really just one person, like you stop, and then you go over to someone else, and that person's moving really slowly. But um, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not something like a, it's not something you can use as a crutch. Mm -hmm. um, but so it's interesting, like, like this, this, um, and it was funny because I, the, my demo ended the same way here where the K2SO droid comes out and then the demo ends, but I ripped up like five of them to when I was doing the, the wave thing. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, it's, it, it kind of sets this, you know, scenario up like this is some big crazy boss battle and it's not, um, you know, these, they're, they're, they're tough. Like once those things grab you, but if you can, if you can get around them, um, uh, they're not that difficult, but it, uh, it was, I, I, I Again, when I did this demo, it was not that difficult. I was not blown away. I didn't really discover like a lot of new things that I didn't understand from watching uh, the demo during the the uh, EA Play live stream, and then subsequently behind closed doors. It was really just getting hammered by you know having like eight targets at once, all of these different types. Uh, and it was funny too because I um, I uh, uh, was on this one thing with these like flamethrower guys, and I got so close and just got cocky. It got taken out. And then one guy came up behind me and was like, we should really start your demo. And I was like, okay. And the reason why people were like, wait, no, dude, you were close. And I was like, we all know what's going to happen if I try that one more time. Let me go do the demo. But they, they were so invested. And, yeah. and, and it was really interesting seeing, um, you know, they were like very much paying attention. Like when Stig first came out, he was like, wait, what wave is this? How, how has he been doing so far? And yeah. like, you know, they, they really seemed focused on um, how this game feels. Like that was kind of like the whole theme of the appointment. Like he he walked me through the whole ad at sequence and then actually fired the ad at and then after it had crashed um, and stepped out, handed it over to me. Yeah. Um, and was just very much like paying attention to all the inputs that I was doing. And um, and 
you know, not only from the, the, the controls that I saw um, and was very much aware that, like, I would, you know, press two buttons together and do some cool move. And I'd be like, oh, I, should, I would love to do that on command, but I only got, you know, like three more minutes of this demo. Yeah. Um, uh, but even just watching this, like watching like one move that I love that he forced, you know, pulled somebody toward him and threw him at somebody else. Um, it's neat. And that, that's kind of actually what I want from a Jedi game. And I think it's going to be interesting, kind of this double-edged sword of like, I don't want to be too powerful, but I don't want to be too weak at the same time. Right. Like, I want to be able to like have a stormtrooper see me and be like, oh man, <laughs> if just like three guys in a hallway, it's like, yeah. I'm going to, you know, tear through you like tissue paper. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, now there's a bunch of you or now there's a guy who's just kind of far away That's... or there's just that, again, like Batman, like there's just that one extra annoying guy that I can't just rush through this. I have to deal with him first. Yeah. Um, That's what I love about Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy, but they, that has the benefit of having a ton of Sith coming at you, you know? Right. It's like you're owning, and then, like, four Sith guys come, and it's like, whoa, okay, now now business picks up, and right. it's like these these purple blades don't seem too threatening in the KSOs. Yeah. You're, you're taken out, but, like, are there going to be more Sith, or, or what's, what's, like, the big No hints whatsoever threat. at that story. It was funny when, yeah. when Brad and I interviewed two members of Respawn uh, at EA Play on Saturday, uh, one guy whose name's Brandon, who who I know at, at Respawn, uh, was really really nice. And the guy across from him had this look on his face that was like, "Try me. I'm not answering any of your questions." It just it, lore wise, you know. He was like, <laughs> yeah. "I will I will clarify things you saw in that demo." Full stop. Yeah. Um, uh, I got twenty bucks on Cal being in a live action Star Wars. Any, anything. It's gonna. Happen. Oh sure. Because I mean, Cameron yeah, Monaghan is amazing. He's lore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll he'll pop. He'll be in Star Wars. Yeah. Or he'll pop up. I mean, certainly being Galaxy of Heroes. I know. Like I'm, I'm waiting for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, and they focused a little bit more on uh, clarified one thing that I understood, but uh, um, I thought was interesting in terms of like how you actually explore these different uh, levels. Um, it reminds me of Ratchet and Clank. The... Do you get a Ratchet and Clank vibe, Jones? Nobody's been saying this, but I, every time I look at this game, I'm like, dude, Ratchet and Clank. Because you go to a planet, you get new gadgets to to progress through it, yeah. and it's like, okay, you can leave and come back to the planet, and there's like little side quests, side areas. Yeah. They keep saying Metroidvania, but I'm just like, a little bit. is it Metroid? It, a little it... bit of both, sure, okay. sure. Hmm. Okay. Um, I just think, w from what I've seen of Ratchet and Clank, big wide hallways... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, lots of different kind of like targets at once. Obviously, the the, the comedy, which is not in this game too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's like maybe a little bit more platforming. Oh, that's the one thing about jumping that I actually heard overheard respawn is when I was like trying to get good at it. It's just a natural reflex where you'd be like double jump, double jump. And it's not really doing anything in combat. And one of the respawn guys was like, they always jump. <laughs> He's like, yeah. and, he's, and the guy's like, yeah, we had so many jumpers today. And he's like, it just doesn't, you know, it's mostly it's for funny. platforming and, and, you know, traveling through the level and stuff like that. It's like yeah. not going to do a lot for you in combat. But interesting. Uh, what we saw in the behind the uh, behind closed doors is that you can go into your ship, that there's like the Mass Effect planet navigation where you can bring up all of the different planets. Mm -hmm. uh, but two things that they, they show that I hadn't seen before. One, clarified that it's not only your ship, but there's like a landing area. So every planet has like one specific spot where the ship comes and lands and then the oh. ship's always going to be there and so not only are you unlocking uh things as you go through the level you're unlocking new creative ways to get back to your ship mm -hmm. so um like as you go further and further and further you know it's like uh kind of tricky like to get back to yeah. your ship and then you unlock like some tram like there oh cool is. i can Rad just take that that is straight yeah. up ratchet and clank cool. no. awesome <laughs> um and and just in general it's just it's nice to have that vibe i love the fact that you can go to your ship i told stick this i'm just like it just feels like i, I have a home you know it's nice whoa, to like go whoa. tell me about the ship jones um it's just that you just walk in. It's, it's kind of has like yeah. slight Falcon vibes. Do you, you see little, it? Like, the... Do you have your like a bedroom? Is there a bedroom? No, no, no. <laughs> it's like you just he he did say there's more parts of the ship open up as you go you know throughout the game. Okay. But it was just this uh, um, initial again. They kind of had like a clean Falcon vibe. Um, but uh, I had like the game board and everything. But uh, can you play? Was a pretty... Can you play the game board? No, he didn't do oh, any of that stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, but he did. Uh, what d uh, dug a little bit deeper than behind the closed doors did, where he brought up the level and then zoomed in and showed you like. This is, uh, you know, this white door identifies the door is here. We don't know what's going on with that door. Red doors are inaccessible. Green doors mean you've been here and now have the ability to open that door. Mm. And I love that stuff. Like, that's that's one of the things that attracts me to uh, the Prime series is it looks like 
Um, I mean, it can get pretty you know perplexing, but it looks like it's very straightforward in terms of like what you can do, what you mm-hmm. can't do, where you've been, where you haven't. Cool. Uh, and uh, one planet that he looked at, you could see where you were going to land when you went there, but like you could see there was just the rest of the map that was all grayed out. He's like, you haven't yeah. been there, you haven't unlocked it yet. Um, Jones, uh, I'm going to ask you a question that you could talk, like give an hour long answer for. So so tone it down. You are a Star Wars super fan star wars maniac i thought i liked star wars until nah. i met you <laughs> how excited are you for this story for the lore for this point in this franchise um it's it's interesting that you brought that up because i think that's the most you know tepid that i am for this project at this point yeah um i d- yeah i don't necessarily need more lore in this time period like between three and four like i think I'm I'm hoping they discover some really interesting things. It's it's there is an interesting moment between uh, Saul Guerrero and I think I can't remember if, if that was shown during the live stream where um, he's like, "What are you doing here?" And then your your co pilot says, "Oh, he's a Jedi." And Saul's like, "What?" And he showed him the lightsaber, and Saul's like, "Did you steal that?" And he's like, "No, I got that from my master." And he's like, "Okay, all right." Like, <laughs> just saying because it's rare, and so it's interesting. <laughs> cool. uh, what you know, initially when they had when they showed him with the cloak up and he's hiding from everybody, I was like, "Oh, it'd be cool if they're stealth mechanics." And I'm like, "No, no, not really." But like, it, it'd be interesting to see to go to these different planets and have them react to you uh, as a Jedi. Like, I hope that I hope that's something that they don't take for granted. I hope that doesn't get old. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm just gonna kind of let this story happen. Like that. I really don't have any expectations. There's like, there's no characters I like hope are in it. There's yeah. no planets like I hope we go to. Uh, I, I I hope it's weird. I hope it's unusual. I hope um, there's like this moment that's like spoiled for me now. But like when this like, spider comes out of nowhere, like I hope there's a lot of that like where weird you like creatures. get trapped in a cra- like what and some right. crazy looking thing I've never seen before. It's not yeah. like oh it's the thing from the you know hollow chest board or like oh it's yeah. a sarlacc neat like i hope there's just crazy crazy like, do you stuff. want those the planets feel very different from each other do you want those fan service moments like do you want a sarlacc pit or do you want a not rancor really. to show up not really do you want to distance it i'll appreciate that stuff i hope they're a little i hope they're subtle I, like there's the one line that they did have in the live stream where he's like we have the high ground you're like ah. uh so like there, there are little beats like that um that um i hope oh i feel so bad because i you know, they, when he force pushes the black astromech into the group, yeah. yeah, I turn the corner and it's there, and I like look at the guy that's demoing, and I'm like, I'm gonna walk right past this droid. Thank you very much. I'm not gonna use it as a projectile. And then, of course, I accidentally hit with my lightsaber, like Aww. cut it in half. Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you, I mean, you do bring up a good point, though, is that like, I, I am excited about this game, man. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna arm wrestle Brad to review this thing. But like, do I really care about Cal right now? No. You know who I care about? B1, man. B1. And that was like one of the things that I told the yeah. team before I left. They were like, what really stood out to you? And I'm like, I know this is not the answer you're looking for because you really want like that nuanced combat reaction. But I just love that you you go up to a terminal and B1's like, got it. And just whoop, whoop, like goes over. <laughs> That's great. And that just helps streamline the whole thing. Because like, I'm not doing this to hack machines. I'm not doing this to, you know, spend a lot of time at terminals typing at stuff. Yeah. Hold B to like, type, type, type. Mm. Uh, and so I like that uh, not only is that stuff quick but a lot of times it's accompanied by a fun little interaction between him and cal um you didn't see it but uh when he uh takes control of the ad at he walks in the cockpit and then kind of looks over at, at bd1 bd1 and then b1 hops up in the middle and like beeps at the two of them and like what and then he like crushes their heads oh and i forgot this uh when he's piloting it he's like okay and like trying to get the controls of the ad at and this uh, hologram comes up and this guy's like yelling at Cal and Cal's like can you shut him up please and he and BD1 just steps over and like, like stops <laughs> oh, on the machine oh my gosh <laughs> so like yeah I'm I'm a sucker for that guy and I told the whole respawn team I'm like I know you're selling him when are you selling him when can I get him <laughs> oh my god this thing's like he's, he's on my desk right now <sighs> uh, we'll see if, uh, yeah that hits stores but, switch um, version yeah amiibo so, uh, so <laughs> let's do I, go do I, like I need the lore <laughs> not at yeah. all like I, I'm just gonna kind of see you know uh the worlds I think I'm mostly looking forward to and just getting good at it it's one of those demos where like by the end of it I'm like I'm kind of finally in control of this game and sadly I have to leave that was like the, the last sentiment that I told him before I took off is like yeah. the only thing I'm sad about is I wish I was better at this because I'm just starting to you know not only get skilled at it and get good at dodging and stuff but under like seeing the playfulness of it and and I wonder if there's gonna be like a replayable sense of like the mission I, f- uh, I, I undertook is done on this planet, but if mm-hmm. I go back, maybe it started to repopulate a little bit with soldiers and stuff, yeah. and I can play around. Um, but, um, yeah. So, story? Meh. 
but uh, just am I? Do I want to play more of this? Yeah, I, w- I wish I had it right now. I'd play around with it a lot. It's fun. Nice. Yeah. Um, what else? What up next? Uh, the Outer Worlds. I'd love to get Ben up in here. I would love to eat some food if I can. Let me see yeah. if I can grab somebody else. See if we can get Ben and uh, maybe Ian. Star Wars, man. Star Wars. We're getting a Star Wars <laughs> game this year. The like, Outdoor even if it's just worlds. good, you know? Yeah. It doesn't need to be great. Just be good. Star Wars. Just give us a good Star Wars game. Swimming in sevens, <laughs> I will take. <laughs> At this point. Jedi Outcast, blood. When's the last time you played it? Jedi um. Outcast 2. Didn't we like do a stream of it? Or you know, try I to think do a stream we did. I think we did. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, I hadn't really because I didn't. I didn't have a decent PC at those those days. Yeah. Those were the good old days. I had yeah. a good PC. Not anymore. What's that? I don't have a good PC anymore. <laughs> you have a good enough PC. Hanging in there. Blue collar. Low collar. <laughs> Blue collar PC. It's getting late, Chad. I'm getting loopy. We've got about 40 minutes left. <laughs> My goodness. 40 minutes right now feels like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We'll be good. Hanging in. It's funny, though, because it's it, it, it we we are a little bit isolated, so I don't know, like, what the com- what's happening out there. I don't know what's going on out there. I don't know who's <laughs> here. I don't know anything. Here comes Ben with ben a Moore. fresh Is that brew, coffee? dude. Oh, man. oh, boy. Yes. Oh, my God. Welcome to E3. It is time. Ju- this is the sweet justice, sweetest moment <laughs> right here. Hello. We're talking about a game I'm very excited for. Yes. Which is uh, what's funny though is there are a lot of parallels with Cyberpunk. So, oh, okay. That, y- y- Cyberpunk. The game's not even out, and that's such a good thing. Like, oh, like Cyberpunk. Oh, it's you like, say. Yeah. yeah. Cyberpunk. <laughs> the new, the new Souls comparison. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I mean, well, and then the other. I mean, the other thing that. You know, you can obviously take as a parallel is it's, you know, it's Fallout. Um, you know, it's a first-person RPG with guns. Yeah. Uh, the difference is, is this game actually looks pretty. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> From Obsidian, they did Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. Uh, and uh, so they, they had a demo today. It was, it was similar to the Cyberpunk demo in that we didn't get a chance to play it. Um, one thing that was an interesting thing they tried. I, I don't... Like I don't is this, is it bragging or what? I don't know exactly like why you would set up your demo this way, but they were like, Yeah, we didn't actually like make a separate E three demo for this. This is just like this is just our live build of where the game is, where it's at. And it was like, Well, you're still starting a mission from a save file at a specific point. Yeah. <laughs> but um but still, uh it's it's looking uh very cool. Uh, they talked a little bit about the background, some of the stuff that they sort of bring up in the trailer here about, like, all of society is kind of run by these corporations, uh, and your character is this stranger, and you kind of sort of determine what your role is. Like, you're going to be a villain or hero or psychopath, and what is what the the character in the trailer says. Mm -hmm. Um, Could we convince Jones to be a psychopath? That'd be a good bet. Make Jones be a he psychopath. Already, he already is, man. <laughs> he he played Disney Infinity for that long. <laughs> um, Wait, uh, can you tell me about that drop kick the character did, uh, Bloodworth? No, I don't think I can. This is Damn this it. is showing a lot of stuff, and this was like a very specific mission. Uh, so we're on this planet uh, called uh, Monarch. I think is the name of of the planet. And are in a town called Fallbrook, and kind of the there's sort of this interesting idea in that uh, this planet was one of the first that they tried to terraform, and it didn't take quite right, <laughs> and so like the animals and stuff, the native animals, rather than just getting kind of wiped out, they all sort of like mutated into like larger creatures and stuff, Freakos. and so th- the corporations mostly like backed off from the planet but i think there's like one corporation is like decided that they're going to stay but but everyone else decided like nah we're, we're we're like basically quarantining this planet and so then there's a smuggling company there 
And then so you essentially end up uh, talking to uh, this woman, uh, Catherine, who is sort of head of, of the smuggling com company. And uh, she wants you to go into... Um, I'm trying to remember what it was that she actually had is like a problem with this guy, but this guy, so there's this factory that makes like, th they call it borst. So it's like basically like pig meat. Whoa. Um, but they, she wants you to go in and like, you know, kind of shut down the factory and, and talk to the, the fact, the, the guy leading the factory and stuff. Um, and, but they, they really, they really focused on. Uh, they say they're they're obsessed with choice, and I think this is why it was kind of like the parallels to cyberpunk, mm -hmm. uh, because similarly, like you have these dialogue options in there uh, where there's a you know when you're, when you're talking to her, you're like you can try to charm her or you can try to intimidate her, but you got to have the points to like back that up. And then uh, there was another point uh, that's later on, I think. Uh, where their intelligence skill this blood this was like my number one question <laughs> their yes. intelligence skill was was low so there is an option that you otherwise wouldn't have as the dumb option so good classic fallout yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah because you're so dumb you can say this dumb thing that's probably not going to work out for you but hey you that's can go so that way <laughs> Uh, excellent. The uh, the other interesting thing in terms of uh, uh, of your choices and stuff is so like Fallout, you have companions, so these unique characters that come along with you. They have their own stories and backstories and things. Uh, what I find really interesting here is that the companions uh, they they have things that that they like. They have their own values. They have their th things that they're they're gonna vibe with you or not vibe with you, and if you get to a point where they just like, nah, dude, I think you're a creep. Yeah. They just leave. Whoa. They just leave your party. Awesome. Or you can also imagine that going the other way. Yeah. Where you have a companion and they're like, you're a creep. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like they become obsessed with you or something. Sure. Even. <laughs> like, right. Also, they just follow you around. Plausible. I'm yeah. curious what other dimensions <laughs> these go in. Like if there's some guy who's just like itchy trigger finger and you're like always stealthing there's like I'm, I'm, you're boring dude I, i'm out of here i'm sick of trying to sneak around you don't want to shoot anything you know like it would be great yeah so i'm really curious like yeah. what kind of dimensions this takes on the other thing i think that's pretty cool about how the companions work is that they they boost stats boosted so again like if we we're talking about uh you know, like tr like having like some kind of uh, techie or stealth or something like that. Your your stealth stat will be boosted because you have this stealth expert in your party. That is that's hard because I hope that doesn't make me. I, I want to choose the companions based on I am the most invested in your story. Mm. I want to see that quest line through. Yeah, and I, I like the idea of companions boosting stats. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea, um, but. I don't want to be feel like I'm forced to use it just because I built my character this particular way. I guess. Yeah, I can see that. They also they also um, show up in uh, dialogue choices, um, and so they basically had like a like a little. Uh, they have a a person icon with like a plus on it, to say indicate that like this dialogue option is only available to you because one of these companions is in your party and i don't know if that's entirely based on again those stat boosts or if there are other like nuanced ways like maybe if if they have a backstory that can feed into this i'm not sure uh it seemed to be more of a stat based thing in that sense um and uh the oh the character that they had there uh was more of a, a leadership build so it that way they can have, I, I think, you know, more loyalty from their companions. How many companions can you can you have? They had two in the demo. I'm okay. not sure if there's a, a maximum to that. Uh, I would imagine there have to be. Yeah. Maybe they, like, stay the you have two in your party at yeah. once, and then yeah, they're, and like, you can, hanging right. out. Right. They're, they're in a particular location. You can go there if you want to pick them up. Got it. Uh, the... The combat kind of has a Fallout-like sense of you're shooting, but it's also strategic. Is there VATS? There's a thing that's sort of like VATS, but not VATS. 
So essentially, there's like this slow mo thing that you can do when you're assessing a situation. And you can stay in that slow mo as long as you want and kind of look around and, and, and monitor where guys are, like line up that sniper headshot. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as you take any kind of action, then it's it's gone. And then everything comes into real time. So I'm not right. sure if... So you can do it like once maybe to open the I think encounter? it's kind of like an opening okay. volley. I'm not sure like how much of a cooldown it's on or if it's when people are aggro to you, you can't use it. Uh, but the way that kind of it at least appeared in this situation is, yeah, they, they shot at that guy. They, they got the headshot and then everyone just started coming after them. Um, and then, oh, and then they, uh, they, they triggered, uh, a companion s special to, to follow up. So they got the headshot on the guy and then this companion had like this laser minigun that just pretty much annihilated them, <laughs> blew them to sparks. <laughs> I love when Blood Earth laughs about like Violence. a brutal, yep. violent like, kill. It, it's it's good. They're not with us anymore. Yeah. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Oh no! Actually, you you might be okay. I did write down this note. So they did say that uh, these things actually refresh pretty quickly because they want you to be using the specials and the the time dilation quite a bit. Did God. did the shooting look good? Did it look smooth? Did it look like it? I I, I guess. You always worry in something like this where it's like, okay, I love the choice, I love the the narrative, I love the world, but the combat is just something I'm I'm getting through. Uh, it looked good to me. Uh, this the thing is that I think it is more, I, I guess, slower paced in a way. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, some people can see that as a negative, but I think what they're again they're going for something that's more of a strategic level rather than just sure. like running guns, snap and and shoot a bunch of guys like firing from the hip. Uh, they have uh, effects for what body parts that you hit. So if you line up a leg shot, they'll cripple their leg. Very vets. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the whole thing of vets. Yeah. yeah, but this is something that you do much more in real time. Right. Yeah. Um, Shooting those kneecaps. You can get people to drop their weapons. You can actually, if you shoot somebody in the face, you can actually blind them. Uh, so. Do you have to shoot the eyeball or just like headshots? Uh, I'm I'm sure it's probably not super pinpoint, but maybe yeah. if you have to shoot him in the front of the face, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then when you get up to the uh, when you get up to the the factory, um, there were they they talked about three different ways that you can get into this factory. There, they, you can you can do the guns blazing thing. They said you can find a disguise somehow uh, and go in with the disguise. Uh, and then the other way is that there's, uh, like a sewer entrance, so you can sneak in through the sewers. And I kind of wish that I had had, like, this demo, like, three times in a row, because they said that they've just been alternating, like, throughout the day. Like, p different people that go in and, and see the demo, like, see, actually get to see those different options. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in mine, uh, they did the, uh, the sewers, and they kind of joked about, they did the, the, the video game waterfall thing. <laughs> So there's a waterfall, and behind the waterfall is the sewer entrance. Nice. Uh, that you uh, you lockpick. I love that. Get in the sewers. What's the uh, lockpicking like, bud? Um, I don't remember like the specific mechanic. I, my my brain is all over the place between trying right. to, to take notes and do totally. do all the. <laughs> it's late. Notes. It's late. Yeah. But what they did have in there are these. Okay, so we we talked about this being a meat factory, right? The the meat is like the grossest. <laughs> kind of thing you could imagine. So I have these creatures called cysty pigs oh God. that have been bred so that they 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 have these uh, tumors. Ugh. And the tumors grow to a certain point and then they just kind of fall off of them like like fruit falling off of a tree and then that's what they they harvest the tumors and then, and then that's, they eat the tumor and that's what they, yeah that's what they that's what they sell that's worse than the <laughs> synthetic meat stuff in cyberpunk congratulations outer world you win grossest meat of, of e3 2019 <laughs> we should have that as an award yeah the grossest meat award yeah, grossest take that meat. note you win eating tumors my goodness <laughs> Uh, I want to like cut out just a badge, just, like stick it on their, <laughs> their booth. No, you, you like stick like ground beef yeah. on their booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so uh, they did uh, stealth through uh, past a lot of uh, like there's like guard robots and, and stuff in there. They also talked about uh, that you could you could sabotage the pens somehow, the pig pens, and I'm not sure exactly what that would do. Whether that would like kill a bunch of pigs, let them loose, or let them loose yeah. and let them like stampede or something like that. Uh, and then one of the things that's it's interesting is. Okay, so you imagine like a big factory floor, uh, and you've just got workers all over the place, and then your your foreman or whoever, there's like an intercom, and so you can use your dialogue skills to get on the intercom and find a way to basically evacuate all the the humans from the factory, like just there, and they had like a bunch of different stories, and that's where the dumb dialogue was. So yeah. it's like. You you find a way to get people to like say okay we've 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 got to get out of here. Um, Fire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could also hack the robots there, um, and then uh, there's uh, if you have enough engineering skills, there's some way to like sabotage the factory as well. Uh, and then there, you kind of uh, you you can conf you confront the the guy that's uh, heading up the factory in his private quarters and he's sitting there chopping there's like all this blood and stuff everywhere and it, it, they they kind of have this great exchange this back and forth to where they they make you they kind of lead you to believe that like he's a cannibal or something it's like like no man this is just the meat this is what we make here <laughs> like, you know but but he kind of has this this line is like yeah this is what this is what i do with the bodies when i hide them or something mm -hmm. like that <laughs> sketchy uh but uh uh i think there's one point where there's like one of your companion like actually interjects in the conversation as well so again like who you have and and uh, Did you get any sense of like when a companion interjects or if they have a strong feeling like can you talk them down or is, it, is it kind of a back and forth do they get more or less pissed off with you depending on how the conversation evolves after they interject or I guess just how dynamic is that system yeah I don't I don't know I mean I, I think it's probably something that you kind of have to deal with like how you move forward and in, in that mm -hmm. conversation with whoever mm -hmm. you're, you're talking to because and I would kind of love this if, like, you're you're trying to broker a deal or something, mm. and things are going smooth, but your companion's just like, "No, I can't stand for this," and they 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 ruin like at, by bringing them along. Right. A consequence is, is like they might ruin some of your plans, and I think that would be yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, and and again, the parallels to Cyberpunk here. So with this guy, like, you don't have to do what you're sent for. Like, you can you can. You can take him out, or you can, uh, like, like he'll, he can convince you to double-cross the person that sent you. Or they're saying, you know, if, if you want to try, if you think that you've got enough charm or whatever, you can try to actually get them to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, just, like, kind of all of these different, these dialogue choices and, and combat choices and ways to get into a mission and, and you know so it's just like everything is just like play this game and i think they even said something about like you know we wanted you to be able to build your character however you want because this this isn't our character this is your character mm -hmm. you know they just like very specifically said that love a good double cross it's so funny having this be the the next kind of game discussion that i'm in for right after cyberpunk because there are so many parallels and in a lot of ways i feel like uh both games are trying to accomplish similar things, but when I think about Fallout or when I think about Obsidian, um, I, the companions definitely jump out, a big thing. Uh, but the other thing I think about is just, is just the, the quality of writing. Uh, when I, with Obsidian games in particular, I just enjoy um, the way people talk because it feels so natural. Um, and they're able to do so many different types of characters so well, and they get so creative with it. I mean, was, were you, like chuckling throughout it did did you have any moment where you're like oh that was a really clever line of dialogue beyond what you've already discussed um i don't know about beyond what i've discussed but yeah i did feel 
when I was talking to these people, again, just that the difference in just how people look compared to follow, you know, just mm. like how natural they feel. It's sure. like just talking to this person overall. Uh, and, and again, and when you, when you get that, is it, is it from like the way that they're talking? Is it the way that they're animating it, or is it a combination? Yeah, it, 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 it's definitely a combination. It's, you know, it's, it's really, you know, in, in that face and, and, and how they look when they're talking to you. And again, it's it's kind of funny like we both have we have butcher characters in both you know? yeah. like, <laughs> there's too yep. many weird parallels between yep. these games well, there are weird parallels yep. <laughs> but just yeah, again the fact that he's making these jokes when you you go up to his office that you know he's supposed to be this you know adversary that you're about to take down and he's just, he's just gonna have a conversation with you yeah you know it's like what are you doing in my office like where where's everybody else you know but yeah it sounds like what i would want out of an obsidian game yeah. out of a sort of fallout like <laughs> game from them at this point cool sounds awesome yeah very very excited about this game it's another I kept game getting that... it confused with outer wilds i was very I... confused yeah it was entirely, hard for me entirely to get different. fully on board and hyped now i definitively know the outer worlds I am on board. I'm in. Just think Cannot of the, the tumor cuisine. Tumors. <laughs> what do you say um, earlier, man? You had a you had an all time classic. Mm. Something receptacle. Quest, quest receptacle. Quest receptacle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta remember that one, man. That's gold right there, Ben. That is oh. Um, I think <laughs> there's room for one more, uh, okay. Ben. I'm, I'm gonna leave it. I, I think you want to talk about Psychonauts too. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um. So I saw Psychonauts 2 and Borderlands 3 today, and actually both are worth talking about for completely different reasons, um, where Psychonauts 2, the presentation, was... What what I got out of it was Tim Schafer going through and being very detailed, and so it was just a lot of information, which was great, whereas Borderlands 3 was... They did have a presentation beforehand, but a lot of what I got was just from my own hands-on time, and so it's, it's a very different right. sort of impression. I guess... Do either of you have a have a preference between the two? I would really like to hear about Borderlands. Okay, we I'd like to hear about it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, uh, is Damiani still there? Do we have Ben's footage? Yep. Yeah, I I captured some footage of Borderlands Three. Um, and what? So Borderlands Three. What I want to say to kind of build upon this is just very much Borderlands in exactly the way that you would expect. Uh, you are fighting. Like very similar types of enemies um, in a very in very similar looking environments to something like Borderlands Two, um, and it had the same kind of pace. So you would go into a combat arena, and you would there'd be a number of guys that you have to kill, and then you go through them, and then there might be another wave, and then there'd be a ton of chests and lockers and things where you can open, and that that is just very classic Borderlands, right? That mm -hmm. that constant. Picking up ammo, picking up money, picking up uh, gear all the time. Um, and I very much got that sense in this demo. But what really impressed me about this demo and where Borderlands 3 felt like a step up is how the environment evolved over time and the personality that it had and how it just kind of kept building until it got to a boss fight that I thought was actually really clever. Pretty easy, okay. but like really creative and that was something that they mentioned where they were like we want to have the boss fights feel pretty momentous that's and I, a good time yeah i got a sense of that even before um we we had that fight just the area itself and i really am kind of digging the villain so you have these two twins yeah um and i only i don't remember her name but uh i only you're only in the demo. You're only getting one of them. You're getting the. I think the, the footage. I think the footage might not work for us without oh, converting it or working. something. Oh no. No. Yeah. Oh, it's a bummer because I played as the stuff, awesome yeah. it, siren lady. Yeah. yeah. With the arms that come out and are punching everything. Uh, that's what I played as when I played it too. What did cool. you say, Damiani? I, I can try something, but keep talking. Okay, sure. Okay, we'll keep talking. But uh, yeah, so the. You have these two twins, and the girl is really interesting because it felt like it was a commentary on 
YouTuber slash streamer. It very culture. yeah, it's very much that. When, they they I, say they called them at one point like the most annoying streamers you've ever seen or something like that. Yeah, and um, they have this huge following that's, that's like almost literally a cult. Yeah, I, I but I actually thought they were doing at least in the demo. Can't speak for the full game, but I at least in the demo they were doing the the critique of it pretty well. That where, to me it means a lot. Yeah, that you said that then. Yeah, this stuff can be so. Poorly written and so cringy. Right. But you saying that, like, I want, I believe every word you say every time, man. And so, I, like, wow. Right. Uh, hard cool. to hard to extrapolate <laughs> too much in in a twenty minute demo. Yeah. But like Borderlands, very irreverent, with good reason. Like it definitely has a style, definitely had a, has a personality. But it felt like it really was was biting here a little bit on something very specific, something that stands to be bit something that maybe deserves some punches uh because this character like had this absolutely rabid fan be like the character would do almost nothing uh you know this this youtuber streamer person and this guy would be like whoa best best thing ever oh my gosh he crushed it again did it i'm so amazing i was like okay yeah that's this is looking smoother so far kind of believable um, and then she she did the thing where she was she said something like evil and was like oh yeah don't forget to like comment and subscribe <laughs> um, and so yeah definitely very pointed commentary on that culture uh, which I appreciated um, but the area that you're in it's kind of all about sound and there were traps as well and uh, it was just an increasingly cool environment because you'd have these giant speakers that were uh, littered throughout this place. And they would light up, and they would they would glow like red, and then they would uh, burst out sound. And so you had to. And it's kind of funny having a trap like that in the flow of Borderlands because you're like, oh, okay, I kill all these dudes. Let me get this loot. Let me pick up all this stuff. And it would you would hear it building up, and you're like, oh wait, I have to get out of the way. And so it was something to kind of break up the like going on autopilot just grabbing yeah. everything it's like oh i gotta be a little bit careful there's something here to get me um and then kind of reinforcing that commentary of, of worship over this person tyreen is her name um you would have like giant stained glass windows of her as well and it it reinforced the theme but it also just looked really cool yeah I'm a big fan of giant stained glass windows heck yeah king it's, of hearts yeah it's still being weird damn that's too bad because the everything looked like a, not the choppiness but like everything looks smooth the shooting looks so smooth yeah yeah the smoothing the shooting is very smooth um used a a shotgun and an assault rifle throughout the bulk of it got How'd a couple feel? of other guns that throughout it um, how's the shotgun the shotgun is really really cool and i actually wanted to highlight the shotgun because it it emphasizes that something that Borderlands has always done well, which is just ridiculous weaponry. Mm -hmm. And so when you reload the shotgun, you you don't reload it. You throw it away, which is something they've done before. Yeah. But it explodes, and then it, it has, like, two explosions. So you throw it, and it explodes, and then it has, like, a scatter grenade effect on yeah. top of that. Yes. And you can just see them sitting in a room being like, okay... What if we do this, and that is where most people would end, and they add two other layers on top nice. of it, which is really cool. Um, I like it. But yeah, I, I want to talk about the siren that I played. Amara, I think is her Yeah, name? that sounds right. Yeah. Um, and I want to talk about the skills and, and how uh, they worked together in a pretty cool way, but I want to talk about this boss, because I <laughs> think uh, it was definitely a highlight for me. Uh, you, it, it was the same guy that was hyping up Tyreen throughout it, <laughs> and... Um, you fight him, and he has the speakers that have been traps throughout this whole environment, but now they're surrounding you. And so when they go off, uh, you have a lot more things to avoid, and he'd be summoning ads. But the coolest thing about him, all about sound, all about, uh, like, these giant speakers, his shield would have, like, sound levels that would go up. Um, and so it was just a really cool effect as he was jumping around, slamming down, like, seeing the audio on his shield just light up. Uh, that was really, really cool and fun to fight. Um, a lot of colors flying everywhere, just really yeah. colorful. Yeah, and so Sweet. it was it was a boss fight where it felt like there was a lot going on. And mm -hmm. it was easy. Um, I didn't didn't have a hard time getting through it. But it just visually was very cool, and it felt like, okay, there, there are a whole bunch of different components of this boss fight coming together. It wasn't just one thing that they were doing. Um, and Amara as well. Um, so... What I liked about Amara is like her the action skill that I picked is is pretty typical. You see this in a ton of games. 
uh, but it was just a giant ground slam where uh, you actually leap forward quite a bit and slam down on the ground. Uh, but that action skill was just so well complemented by the two passive abilities that I picked. So one of the passive abilities that I picked is that you constantly have regenerating health, mm -hmm. but then the other one was, okay, you'll do bonus damage if you get in her in enemy's faces. Mm -hmm. And so it just promoted a really aggressive playstyle, and every single thing felt like it supported the other, where it's like, okay, I have this ground slam to initiate combat or to handle big groups, but then because of the ground slam, I'm going to be in their face after I do it, so I'm going to get bonus damage. And of course, because I'm playing so aggressively and because I'm in their face all the time, not having as much cover, I'm really benefiting from their generating health. Nice. And I just, I love that. It wasn't just like, okay, I'm picking all of these things, and yeah, they all have an effect, mm -hmm. but they have different effects. They're all doing different things, and so I really loved the synergy uh, between that. Cool. Um, but yeah, I guess the other things to bring up Beyond what I played, uh, is they did have a presentation beforehand. Oh, okay. Um, and they talked more about the social aspects of Borderlands 3. Um, and like I within really... Within the game or like me and you? Playing with, well, co op, right? Playing co op, but yeah. how, like, even if you're playing by yourself, how your friends can interact your experience. It actually sounds pretty ambitious in a Whoa. really cool way. Whoa. So okay. when you. Like classic Borderlands, you have the, the vending machines where you can buy loot. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, if your friend sold a weapon to a vending machine, you might get a chance to buy it. And so it'll be like, oh, this loot is being brought to you by Huber. Very and so cool. I, I get a funny. benefit of, of your old stuff. Nice. And it, it's another decision that you can make, which I thought the was Huber's really, really cool. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Huber's hand-me-downs. Got it. Yeah, the Huber's hand-me-downs. That's why I, I got to play this game with Huber's hand-me-downs. I can't get my own guns. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Say the good ones. And they'll all be <laughs> shotguns. They're like, Huber, yeah. give, me, give me an assault rifle for once. That would be hilarious if you just walk up to a vending machine and it's like, oh, these are just Huber shotguns. Yep. There's nothing else in here. Shotguns. Yep. Um, another thing kind of along the same line is the bounty board. So there's this board that you can go to and you can see kind of what your friends are doing. So if there's a rare spawn that happened and you're going after it, I can come and join you. So perfect. it's like, I'm aware perfect. of your activities and I can help you out. So just really finding, like, ways to engage with each other and and, and new ways to to help each other out that Does is very it, focused. It, uh, like, if you're level 20 and I'm level 15, we just, we're scaled, right? We see yeah. enemies that are our level if yeah. we're together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I believe that is something that yeah, they already came out that's, that's about. what they cool. showed at the yeah. reveal event. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, it just seems really easy to... To play together, which is always awesome. Yep. Um, and for the first time, you can mail loot to friends, uh, which is cool. <laughs> this is when you're going to get all my shotguns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Gonna be so I'm getting things. it in the vending machines, and yeah. he's mailing it to me. I can't. <laughs> it's too much. Um, there are also global weapon skins. And so what that means is, regardless oh. of the manufacturer of the gun, uh, there are skins that you can apply to everything. Like legendary. Yeah. So skins. if there's if there's a yeah. global skin that you really really like, you are not limited to the type of weapon that you can apply it. That's to. cool. Wait. So if it's a skin for a shotgun, it'll look my, like an assault rifle. So like whatever pattern it is, got you it. you right. have this global weapon skin, and so you can apply it to a shotgun, you can apply it to a assault got rifle, it, got it. regardless cool. of the manufacturer cool, of those cool, types cool. of weapons. Okay. So yeah, uh, a small thing, but something that's really cool. They showed off an environment, uh, Eden 6, and they, were, they, they said that it was inspired by like a Louisiana bayou, mm -hmm. um, and they said that we wanted to do something different than what we've typically done in Borderlands, and so uh, it's, it's a lush jungle. They had like very dinosaur-looking creatures. Tiny Tina is going to be there hanging out. We saw a, gle a very very brief uh glimpse. not so tiny okay. tina now right it was they were really zoomed in on her face so it was oh, hard okay. to get a sense of how tall she was but yeah and then the last thing that they they focused on and hubert like i'm so glad you're here for this there's no one better they focused uh on the gunner vault hunter moe's and Moses' big mm. thing is that she has a mech and the name of this mech is the iron bear <laughs> yes um, yes. And so the the mech and how you interact with it is kind of her whole gimmick. Uh, but something that's really cool about it is you can equip different weapons to each arm. 
And so, uh, and then there are skill trees that give you multiple options. So you have the demolition skill tree, which is kind of the most straightforward, where you can have like rocket launchers and grenade launchers. But because you have these two different arms, you can have like two rocket launchers, two grenade launchers, you can mix and match. Um, and so there's a lot of customization there. Can I have an axe and a shotgun? I did not see axe or shotgun as the option. <laughs> I'll go through the rest of them and we'll see how they hit you. Okay. Uh, the next skill tree is the shield of retribution <laughs> nice uh, yes. which kind of the, the style of this again very aggressive hit, fight harder when health is low um you have a rail gun which it sounded like you could equip different elements with not quite sure on that but you do have a rail gun huh. and then you have a fist that you can use <laughs> well which you can also grab with which is really cool um and then bottomless mags is the next skill tree uh and if you don't want to reload and you just want to keep firing, <laughs> this is your this is your skill tree. And the weapons that are featured in the skill tree support that. So you have a flamethrower, a minigun, just keep blasting away. Oh my gosh. What was really cool about the bottomless mag skill tree <laughs> and was the last thing that they ended on for this presentation uh, that I thought was a perfect close is if you're playing with your friends, you can actually, and you have a, like a minigun, you can have your buddy jump on the back of your mech and use it as a turret that they're controlling. So you're doing you doing damage from the Iron Bear mech, which is they you can't be in the Iron Bear all the time. Okay. It does have fuel and there's a meter oh, okay. right in the center of your screen and you can see that going down. Got it. Um, but you're getting extra damage from Iron Bear and then they can jump on your back and get that extra That's damage. That's awesome. Which is really, really cool. How do you refuel? Is it just like an ultimate ability? They didn't or? go into that. They okay. didn't even talk about it. It was just something you could see while they were playing Moe's. Got so, it. Yeah. Nice. Is yeah. that her main ability? Does she have other abilities? Or is this like... Her big strength is like getting this mech out, so you kind of want to save it for yeah, big so, moments. Right. Her her whole thing is yeah. is this mech, and then where you get the variety is how you can customize it, and then what sort of playstyle each skill tree emphasizes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a like a unique character to use compared to like the siren who can just like ground pound all the time right you right can just keep ground pounding uh well no no no. you can't ground pound all the time and yeah so, it's on a cooldown it's yeah. on a cooldown um and actually something that took me a while to get used to mm -hmm. and you can see it in the footage is uh ground ground pounds in different games behave a little bit differently sometimes you ground pound and it's like okay it is where i started the ground pound i just immediately slam below me not how the ground pound works with amara here you actually flip quite a ways and okay. so it's a good way to like vault over obstacles or close the gap just in general with enemies mm -hmm. so yeah you get a huge lunge and then you slam down um and it has this kind of like earthquake effect on the ground which is cool nice yeah, yeah. um yeah sorry that we weren't able to have that that footage working but uh i i do think that the level at least that you played is the same one that they showed at the reveal event. Okay. So people have seen the the boss with the with the sound and everything there. Uh, I, we've got about five minutes left or so. I think I can get through uh, grid. Okay. In that grid. five minutes. Um, so yeah, Codemasters has brought a new grid back. I, I'm not sure why they just called it grid. I should have asked them that much. Um, but I got to I got to talk to one of the de developers and uh, play two tracks. Um, and one of the interesting things that he was talking about, and, and the funny thing was, is I was actually just supposed to be in a gameplay session, and they had like a different type of session to talk to the developer. Okay. Uh, but the, the the guy that was supposed to be in the developer session came after I was there. And so he was just there, and, and the the PR guy was just like, oh, no, 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 this isn't your guy. The other, the other guy's coming. And he's like, well, I'm just going to talk to him now and just tell him about it. Because he really wanted to just tell me about it. He's like, I don't know how these things work. I'm just going to talk to you for... <laughs> Roped in. So it was great. Uh, but but basically, uh, one, one of the... Uh, two of the main things that he wants to convey and how this game plays is, number one, feeling like you're getting a sense of progression without having to just keep rerunning the same race until you get into first place. So nice. it's like he he's like even if you get into 12th place, you're still enjoying it, you're still having a good time. You 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 still feel like you're contributing and moving forward and and learning from your mistakes without just having to just oh, I'm just stuck in this grind and, yeah. until I can get past this one. Uh the other thing that's really interesting is that they're developing uh these these AI rivalries. So, Deep mind. So all of the the different AI drivers when you're racing, 
they have names and so after a while you start to recognize like their driving behaviors and how they relate to you on the track and so if, if you bump a guy and you keep bumping the same guy eventually he's gonna start to like not like you he's gonna start hating you Dude, skynet and, and and you're gonna see like a little like red like uh, character mark like over his car. Oh my god! <laughs> and he's gonna start like acting more aggressively towards you on the track and stuff. And similar, racing socially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then similarly, <laughs> there'll be guys with like little green marks over their cars, who are they're gonna be a, a, a little bit more lenient to you. They might let you go by or whatever. Uh, so it, it's really interesting to th to think about how uh, how this stuff uh, influences you. Did you get? Any sense of how gradual that was? How many races it would take, or for that repeated behavior I don't, to really take? I don't really. Yeah, I don't really know. Sure. I, I, it's kind of hard to say again. It was like, I, I talked to him about it, and I saw like the mechanic like in the HUD while I was racing, but I only again I only did two races. If you're a maniac and you're just ramming everyone, will they all be red <laughs> and like team up against you, and, like box you out? Um, they just I mean, how form deep, a line. Yeah, I'm how curious. Deep can this yeah, I'm go? curious. I did feel like th I I did feel like I I had people knocking me for sure <laughs> on this one. Like I'm like I'm I'm doing fine here, and then bam, there's the wall. I'm like all right, dudes, thanks a lot for that. You're getting punished for the last guy that demoed it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're, yep. you're punished, Bloodworth. <laughs> uh, the uh, they had me do uh, the the two tracks. One was, uh, and, and I think this kind of shows the kind of the, the breadth. And I saw on the other station there was like a whole lot of different disciplines. Uh, but they had one that was with like kind of s the stock car, muscle cars, uh, on like hilly streets in San Francisco. So like you go like up the hill, like street by street, and then down the hill. And and there's some pretty, you know, they they try to thread that line between like realism and like not quite arcadey but still having a bit, a bit of fun with things so like you just like hop in those hills man. you're going uphill and you're hopping and you're bopping and and, and sliding around those turns a bit uh and then uh the other one was more was more technical is you had a, a porsche on uh brands brands hatch um and yeah everything it like it feels good it looks good um you know, obviously, to see these things in action take, takes time. Uh, I had a quick question about the progression. Yeah. Um, so they, you were mentioning that, like, hey, we don't want you to grind out the same race. That that, however, ending you can you can move on and, and get variety, um, and we want you to keep moving forward. The steps forward that you're getting is that at all influenced by like how you're playing? Like, if you're playing with a bunch of assists. Are you still progressing at a similar rate to somebody who isn't? Um, and maybe tuning the difficulty to be harder. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. One thing I did notice is that they have the, uh, based on how you're driving, it's almost like a, like a skill system, sort of like how Forza Horizon has. Mm -hmm. So if you're racing on the ideal line, you're starting to rack up points for being gotcha. in that zone. If you're making, uh, they had like overtake combo, where like, if you pass like three people like right together, like because there's one point where is it the, okay, these guys are all over here fighting it out. I can sort of shortcut across this way. That's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it'll be a, a cool game to see. I think as as always, it, it, as people know, I take a lot of time when I get through a racing game. Yeah. Spend a lot of time digging into it. Uh, but yeah, Very I think thorough. I think that'll be it for tonight. We're 11:59. It's time to go to bed. Get back on the show floor for a 9 a.m. appointments. 9 a.m. Um, some interesting hands highlights hands uh, for tomorrow. Um, several of us are going to be seeing uh, Nintendo. Huber yeah, must be nice. Is going to be seeing Doom Eternal and Wolf of Sight and Youngblood, uh, as well as Dying Light 2 and Control. This is a Huber day tomorrow, yeah, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, no. There's, there's, there's some other there's good some stuff, stuff in there for me. <laughs> yeah, um, it's actually a pretty giant. Uh, we're uh, we're both going to Modus, but you're seeing Trine 4, I'm seeing Chris Tales. Hopefully there'll be some crossover into that, because I'd be curious to see what you yeah. think of Chris Tales as well. Yeah, I, uh, man, I really want to download them, but it's just been yeah. 
work. E3. Uh, ENC and some interesting games. Oh, we're seeing this horror game together. I don't, I don't know if we're actually going to get to talk to him tomorrow with everything else. Blood, I am waiting for you to mention it. Yeah, I'm waiting too. What, I'm are, what are you waiting? Meals here. Dragon Quest Builders 2? Iceborne! <laughs> tomorrow, hands on. There you go. Yeah. Did you see the giant dragon? Velcana? I did see Velcana, yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you see the palico on the other side? I did see the palico, <laughs> okay. yeah. Uh, oh, I'm also uh, behind closed doors for the future of Xbox, which I had no we idea. Want Dude, Brandon your Jones is coming future. Dragon yeah. Quest Builders 2. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 Brandon, you can sit up here for the it, outro. Okay. Yeah, you want to throw us? You want to throw us an outro? I want to throw Michael Huber out the window. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that window? Only if that's you just gonna go next to Ian. Do that cyberpunk music. Like only throw him and then. Jones, only if it's as good as the intro in Watchmen. Comedian getting thrown out of that. It's a window. good one. It's a good one. Top ten getting thrown out of window. It's a good one. Yeah. Um. Yes, we will be. Am I? I'm, I'm wrapping this up. You just had a lovely conversation. I'm just coming in and stealing the thunder and yeah. wrapping it up. Let's Steal do it, it baby. Yeah. Steal it. Uh, I'm pumped, man. I'm so excited for the rest of the appointments that we have this week. Uh, what you just saw is our, our evening impressions. Uh, if you stuck around watching the entire thing, um, we are going to be back. We're going to do that again tomorrow night. We're going to do that again on Thursday night. We're going to do that again on Friday. When we do it on Friday. Uh, we're going to be having some fun friends come over. Uh, Greg Miller and Tim Geddes from Kind of Funny are going to come over. We're going to have some other fun special guests. Some of those guests are going to uh, be on the next episode of Friend Code. Uh, Frame Traps tomorrow night. I'm looking That's forward to right. that. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so, episode. and we have other uh, post E3 fun stuff happening next week, but it's really all about uh, this crazy week up until this Friday. And uh, man, you get that taste of E3 and you just want more. That taste of Final Fantasy, Ben. <laughs> that yeah. taste. I mean, we've got plenty was... of stuff that we haven't talked about. We haven't talked about Battletoads. I can't. Yeah, I, I, it's, well, the funny thing is, I cleared Tuesday. All, all the stuff that I saw today, I've, I've now officially talked about. But I still, there's still stuff from Judges Week embargoes are lifted. I just got week, a private like, message from somebody who's like, "That grid two, that grid idea isn't a new idea." I'm like, "Well, I, I, I know it's not quite a new. It's the implementation of it." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the late night impressions corrections. I wake up in the morning like, "Okay, I got one thing wrong." Uh, the final. This happens every year, but. Uh, at the end of the Final Fantasy VII demo, it goes, thanks for playing. It's like, well, I could keep going. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we can't keep going. Yeah. We're going to go home and go to sleep. Uh, but if you uh, want to watch us again, twitch.tv slash Easy Allies. We'll be back at 8.30 tomorrow night with more impressions after a full day at E3 2019. Um, if you want to see archives of a lot of the Blood's been working really hard, packaging all of this stuff for your viewing pleasure again and again and again. If you want to see that stuff, youtube.com slash Easy Allies. Again, you can stick around social media, Facebook and Twitter if you want updates. But... What? What? Oh, thank the mods. The wag finger. Of course, thank you, mods. the mods. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I, I was, I was, I was at that desk during the Nintendo press conference, and there was, yeah, it was, it was tough keeping up. There's a lot of chatter, a lot of stuff, um, and just, I mean, you know, obviously, thank you for the mods, but thank you for people, you know, sticking around. Obviously, you know, we had a, a huge audience for our reactions over the weekend to all the press conferences, uh, but it's, it's really, really fun checking in. It's, it's fun communicating all of this stuff to all of you, but really fun checking in. With all of you, that we, cyberpunk was great. Do we have a I, sweetest I really liked moment? Like a full desk. Out of all these things that we talked about, of all these things today, do we have a sweetest moment? Um, ben coming in with a cup of coffee is <laughs> fresh. I mean, brew. there's a lot. Yeah, we've got we got Dragon Quest and Banjo and Smash. We got, <laughs> but Breath of the Wild too, man. Well, we're talking not well, not from the from the oh, from, yeah. from, from stuff, us stuff we yeah. saw today. Uh, the fact that we're still alive. Yes. <laughs> Sweetest moment. <laughs> I, I really like, just share, uh, sharing a uh, cyberpunk impressions with five, with four other yes, allies. The fact that seven people got to see that demo today. I really liked great. it. All those little details, you I, know, all the, the soda just cans. How energized we all were. About yeah, it. yeah. The soda cans coming out of the machine. Like, say what now? Yeah. Um, yeah, lots, lots of detail in that. But yeah, and thank you, of course, to Sweet Justice, our official E3 sponsor, uh, sponsoring the sweetest moment. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow night. And again, uh, if you would like to support us, we'd very much appreciate it. You can go to patreon.com slash easy allies. If you want to learn more about us, get other fun updates, uh, other text updates and posts and stuff like that for all the various shows that we do. And finding out uh, what, what tier fits your style of support of easy allies, how you can be involved in the shows that we produce, ask us fun questions. Um, but uh, you can just be involved by coming back tomorrow night and watch us talk about more games. We'll see you then.
Easy Allies E3 2019 coverage is brought to you by Sweet Justice, a sound design company from the southern shores of the UK. They've worked on some of the biggest AAA titles, the most refreshing indie titles, and collaborated with the best development teams in the world. Check out their work at sweetjustice.audio. Thanks for watching our coverage of E3 2019. If you'd like to learn more about us, visit patreon.com slash easyallies to see how you can help us keep doing what we do. At various levels of support, you can participate in the live and pre-recorded content we create, or get our podcasts a few days early. For just $1 a month, you gain access to exclusive shows, spoiler-filled discussions, and weekly business updates. You can also visit easyallies.com to see our schedule in your time zone. <laughs>